my lovely, lovely imps. A very well-known content creator in these spaces by the name of Lance from TheSurfs.tv, someone who I quite like and met in person and had lunch with and we had a really good time. I quite like Lance a lot personally. Uh, recently debated uh, Tim Pool. Uh, Tim Pool is a hyper conservative uh, uh, talking head. He is one of the most popular conservative voices on the internet. He often still to this day somehow re tries to refer to himself as a centrist. But if you actually analyze his politics and you have any ability to honestly analyze politics, it becomes very clear that all of his politics are right wing politics. Um, interestingly, Tim Poole has found himself in hot water recently because one of uh, somebody who was apparently a large fan of Tim Pool recently did a mass shooting. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, in fact, I can actually I can actually show you this right here. The Allen, Texas shooter, a shooting that just happened just a couple of days ago uh, uh, on May eighth, I believe, or May seventh. Um, apologies on the uh, the date. Um, uh, was uh, uh, he committed a, a mass shooting, killed multiple people, uh, and as it turns out, in addition to posting a bunch of deranged, um, uh, a bunch of deranged uh, content, uh, Nazi shit, in addition to posting his right wing Death Squad armor set and his Punisher skull logos, in addition to posting extremely weird, uh, uh, like imitation Zodiac killer codes, uh, he, and also him, his p pictures of his tattoos, which included, and yes, this has been confirmed, this is indeed a photo of the shooter, uh, the swastika and the SS symbols. He also posted a ton of pictures of him watching Tim Pool. He seemed to be quite a fan of Tim Pool. And uh, Tim Pool, of course, has uh, has basically completely denied this and tried to say that, uh, that uh, oh no, oh no, no, it's not. A Tim po it, it, he can't be a Tim Pool fan. Those must be AI. This is a deep state conspiracy against Tim Pool. However, I want to take a moment before we jump into this debate between Lance and Tim Pool just to remind you of the type of behavior that Tim Pool is engaged in. Because I have a feeling that in this debate, we're going to see Tim Pool continue to pretend that he's some kind of a centrist like he always does, and that he's going to leap into far right talking points while still trying to say, oh no, I'm giving a fair voice to the right and left. I just want to remind you that not only is Tim Pool uh, 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 favored by Nazi, neo-Nazi shooters, mass shooters, mass murderers, but also that Tim Pool excuses this type of behavior. Let me show you right here. This was a tweet that was made by Tim Pool following the mass shooting uh, at the uh, uh, Club Q, which was a gay bar in Colorado Springs. Tim Pool, of course, uh, did not uh, have anything to say except for the following. We shouldn't to tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. How do you prevent the violence and stop the grooming? Now, what he is referring to is the fact that Club Q was planning to have a drag brunch event, an all ages, a specifically all ages, non-sexual drag brunch event that would involve people eating brunch and drag queens being present because drag queens aren't dangerous monsters and having events where you go have brunch and there are some drag queens is a peaceful, fun, and good event to have. Now he calls this, without any evidence, a grooming event. Now let me remind you, okay? Let me remind you that grooming refers to a predator uh, over time basically manipulating a child into a position of vulnerability whereby they can sexually abuse them. That is the definition of grooming. But Tim Poole defines an explicitly all ages safe 
drag event that's happening during the day legally as a grooming event and justifies the shooting by those means. Let me give you another tweet from Tim Pool. The grooming of children is not stopping. People are calling for more violence. I do not think legislators will stop the grooming. People will not stop calling for violence. So you tell me what happens next. Interesting opinion, Tim Pool. I just wanted to be clear that we remember, before we dive into this debate, exactly who Tim Pool is. Exactly who Tim Pool is. Tim Pool, uh, Tim Pool has been pushing and calling for violence in his typical cowardly veiled language where he doesn't say, he'll say, oh, a civil war is coming because there's no other option if these crazy lefties don't stop in, insert like raw made up misinformation. He does the same thing over and over and over again. And this is what he's done for the entire time he's had his gigantic platform on YouTube. Tim Pool pushes this type of violent rhetoric all the time. This type of bigoted, violent rhetoric from his platform all the time. His job is to play defense for mass murderers. His job is to water down the idea that these people aren't violent bigots looking to kill anyone who disagrees with them. That is Tim Pool's job. So I just want you to remember that. And let's see if in this debate that we're about to watch, I have not seen this debate. I am, I am very curious to see if Tim Pool will continue his habit of downplaying bigotry, downplaying violence, and ultimately uh, basically working as a PR manager for neo-Nazis if he continues that trend in this debate. What is this? This is a clip of him? I gotta be honest, like, I think it's funny and I really just don't care. I think we've... Wait, is this him talking about? Hold on. So my, my point is this is grasping at straws, right? Because even if they can definitively prove, even if, if it turns out that this is legitimate, that really is this guy's profile. It is, by the way. It really is this guy's profile. That was the killer's profile on social media, and he really was a fan of Tim Pool, and he really was a neo-nazi and he really was pushing the exact type of rhetoric that tim pool shoots out of his platform all the time they're telling the truth and they have good reasons to be confident that still is not the nail in the coffin that they think it is here i i mean i gotta be honest like i think it's funny and i really just don't care i think we've won so much ground in the culture war that it is completely meaningless that they would even do it assuming it Yep, you heard it there, folks. Tim Pool thinks it's funny that a neo-Nazi fan of his murdered eight people. Incredible. Absolutely fucking incredible. Again, this is what we're dealing with. This is, in a, in a box, the conservative movement in America. They cannot win. They cannot, they have not had a win. They can only resort to increasingly deranged stochastic acts of violence. They aren't winning, they aren't winning minds. They aren't convincing new people. They can only hope to further radicalize their own and then whitewash events like this. Pretend that it's not so bad when a guy literally who has a history of anti-LGBTQ public sentiment goes and commits a hate act against an anti-LGBT against an LGBTQ facility, a a gay bar, innocent people living their own lives. Tim Pool rushes in to say, "No, that's well. Th what else is supposed to happen when there's all this grooming? No evidence for this grooming. Literally lying." What else are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? That's Tim Pool's entire purpose. So just keep that all in mind that this is what the conservative movement is. This is what Tim Pool pushes from his platform. Anyway, let's enjoy the video, shall we? Let's, let's enjoy this debate. Let's see how, how Lance holds up against Tim Pool. This is the one. 
The left protest over homeless man's death in NYC demand Marine be charged with the surf's TV. Here we go. When's, when's Lance? Come on, hold on. I want to get to the part where Lance is here. Oh, he starts right off. Okay. We'll fast forward just a tiny bit. Here we go. The effort to subdue him. The guy died. Uh, uh, it was ruled a homicide. And now you have protesters calling for charges of this Marine. And uh, things are starting to get a little hectic. Police are calling for help as things kind of heat up. But we're going to get into the nuances of that. Yeah, a guy, a guy uh, an ex-Marine fucking murdered a homeless guy. He, he, ch how long was it? How long did he do it? How long did he choke the guy for? He choked him on, he held him in a chokehold for over three minutes. No, wait, it's longer than that, wasn't it? Yeah, for at least three minutes, possibly longer. The video showed it for at least three minutes in a chokehold. It was a 15 minute chokehold. Why does the news, why does this story only say that? It was that, oh, because that's an old story. Sorry, I was looking at an old one. 15 minutes. Jesus Christ. Yep, according to NBC News, the police said that Neely was held in the chokehold position for approximately 15 minutes. That's insane. That's what we're talking about. Let's just remember that, okay? So when when uh, when fucking Tim Pool here says, "Oh yeah, he, he choked. He, he held him in a chokehold." No, he, he he fucking choked a guy for 15 minutes straight. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about what was going on there. This wasn't subduing. This wasn't keeping anybody safe. This was fucking murder. This discussion. So I'll save a little bit. We do have news out of Russia. They're blaming the U.S. for the assassination attempt, so they claim. And uh, we've got some news. Barstool Sports fired one of their hosts for rapping lyrics that, that contain an offensive word. I don't necessarily think it's fair to call what he said a slur because he wasn't calling anybody the word. But, you know, he said the word and then Penn Entertainment. So this was this happened six days ago on the 4th. The story happened. The original event happened. I want to see if I can get the exact date. Hold on. It was like you're fired, and now Dave Portnoy is like, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. I sold the company. So on the third. Gonna... So Lance on at this time, Lance is operating on a story that has been out for one day. Just keep that in mind. That plus a whole bunch of other stories, and um, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about the news. Bank banks collapsing. We got uh, Paul Stanley, the lead singer. I'm sorry, the uh, front man for Kiss. Is kind of walking back his statement on uh, transgender kids and uh, uh, a lot to talk about. Before we get started, my friends, today's episode is brought to you by Cast Brew Coffee. Take a look at this bag right here. This is Cast Brew Coffee over at Cast Brew. Shut the Picture. fuck up. If you want to get your at fucking least garbage like out of my land. face. It took evil acid or something. Thank you so much. With your friends joining us tonight to talk about this and so much more is Lance from the Surfs. Thank you so much for having me. It's I, I'm tripping balls being in this room right now. It feels like I took evil acid or something because I've, I've been watching this evil show acid? so much. Yeah, <laughs> just like everything is here. It's wild. It's, it's, it's bigger than it looks like, right? It's bigger than it looks like. And when you're actually sitting in the room, it's actually there's a lot more props than you ever give this place credit for. I thought there was just like some samurai swords and like the occasional gun or something. But there's like if that's you, a real Civil War rifle. There's a real Civil War musket in the corner. That's right. Rifled right. musket. Yeah, yep, absolutely. The yeah, so, uh, like Union the, Civil War. It was uh, never used. It's like a museum very, here. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. very cool stuff. Uh, yeah, so so what do you do? Who are you? Uh, I am a leftist commentator. I do uh, politics, comedy from a dumpster fire perspective, and uh, I have opinions, and sometimes people like to hear those opinions, and then they tune in to listen to them. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us. I'm sure we have a lot of opinions to go through. Yeah. We also got the exact inversion of Lance, Seamus Coughlin. <laughs> That's how they describe me on the streets. Uh, my name is Seamus. Anti-Lance. Yeah, exactly. I thought, no, they call him the anti-Seamus, I thought. Uh, but my name is Seamus Coughlin. I make cartoons. Uh, we call yeah, British. freedom tunes and he's british well, is that why you always got to take it to an ethnic place with me man <laughs> always ripping on me for being irish is i was i was i was born here uh but i make cartoons i have a youtube channel called freedom tunes uh, i'm also a podcaster we uploaded a cartoon by uh, today by the way y'all might want to check that one out and i also have oh, a stream this, on rumble is this called one of the new guys because there was a huge falling out in tim cast didn't tim cast have a big falling out with his former co-workers and this is like one of the new guys i don't remember this guy shamer if y'all wanna take a peek at that as well
Now we oh, have Moon Lord guest. himself. I am the Moon Lord. He knows. No longer Weed Lord. I have evolved. I have become <laughs> he knows. one with the essence <laughs> of the vibration and the fabric of reality. So good to see you, Lance. So good to be uh, here. And if you don't know, you don't know. Freedom but too, I am so the Moon God. Lord. Let's get hot. Uh, and I am Surge.com as always, guys. Let's get to it. Let's jump into this first. We, we, you Wait, actually, this is the wrong button this is, I, I, I got to flag this. This is the first time Ian and I have done a show together in almost a year. Since we oh, screamed about, I was yelling at you about yeah, religion exactly. or something. Exactly. Oh, right. alcohol, this is our first show. Oh, the other employees were the ones from Subverse. Oh, that's right. Sorry, it's been a while since I covered that one. Oh, yeah, that's oh, our first Welcome back, back. Shane. Yeah, it's great it's to, be to be here, man. Here, man. Yeah, wait, I've evolved on my stance on religion. Wait, what, what we've happened? also talked off air. We, we, we've we talked off air a good bit, but we, it's uh, it's just funny that it's like, I, I just realized this is our first episode we're both doing together because I've been seeing you for the past two weeks. Yeah, but, yeah, we yeah. went last time oh, we talked. Oh, by the way, just sorry, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a giant asshole to this guy, but we've watched Freedom Tunes on this stream before, and let me just say, uh, <sighs> Freedom Tunes are rough, guys. Like, uh, conservatism aside they are just if you don't believe me just go check it out yourself you know what do your own research do your own research talking about like i brought up vice i was talking about oh alcohol it's so your vice or whatever mm -hmm. i said i think that was the the real point of contention and everyone's like ian you're such a dick i was like i was just talking to shameless like, we were just talking like yeah, we were talking irish you anytime. can't say that <laughs> we were talking about, that's racist i don't remember exactly what it was but I don't really care. Do you? No, yeah, well, was I, I was just, no, I, I was just, it was a discussion about alcohol because I was saying that alcohol is not inherently sinful. Like Christ turned water into wine. It was his first public miracle. Mm. I've his, gone his through. His blood was made of wine, right? Well, no, through. he, if, in, with transubstantiation, the, the uh, properties of bread and wine remain, but it actually becomes his flesh and blood. I've, I've had like serious eat. problems with alcohol personally, which is probably why I was projecting mm. issues. What were you saying? Oh, I was just asking like when you actually eat. Transubstantiation. For those who don't know, transubstantiation is a uh, a controversial Catholic belief, and it is the idea that when you take communion, when you are given the wine and the bread at the ritual of communion, that once the priest blesses it and puts it in your mouth, because the priest has to give you the wine and put the bread in your mouth, you have to open your mouth and he puts it in, at that moment, it literally, according to the teachings of the Catholic Church, it literally becomes Jesus' blood and Jesus' flesh. However, according to the teachings of the Catholic Church, despite the fact that it literally, the act of transubstantiation, transforms it into the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, that it remains, it maintains the properties of bread and wine. Which, if that sounds like, like confusing nonsense, that's because it is. In fact, there have been literal religious wars over transubstantiation because people couldn't agree on it. And there were people who basically said, that's insane. You're, it's clearly supposed to be a symbolic ritual. And the church said, to the stake with you. Anyway, there you have it. That's transubstantiations. I know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't know that, but yeah, now you do eat the blood of Christ is, is that Christ is inside you and yeah then, and then but like his blood is alcoholic is that why it's wine so the properties of bread and wine remain but what we believe as Catholics is that it's his literal flesh and blood okay his, by his body blood soul and they have it. So, so but he's not made of bread and wine no he's not literally made of bread and, and wine, no. get crunk all right, let's read the news. Here we go. Wait, we wait, we also have Serge Dupre. Sir, sure, yeah, we already, you already <laughs> did say did what's he? up. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Man, Moon Lord. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. All right, here's the story. We got this ABC 7 New York police issue call for help. Outrage continues to grow over deadly subway chokehold encounter. So the death of a subway rider who was put into a chokehold by a former Marine on the train has been ruled a homicide, and now activists are calling for charges to be filed. They have planned several protests and rallies on Thursday as the NYPD had is has issued a call for public help in their investigation. Jordan Neely, 30, died from a compression of the neck, the city's medical examiner determined Wednesday. Neely is recognizable to some New Yorkers as a Michael Jackson impersonator who regularly danced in Times Square in the Times Square Transit Hub. On Monday afternoon, he was yelling and pacing back and forth on an F train in Manhattan. Witnesses and police said when he was restrained by at least three people, inclu including a U.S. Marine veteran who pulled one arm tightly around his neck. A physical struggle ensued, leading to Neely losing consciousness. He was rushed to Lenox Hill Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. 
On Wednesday, a medical examiner determined Neely's uh, his death was a homicide. However, that does not mean the case will be prosecuted as a homicide. Okay, that's the stupidest bit of writing I've ever heard. As a murder, they mean. Homicide means death caused by person. It doesn't mean criminal. Uh, so what they're trying to say is, though the, 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 the death was ruled a homicide, it does not mean the case, case will be prosecuted as a murder. That is up to the uh, Manhattan DA's office, which is investigating. But I suppose I, I'm probably being a little bit too harsh because you can, uh, they're not being clear here. You can make the argument there's reckless homicide, there's negligent homicide. And so what they're saying is it's not clear that he will be criminally charged. They probably just should have said. They're going to say, as a part of our rigorous ongoing investigation, we'll review the medical examiner's report, assess all available video and uh, photo footage. By the way, this right here is part of the reason why uh we never cover Tim Pool anymore. Why we just don't watch or react to any of Tim Pool's stuff because a lot of Tim Pool's stuff is just unironically, he just reads an article and there's basically very little commentary. He just reads somebody else's article and I don't really care most of the time to have to hear Tim Pool's voice as an audiobook. However, I guess he does it even when he's doing uh, debates with people. Identify and interview as many witnesses as possible and obtain additional medical records. Read a statement from a spoke. By the way, that's, I should just be clear. That's not me shitting on needing to read articles. Everybody needs to read an article so that you have the stuff on hand. Like, but when I say we used to try to react to Tim Pool content, there will be, mul he'll read multiple articles back to back with basically no commentary besides, wow, that's so fucked up. It's crazy what the left is doing to this country. Anyway, next article, but wow, that's so fucked up. It's crazy what the left is doing to this country. Like it's fine to read the news and to ne and to reference sources, but like, damn person for the DA. So we've got video coming out of New York. Protesters, uh, I believe this was yesterday, were, uh, were seen in the streets and the police made some arrests. And uh, we'll get into it in a little bit. But one of our reporters, uh, Elad Eliyahu, was physically assaulted by uh, one of the protesters and had his, his property destroyed while he was in the process of doing journalism. But uh, uh, let's, just, let's just get down to brass tacks here, because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of arguments about this one. This is a story of a guy who was having a mental breakdown. I guess the news that recently came out was that he was a subway performer. It's, it's super funny, by the way. It's super funny to me that Tim Pool pretends like he's like, who, he was in the middle of doing journalism. Tim Pool is part of the faction that fucking freaks out about the media all the time. He hates the media. He hates journalists all the time. The faction that he supports that he does apologia for destroyed cameras en masse on January 6th because they were screaming and chanting that journalists need to be hanged. Bro, you are not in a protected class, my man. You have no ground to stand on, bro and his mental health collapsed after his uh, I, th I think his mom was killed is what they're reporting and after that he kind of just lost it and then he, he had been arrested 40 times he had once once uh, punched a 67 year old woman in the face and so as he was belligerent and on the subway reportedly threatening okay, people that. saying that he would take it he, he was ready to die and he would hey guess what uh somebody's somebody's uh, past crimes or alleged past crimes, because of course we're taking Tim Pool's word for it here, doesn't mean that you get to be murdered by a random vigilante. I know, shocker, right? Would hurt people. This is when the three men subdued him. The, uh, uh, reportedly, the Marine told everyone to call 911 and uh, uh, get the police down there. And then uh, he ended up dying, which has resulted in the left. Like he was killed. He didn't end up dying. He was choked for 15 minutes and killed. Like AOC, whether or not people, were cons I don't know. I don't know if you consider her left, but AOC. Uh, yeah, she's progressive. She said this was a public murder. And now you've got protesters calling for this guy to be arrested. They're saying he committed a murder. And uh, I think this is actually a really good example of what, what is described as anarcho tyranny in oh, that so. you had 25 <laughs> people pushed onto subway tracks in the past year. You've had uh, like a woman get raped on a train in Philadelphia. And we don't hear a single peep from any of these politicians, from any of these activists until someone actually stops the guy. If you go back seven well, years. What? What? Anarcho-tyranny is when 
somebody gets pushed onto the subway, but people get mad because a Marine publicly on camera choked a guy to death who was having a mental health emergency? What the fuck? This is another problem with Tim Pool, is that Tim Pool is basically speaking in code at all times. When you, when, when, when you engage with Tim Pool, you have to try and figure out what he's trying to say here, what this is supposed to mean. And basically what he's saying here is, wow, that's so fucked up. Can you, can, can you guys believe what the left is doing to this country? Wow, that's so fucked up. Can you guys believe to th what, the, what, the, what, what, what the left is doing to this country? It's like anarcho-tyranny. The last time someone got pushed on the tracks in New York City, they literally held vigils for her and her murderer was caught on camera. People don't protest because in that case, justice was actually served for that murder. But also, notice that Tim Pool is just bringing up random contextless things. We don't know about this incident. We have no idea what, what happened around that murder. We don't know if it was a, was it a homeless person that did it? Who fucking knows? You'll never get to know because the context doesn't matter. All he's trying to do is say, oh, that's so fucked up. Look at what the left is doing to this country, bro. Right. So, so, killed sure. him. Like he killed him. Sure. Yeah. So, so when someone is being violent and then someone right. else acts in self-defense of others and the person dies in the process, now there's all of a sudden calls for, okay, so this, this guy should be criminally charged, but there was no call for stopping the 25 people being pushed on the subway tracks. What? What do you, that, what, that literal whataboutism. This is just, this is just a pathetic whataboutism. Let's see how Lance responds. That's, that, that's an yeah. ongoing and, and, and acceptable thing, I'm, I suppose. I, I'm never going to sit here and try and defend people pushing people on the subway tracks. That's a crime. Like, that's terrible. Attempted For, murder. Yeah, exactly. Especially if they die. So that's horrible. No one's going to be on the other side of that argument. But in terms of like the guy who just got killed isn't, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, doesn't. Kaboga with the incredibly generous five dollars just turned in my last assignment. Now I'm a master of public policy. Thanks for sound tracking my study sessions. Congratulations, Kaboka! Kaboka! That is awesome! Congratulations on getting your master's degree. That is incredible. And thank you for supporting the show. May your future be bright. In self-defense, the poor, like the proportionality of what you're doing has to be in response to the actual aggressive actions of the person, right? It has to be proportional. Is, sure, it, is, that, yeah. is that correct? So you feel in your mind that it was a proportional response for him to choke him out to death in that situation because he was going to become such a threat you're, to the person who but, choked him but out. But you, you, you stepped up, you, step, you made a big leap right there. Which, what, what's the leap? The in, you're, you're, you're ascribing intent to the Marine to, to kill. Oh, I'm not saying he intended to kill him. I'm, I never said that, but he did end up killing him, right? So, that, so that's, so, that, that's that was, immaterial. So, so, to, well, no, but what is, you're what has to be material, Tim, it has to be, is are he doing what he's doing? Are you making a proportionality argument, or are you making yes, I'm asking. Well, I'm asking you that, because is it what is, he... YS says Lance did such a bad job here, whether or not you agree with him. Lance has been talking for like less than a minute so far. What do you, I feel like you might have a, um, I feel like you might have some pre-existing dislike or something. He did proportional, proportional to the threat. Yes. So it, the threat it, that he was going it to is do. proportional to subdue someone mm -hmm. that is threatening other people and saying he'll die in the process. And, and end up killing him, even if that was... You, so, see, see, now you're doing it again. You're ascribing intent. No, I'm not ascribing intent. I'm, so, saying, I'm saying the results. This is what happened. The guy's dead. He's dead, right? Results, so, results are right. immaterial to the proportionality of action. So the proportionality of action in your mind was justified to what he was doing, his actual actions He, he on held the, the guy on the ground while he said, call 911. And 9 killed him. And but, choked him out until he died. You're doing it again. No, you keep right. saying I'm doing it again. I'm saying this you, you is the are. end results. I'm not saying this is what he meant to do. So, Maybe he didn't. I don't know. I don't know what's in his heart. Right, right. Neither do you. None of us so, know what so, he meant to do that yes, day when he woke absolutely. up. Absolutely. If someone is threatening other people, you are allowed to subdue them. And yes. then would it be like an involuntary manslaughter? So, see, you're, 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 no, 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 but this is what happened. It's to the point of death. So you have. It's not a criminal. It's not. I'm not saying he intended to kill him. That's a difference, right? But if he ended up dying as a result of that, was that proportional? Yes. He he needed to be killed. No. Or he could have killed someone else. Hold on. Stop that. You can't. You, you keep trying to say needed to be no no but no but no, that's no. what happened the marine that's, that's the end result you're saying the marine tried to kill him no i didn't say that then why you, you why are would, saying that i'm saying that you're putting say, words in my mouth i'm saying that's I, what I, ended I, up I, happening let me respond then so, why would so you say this, needed to be killed because why did you what say he did to, to him killed? his choke out ended up with the guy dying so uh, that was the right. end result so his proportional response to what he thought was a threat was that i'm going to choke him out i'm not trying to kill him but i'm going to choke him out whether or not he dies 
is going to be something that we're just going to remain to be on the cards, right? This is chance. We'll leave it up to chance. So, here. so you are making a huge leap right there. There's no hey, leap, Tim. Yeah, what he's you, doing. You are... I don't. I don't think there's a leap here at all. I, I just think Tim is being really, really fucking weird. Like if I was in this situation, I don't think I would have gone the same route that that uh, Lance went here. If I was, if I was in Lance's position here, I would have simply said. Dude, I feel like um I feel like you're reading a lot into this. Like some people are outraged because a guy killed a man on camera. I don't know like I can't speak to people getting pushed in front of a subway. In fact, I would be I would be amazed if people weren't outraged by that. It sounds like you you're just kind of asserting that. But um this happened like yesterday and you're sort of editorializing on an event that happened because you think it's bad that people are mad that a guy choked out a man on camera? There was no video or 15 minute estimate at that time? Well, that's even more. Um, we don't know what happened. A guy killed a guy and we don't know anything else yet. That would have been my response. I would have been like, okay, so we have a video of a guy getting choked. I believe that you have a right to self-defense, but that doesn't mean that people aren't right to be mad about this. Somebody getting killed in public is a pretty big deal. Yeah. That's what I would have done, but... Right, is yes. that proportional? Is choking someone with the possibility of death... Choke, a, with the possibility yes, of death? Is. Yes, okay, so absolutely. That, okay, so like, that's, like, that's I'll tell sentence. you this. Let, yeah. let, me, let me tell you. So if uh, someone tried illegally entering my home... Sure. I will use whatever force necessary to stop them from illegal entering my home and illegally entering my home, right? I have the, the legal justification in the state that I live in to use whatever force necessary to stop someone from entering my home illegally. Now, you can't invite someone in. And there's actually some, some legal barriers here. Like, if someone actually walks up to your house and the door is open and they walk in, that's actually not an illegal entry. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is to a certain degree, but it's like trespass. Sure. It's like your door was open, there was no obstruction, and then you'll make an argument about entering the domicile could be considered fourth degree burglary, depending on which state you're in. If they actually open the door and enter, they've now committed felony burglary. And you are entitled in West Virginia to use whatever force necessary to stop someone from... Okay, and? And? Who cares? We're not in West Virginia. We're talking about New York on the subway, not somebody's house. This is, again, a total whataboutism. Like, I, if I was there, I would have been like, okay, yeah, but this happened in New York on the subway, man. What are you talking about, bro? Legally entering your house. That doesn't mean you just intend to actually kill someone. So in terms of we're out in the street, someone is threatening someone else. You are legally entitled to subdue them. Now, when the, even if that sub, like even yes. in the act of doing that, it could kill them. Yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Because uh, where you're going with it is like, what, what, what sub, what, what act of subduing would be permitted in your mind? Then, like holding his hands tightly. Uh, one that doesn't have a possibility of death, I would say. But, because give, it, me, it, one. It, give, give me one case, in your so, in your in your well, in your uh, in your martial arts expertise. Uh, zero, absolutely zero. Okay, so, yeah. so zero. there's not, there, there's and, a and I think I can contend that no one here has any, right? Or, well, or, sorry, I, I, am, I, am I in a judo I just room? watched just, a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, sharp elbow. That that right there was a good move by by Lance. By the way, do any of you have martial arts expertise, bro? See, I I think that that's the type of thing. Um, that like is effective. At least for me, when I, if I was in a situation like this, my goal would basically be to to be the to 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 get to to basically get Tim to talk about it. Be like, well, you're saying all this shit about like how outrageous it is that people are mad that this guy's dead, but like, are you a martial arts expert, bro? Like, I don't know, man. I think that people are fucked up because some guy, like a homeless guy, got choked to death. That seems like a pretty fucked up thing to happen, man. And it seems like you're pretty gung-ho for this Marine, even though you don't know anything about the story. That's that's how I would approach it. <laughs> but but no, none of us have black belts. We don't know this shit. We're just well, a bunch of people well, who talk but, on the internet, but now right? Going, going, going black belts, I mean, I have hostile environment training, and I have okay. some minimal martial arts training. Minimal, minimal, minimal. I didn't, I, I've done okay. uh, I've done some kung fu, taekwondo. So once again, there's no experts here to talk about And capoeira. Yeah. Uh, so certainly we'll contend I am not an expert. However, if someone is threatening harm against another person, and three people find it reasonable to subdue him, and the person dies, that person was in the process of committing a crime, if you lose your life in the capoeira, isn't that a dance? I mean, I think it is technically a martial art, but isn't capoeira a, a dance form? Like it's a performative martial art. It's not you don't hit people. I I'm sorry. Let's just let's let's listen.
If someone is threatening harm against another person and three people find it reasonable to subdue him and the person dies, that person was in the process of committing a crime. If you lose your life in the process of committing a crime, I'm not going to blame the victims. Yeah, but for we don't have evidence that he was committing a crime, do we? Do we have evidence that the guy was committing a crime at this point? I don't think we do, right? I don't think we did. Was a crime committed? This, right? Would you blame the victims for this? When you're saying victims, you mean the people who killed him? The people who are being attacked. But were they attacked prior or did they try to subdue him? So do, do so, we have do we have footage before? No, the event so, so in New York, in New yeah. York, for example, if you go up to someone and threaten them, you've mm -hmm. committed a crime, right? You've committed a criminal act of violence against per, uh, another person by threatening them yeah, and going up to their face. Do we have evidence that the, the, the threat actually happened? Right. And so you're saying at that point you have the ability to proportionally respond with so, violence. Act, yeah, actually, there's a there's a video of this. Uh, Myth Informed has it. Seven years ago, this man was called a hero for defusing violence by putting another man in a chokehold. A man in the subway was getting up in people's faces and he was threatening them. And another man got up behind him and put him in a chokehold. And he was okay. put on national television and he was celebrated as a hero for doing so. So th this is what I'm talking about. But, but who, wait, who cares? This is a completely different event seven years ago with a different person, a different guy, a different what, what, and who cares? What? This is so stupid. Like, again, my response to this would be like, what does that have to do with anything, dude? Like, we're, you're talking about an event that happened yesterday, like some other guy getting, get, being called a hero seven years ago. Like, how do you, how does that make sense to you? That guy put a guy in a chokehold for nine seconds? Jesus. But a narco tyranny. I feel like you're latching onto this completely from a point of uh, uh, you, you don't have knowledge on proper uh, uh, technique for subduing an individual. Nor no, the none of us do. Nor the legal expertise. Yeah, none but, of us do as but, well. But see, see that, that that's kind of an absurd thing to just outright. <laughs> Tim Pool is the one being defensive here. Okay, unironically though, I don't understand why people say Lance looked bad here. Tim Pool comes off as mega defensive and super desperate here. Like he's like jumping on everything that Lance says. And Lance is just like, you don't have that either. Like I can agree that like get, letting him get away with the weird anarcho tyranny thing isn't good, but I don't think this. I don't think Tim Tim Pool looks good here in comparison to Lance. Tim Pool comes off as like weird and jumpy. He sounds mad already, and it's fi it's like fifteen minutes into the show. Well, well, look. I'm going to say this guy committed a murder and should go to prison, but I'm not an expert and neither are you. Therefore, he should be convicted. I, I never said that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually asking questions because the, these are things that I don't fully understand about. Is it legal for to him to do what he did? Yes. Is, is, That's it, why he it wasn't is proportionally charged. legal. Yes. Okay. That's why he wasn't charged. He was released. However, in this day and age, what's likely going to happen is a narco tyranny. People go out in the streets, they protest, and the police say, for political reasons, we're going to go find this guy and we're going to arrest him. But I don't know. It depends. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, happen? we don't have footage of what happened before the that's, choke. That's hold. what I'd like to know. But yeah. if there's enough people on the train that are, are witness to what was happening, and they're like, yo, he was threatening all of us, then mm -hmm. I and think there the were. cops are not going to mess with that and guy. And that's what was reported. <clears throat> and there were three men trying to subdue him as he... F I, yeah, Moon Lord just pointed out exactly what Lance was saying. We don't have video of this, which kind of reveals that Tim Pool is jumping to conclusions here fought back so there's 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 like there's there's no debate that this guy was acting violently and threatening people and even said he was prepared to die at that point you have what what could be a terroristic threat i think i think if a guy got on a train and screamed i'm going to cause harm to people and then said he was willing to die you'd probably want to stop him because there's signs all over the subway saying if you see something say something and I suppose we could go the route of uh, uh, when when Luke Rutkowski had that video, there was a guy in a subway with a knife stabbing people and the cops said, we're not going to get involved at all. Oh and then some guy had to try and intervene himself. It's funny, that guy's a hero. Yeah, that was, I think, oh yeah, here it is. Matt Walsh retweeted Alexander Cortez's uh, tweet from six hours ago and asking specifically, what are they supposed to do? What are people supposed to do in this situation? Are they just supposed to sit there? If someone's screaming, they're going to... So far, their citations have been misinformed. Misinformed is a right-wing uh, uh, convention and their second source has been Matt Walsh, a theocratic fascist, an unironic theocratic fascist. Do you remember, remember what I said? How Tim Pool's entire purpose is to launder right-wing opinions, downplay and, and whitewash uh, terrible right-wing events? Kind of interesting, right? 
they're going to hurt somebody. You just sit there and wait until they actually hurts the person and then you respond. And I'm just I'm just curious, you know, honest question. Uh, we have the story from the Daily Mail from October. Twenty five victims have been shoved in front of subway cars so far this year. Uh, two victims were killed. Where where was the protest? Well, you know, where was no. the video footage of it? There's video. What? There is video there footage is. of it. Is it public? Yes. Public video footage. And I'm not gonna, I can't play it on YouTube. But yo, there's video footage of people being pushed in front of trains. And and okay. and where's but, Aos? But what does this have to do with a homeless guy getting killed? Was it was it this guy? Did this guy shove 25 people in front of a subway car? This just it's it's a literal whataboutism. Like my response here would be like, dude, that sounds terrible. Terrible things happen all the time. I don't know if there were protests. I haven't done the research to find out. For all I know, there could have been protests and vigils for these things. It seems like there was. P it, everyone in chat is saying, yeah, actually people dug into this and it turns out there was actually vigils, protests, memorials, public demonstrations after these things happened, which tends to happen after people die. But, um, Tim Pool is just flying off the handle here and he just comes off as a paranoid delusion d delusional freak i don't know i, I don't know I, reacting this is the type of thing i'm talking about that reacting to this is like uh it, it's a hostile environment you have like five of his guys there he can pull up a story of his random paranoid delusions at any moment and just dump it on you and you're supposed to go yeah i guess uh I guess if nobody gave a shit about those things, it would be pretty bad. But is that what actually happened? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. See, where's any of these protesters? Nowhere to be found. Anarcho tyranny is that when the criminals do it, as explained in, uh, what was it, Solzhenitsyn, the, the, Gul the Gulag Archipelago? When a criminal does this act in the Soviet Union, they didn't, that's just a criminal, that's what they do. But when you, the citizen, defend yourself, you knew better. But so you're blaming the OC for not bringing attention to this specifically? So as Blaming. In like, or are you saying that she, you, she's, she's, she's hypocritical? Because she doesn't talk about the people being pushed in front of trains, but she's talking about this now? Is that what I you're saying? I don't, I'm not saying hypocritical. No, I'm saying my, I have a question of why, why now? Why only when people are victimized and they defend themselves are they are we now upset about what happened you on the subway? keep saying victimized. We're talking about a poor homeless person who, who yes, may, may have been having uh, an episode and died in what like ended up being the struggle. That, that's uh -huh. so. Why are the people who were subduing him victims? What what makes the victims? He, of this? he assaulted them. So you Did have he? that on camera that he assaulted them. Did he? Them first. According to all the news reports and the police and the witness statements. Can he, we see the footage? I want to see. I haven't seen that yet. I think we can the, show the well, choke uh, out. Uh, okay, so according to the news reports, mm -hmm. the witnesses and the police, mm -hmm. he went and threatened violence against people, which is assault. And right, like, but again, this is a moment where all I would say is, dude, you're jumping to conclusions. You're the one who's jumping to conclusions here. Um, you're the one who's making this a big deal and you haven't even let due process happen, it sounds like you're excited about killing homeless people, man. But this is what Tim Pool does all the time. Deeply Concerned says, leftists are able to see that Tim is BSing here, but to the uninformed, it's like a sleight of hand. It's misdirection. Lance needs to call it out directly. I do agree that calling it out directly would be good, but it, but if you'll notice this, that Tim Pool has been, what about it? He's, okay, what Tim Pool is doing on a broader level is a gish gallop. He's flying from topic and argument to topic and argument at a rapid pace, which makes it functionally impossible for you to keep up with. And you can go, you're like flying all over the place, man. But, um, but people tend to want to engage with this and that type of, of misdirection is like a broader problem. Like anybody can do that in a debate. Um, the, 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 the way that you deal with that is by deflating it. You have to stop the, the, the gish gallop. You guys ever, you know, let me, let me show you. Hold on. You guys remember this one? Hold on. I'm going to play you guys a meme real quick. That of the best of the most insane gish gallop I've ever been present for. Hold on. Let 
Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, here we go. I reposted this recently. Let's watch this absolute conversion therapy moment. is torture. You not hold on a second. You guys are gonna love this, okay? This is it's sped up, but this actually happened. Okay? This is a sped up and comical version of an event that actually happened. Let's enjoy it, okay? Conversion therapy is torture. You not liking a a presentation that you have to see as an adult at your job and having a problem with that is not even close to the same thing. Uh, with all okay, due respect, no. stop being such a snowflake. Uh, now, if people are having things attached to their genitals, clearly that's a step further than what I was saying. I said it while you were saying that, like, yeah, that's clearly torture. The majority of conversion therapy did include things like that. The thing that's offensive about conversion therapy that most people that understand what it is would say is it would be offensive to tell people based on the way they were born, if they were born in a certain way, that they needed to change who they were because there was a flaw with it. We're talking about the left, the pendulum is swung so far that you're literally allowed to call all white people racist, and that is taught in federal training programs. I can go through a couple more real quick. There's literally dozens of these I can come up with. So he went from federal training programs to workplaces to electrical conversion therapy just flying all over the place the national laboratories which developed technology for American nuclear arsenal executive celebration second game training session nuclear white male employees three day event which was led by a company called white men it's full diversity partners set the goal of examining white male culture they can employ state responsibility for white male culture the white privilege male privilege heterosexual privilege one of the opening exercises the instructors from the whiteboard that white male culture can be associated with white supremacists kkk Aryan nation maga hats and mass killings on the final day trainers as employees write letters from people of color and people apologize for their privilege and being white and promise to be a better person Department of Homeland Security University trainers have a session on microaggressions based on the psychologist Gerald Sue. And his academic work, Sue argues that white Americans have been fed a racial curriculum based on falsehoods, unborn fears, belief in their own superiority, and thus have been socialized into oppressor roles. Trainers thought that Homeland Security before employees are a myth of meritocracy and colorblindness is the foundation of racist microaggressions and micro inequities. The trainers insisted the statements such as America is the land of opportunity, everybody can succeed in this society if they work hard enough, etc., was racism. If white employees disagree, his point is dismissed as a denial of individual racism, which is another microaggression. The point is, this stuff occurs all over the place at the federal government, in corporate America, and at and it's too far. Okay. Okay. Gosh, okay. Nice. okay. I know that's I, okay. That. See, do you hear everybody afterwards going, "Oh my God"? Okay. Yeah. That is that is a that is like a a iconic gish gallop. You basically you fire out a bunch of facts, figures, arguments, references, buzzwords that your audience is primed to know what they are. Oh, it's anarcho tyranny with with the homeless people. Don't even let you defend yourself. It's your Second Amendment right. You don't want to get charged with fourth level burglar burglary. If somebody comes into your ta into your house, you have the right to defend yourself. You want to take away our guns? Why is AOC not caring about pushing people in front of the trains? And um, and. Anybody can do that, and it is a very manipulative tactic. It's part of the reason why uh, serious debaters don't tend to engage with pure demagogues. You know, like um, you know, like scientists would generally not debate with creationists in public because they would do shit like this that's designed to preach to the choir, that's designed to generate hype. Uh, a one-sided way. Sure, it looks insane to a to, to you, but they're playing to their own biases. They're saying words that make their own audience go, yeah, yeah. And so it's a it's like a a very it's a it's a a manipulation tactic that's designed to reinforce your own audience while not while avoiding actually having to have a real argument because nobody can engage with that. Now there are ways to deal with that. I know how to deal with a gish gallop. I've dealt with it many times. Um, and uh, I, I feel like I did pretty well in that particular debate, as did Vosh. Um, but dealing with a gish gallop is nonetheless challenging, especially when you're in a hostile environment where four other guys can jump in and interrupt you. So, yeah, can't lose the argument if they can't catch you. Anyway. Yeah, so. Yep, 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 yep. Anyway, let's continue. Mama should go on Tim Pool. Honestly, I would consider going on Tim Pool, but I don't know that I don't know that Tim Pool would ever have me on. Honestly, uh uh I don't know how I feel about doing in person events, but um I, I'm open to it. I'm open to it in the future to going on Tim Pool. Uh I think I would I think I would have a very different approach to basically everybody else um who's been on that show. And also, of course, the entire thing would fixate around trans issues. There would be no way, uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I don't think you should be traveling to a rural area in West Virginia as a trans person. Oh, I'm not scared. I used to live in a rural area of West Virginia, and I was fine. Um, 
Yeah, I, 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 listen, I roll with a crew, okay? I would never be going alone, obviously. But anyway, Lance never debates. Why did he think he could do this? He's out of his depth. He hasn't done bad so far. Like, I don't, I don't agree. I, I understand there's a lot of people in the audience who don't feel good about, who don't really like Lance, but I don't think that Lance has done, um, bad so far. I don't think he's done great either. I just don't think it's as bad as people are saying. Um, responding to a gish gallop is, is rough, especially when uh, it's a news story that happened the day before and you're dealing with somebody like Tim Pool who is just sort of uh, in, asserting shit out of everywhere. You would trigger the fuck out of Tim Pool. I know I would trigger the fuck out of Tim Pool. Part of the reason why I would uh, trigger the fuck out of Tim Pool is because I wouldn't bite the bait. I wouldn't try to be like, you know, I would let Tim Pool say, oh, blah, 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 and then I would say, bro, it sounds like you're digging in deep. When I debate people, you guys have seen my recent debates. Um, I don't know. These things don't, like a lot of these tactics don't work on me because I grew up debating Christians. And those guys are the most dishonest debaters in the world. All they do is cheap rhetorical tricks and guilt tripping and all that shit. But, but yeah. I, I, let's see how he does. I don't think this is as bad as people have said. Some people are saying that Lance did really bad here, but honestly being like, well, is there video of that is a pretty fair thing to ask. And also Tim Pool jumped down Lance's throat. Literally, if we rewind back here to the very beginning, Lance didn't say barely a sentence before Tim Pool was like, hey, well, wait, wait on a second. Why are you doing that? What's that jump that you're making? You're jumping to conclusions. And Lance was like, whoa, buddy. And it's like, I don't know, man, that's like, yeah, but we'll see. We'll take a look. You're saying he specifically threatened violence against the people who subdued him. Do we have- Tim Pool would have a trans person on to talk about how actually trans ideology has gone too far. And my response would be, no, it hasn't gone far enough. Um, you guys uh, make up a bunch of nonsense. You blow up a bunch of fake news garbage about trans M&Ms and all this shit. Um, but in truth, trans people are suffering in America. And I can say that with a spine, uh, and uh, I think it would come off as strong. I would, I would literally just say, Tim Pool, you claim to be a libertarian. Why don't you support people's ability to determine their own body? Uh, why don't you, you, you claim that you're against big government, but why would you, why do you want the government to insert itself in between parents, kids, and their doctors who are making informed decisions that have been researched by science? You have an angle here that goes against your general belief. That's what I would say. It, it's not, I don't know, like people dance around these issues too much, but you guys have to remember a lot of people, even people in Tim's audience, um, actually just respect you being Giga Chad and spine pilled. Um, people, people, they, these people smell weakness and they smell fear. And if you don't show fear and if you don't show any weakness, they don't know what to do. Anyway, let's continue evidence of that I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing for him he, to be in a train be like i'm i'm upset you're not winning it, an argument here I'm, like, I'm not trying to win an argument you're being i'm, I'm awfully asking pedantic you, awfully pedantic did yes why like, would you use pedantic in this in this form as, as if, in like if, i'm trying to get to the root of this problem no right? no, no it, it's absurd to imply that if a woman if a guy walks up to a woman and says he's going to harm her that another man can't protect her. right and so this is why what? i'm asking did again, he say to the people who subdued again, who subdued galloping away now it's about a woman and a man protecting a woman do you notice that what that is right there that is a a highly man, he's he, that's an activation word he's get he's he can't stay on the topic instead oh well, let's talk about a woman being saved by a man i have a lot of guys in my audience who feel protective of women let me bring that up what, what the fuck him i'm going to harm you yes, i'm, I'm going to hurt you that's immaterial to a self-defense claim and proportionality okay if this guy was threatening people right and then someone said i'm going to stop you before you hurt someone mm -hmm. that is legal self-defense acting in the defense of others that makes those people who are stopping the guy threatening people the victims of a violent individual who is trying to cause harm yeah, I, I just find it fascinating that there's there's a there's an, an effort to defend the aggressor in this circumstance Right? Oh, so you're suggesting that the guys, even if the guys that were choking out weren't the ones being threatened, that they're still considered a victim because they stepped in to defend other people? Well, I'm, I'm saying outright that if you're on a train 
and there's a guy, you're on a train, you can't get off that train. You are, you are trapped, yeah, right? I, I, I used and to live in this area, by the way. I used to live in Flatbush. I used, so, to, I used to take these trains every single day. I have seen this. I have seen this and worse. I have seen people in the middle of episodes where I was like, this person could potentially either harm themselves or harm me. It never crossed my mind that I need to choke them out to the point of potential death in order to protect everyone else on the train. That never even entered my mind. So that's why I'm asking you, do you have specific footage of him threatening the very people who subdued and ended up killing him? But why does that matter? I don't think there is footage. But like, what, 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 what is okay. it? What all is right. It? Well, then that's all I want to know. But what does right. that have to do with what I said? I don't. I, that's why I understand your your your, your thought. Because process. I would think that the proportionality being that you ended up killing them, even if that was not your intent, I understand that you don't think he intended to do that. Fine, but even if that was it, were they like threats to him in the immediate like? present were, yeah, they, were they on the verge of committing an act of violence towards him that required proportional violence that ended up in death but it's not a requirement someone threatens you for you to act in defense of others right so your, your question is kind of in, a, in, a, in, a, in an unnecessary direction and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll elaborate if you're on a train and mm -hmm. you're trapped in a box and someone is threatening violence yep. then yeah you're a victim because so I've been a victim multiple times then yeah, I was I, I was yeah, in these yes, subways absolutely yeah. okay it's, okay but and my answer here would be being a victim doesn't mean someone needs to die. Um, and also, I have the advantage of going like, I am super pro Second Amendment, and I still don't think that somebody just making a threat means that they need to die, especially in a public place. Like, yeah, is that bad? Is that, are you being victimized by being threatened by someone? Sure, but not all victimizations mean death. And not all victimizations mean physical subdu subduing. If somebody says, I'm gonna throw my hot dog at you, bro. I'm gonna hit you with my hot dog. I'm gonna throw a hot dog at you. You can go get the fuck out of my face, right? You don't have to fucking grab somebody and strangle them. Like not all threats demand physical subduing. Not all threats demand death. I don't know, man. The craziest See, thing to me. But I, but I, was, I, I don't I feel like a victim. I, I've, I've never been hurt. I, I never was hurt by people who were going through those kind of Other episodes. Other people have been. I, I'm not saying they haven't. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not like saying this is a good 25 people were pushed in front of trains. Okay, so these 25 oh, okay, people were pushed yeah. in front of trains. How is that directly related? Were these people also going through episodes? Were they also people who were homeless? Were, did they have mental illness? I mean, were, 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 like, I, I would say anybody shoving here? someone in front of a train at random is like going through an episode. You know what I mean? Well, but is that what happened? Was all 25 train pushes were they random incidents were they like again that was a good that's a really good question to ask and i think that well, we're gonna see what happens i think lance should push this one lance should go bro you're talking about 25 different incidents were all of these homeless people who pushed a random person or were these people fighting were these people who were enemies what's going on here these these incidents don't seem connected to me man the correlation is that crime and murder on the subway has been increasing or has at least been apparent in the press, but I don't see you caring about it at all until it's the aggressor who gets who gets killed. No one, I think, on the left is going to defend this stat that you're playing. Then why put a guy in prison for finally saying stop killing people? This is like, what? Tim, if I approached you today. Dude, what? Why put somebody in prison for finally saying enough? That's not what happened, dude. Talk about editorializing. I would be like, bro, that what I would say here is that is incredible projection on your part. A guy choked another guy and you have projected your own perception of the world onto that guy in a way that I think is unhealthy and deranged. And I was like, hey, do you know what goes on in Rikers Island? Have any of you done a show on what happens in Rikers Island? How they hold people in Rikers Island? Do you we, know what? We, we, not Rikers Island specifically, but we talk about prison reform all the time. Okay, and how okay do you know about bail reform and the fact that people die in Rikers Island waiting, waiting to have their day in court because they yes. can't afford it? And we do talked you, about it. And, and you've but done entire but, shows on that. And you talked about how people literally die in prison yeah, while talked, they're waiting for that we, shit? We talked That's about, terrible. Yeah, okay, so we talk, actually talked about one guy who got wrongly arrested, lost his job, was kicked out of his apartment, went to Rikers for three months only to be released released and then told sorry there's nothing you can do about it the city owes him nothing because they considered the prosecution not to be malicious but this is the problem man like we we we, we talk about stuff like this all the time but 20, the when, example when this, you just gave me was not me talking about the systemic problem of people who are poor being in rikers island before they was. 
before they get to trial. That's, they die before they get, they're not released. You just gave me a story of someone who was released prior I'm to that. I'm giving you an example of a specific show we've actually talked about someone wrongly held and had their life destroyed. Okay. Now, of course, we can, we can, we can go on further and say, yes, people have died. Yes, they the have. system is corrupt. And my point is this. When we talk about stuff like this, like, wow, in October, we talked about 25 people being pushed in front of, pushed in front of train cars. You guys just shit all over us and ignore these problems. Then finally, when, when no, three I guys- I ignoring this. I told you no one's on the other side of this. No, no, one, no, no, is, no, no one is pro push where, people where, onto trains. Where's your protest? Where's your protest? Where's my protest? Yeah, where's your protest? Where, where's your Rikers protest? We had it on the show, but you, you don't you watch did a the protest? show. You did an actual protest. We, you, we, you guys- Okay, this is a part right here where if I was in, in Lance's position, I would have been like, man, Tim, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Why are you yell why are you literally yelling at me? Like, why are you yelling at me? Because apparently I didn't go to New York to protest a train event. You're saying you guys, like what you you sound insane. Dude, what's wrong with you? You sound insane. Like that is literally what I would say to him. Um, if I was in Lance's place and I feel like that's kind of what Lance is doing here But also I think it's really hard to deal with when somebody is freaking the fuck out at you and suddenly yelling at you Literally in physical space We don't we don't go on the streets ever but right? I'm, you not, do. I'm not blaming you for not talking about that Tim because this is like this is the problem of like you are judging someone based on absence based on your absence of caring about something Why haven't you talked about this Lance the fact that you haven't talked about this means that you don't care that's, about that That's not, that's what not I said. true though. That's not what but I that's said. That's the implication of what no, you're saying no, no, no. right now My implication is instead of helping us deal with this when we talk about it You make up garbage about us and then post nonsense on the internet What have I brought up garbage about people pushing people to trains? This is the most no, no, random I'm not example. talking about yeah. you saying I'm saying you this is that's a good response there being like bro. What are you actually talking about? Did I make did I say you did something wrong by talking about people with trains like what? You, you don't talk about it, right? I'm not criticizing you for not talking about it. I'm saying finally when there are people who are like we've had 25 people pushed in front of trains We've had two of them killed. I'm not gonna let this person hurt somebody. It's y'all This is punisher shit Remember earlier when I showed you the fucking Tim Pool fan mass shooter who had Punisher stickers all over his place? Tim Pool is doing Punisher rhetoric right now. While we watch, he's doing Punisher rhetoric. He's basically just saying, finally, a brave man stands up and is willing to take the law into his own hands. It's literally, he sounds like fucking, uh, he sounds like fucking Senator Armstrong. I'm not even kidding you. If he wasn't so weaselly and squeaky, he would just be like, this is what I like to see in America. A man taking the law into his own hands, taking destiny and finally saying enough is enough. Down with the degenerates. That's what he's actually arguing. The argument he's making is completely projected. He's saying, you guys, say things about me and subway train pushings and that's why this marine needed to kill this specific guy because he was the punisher basically absolutely deranged saying that person should go to prison it's like how is that solving the problem you guys are making it worse your our, protests, your support for the criminals make this worse. So our solution to this, if you're asking, when you're saying you, you mean the left, right? Our solution to a lot of this you're, is that you're, we, you're speaking in support of the criminal, so I'm saying you. Okay, so I am saying that the solution- Lance should have said, no, I have never once at one point uh, spoken in support of the criminal. Secondly, this guy was not convicted of any crime. He's not a criminal. In fact, he's the dead guy. So it's a, a little bit weird that you've all of a sudden jumped to the conclusion that this guy is a criminal when he hasn't been tried with any crime. That is a flaw on Lance's part here. Flaw, uh, Lance should have been like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't defend the guy. Secondly, you're calling him a criminal and he hasn't gone to court, he's dead into a lot of this would be investing very heavily in things like healthcare, like getting and making sure that people have access to it and not cutting the restrictions, like allowing people to have access to healthcare, not as a requirement based on how much money they have, based on their income, but allowing them to get the care they need. That would have gone a long way to preventing a problem like this and future problems that are gonna happen. I have mm -hmm. no idea what's going on with the 25 people who've been pushed in front of uh, trains. If it happens to be because people have mental illness, this is a tangible solution that we could work towards. This is something that I'm, are you against that idea about investing heavily into mental health care, public health care? Well then, yeah. there there, there you go. So that, here, that's here, a much better line. So here's right? my issue. My issue is when this story came out in October, we talked about it. And we said, why is this happening? What are the solutions? What are the problems? When 
this story comes out now, mm -hmm. you, completely ignorant of what's been going on in New York, side with the criminal. And so people like me about? are flabbergasted that we've been focused on the, the, the- Lance should be like, stop. You are insane and you are literally putting words in my mouth. I, I, all I can say here is that Lance should have been way harder back, pushing back on Tim Pool and been like, what are you fucking talking about? You sound insane. The, the issue of crime, the issue of mental health, the entire time going back several years, because and, one, and this is why I left in New York, because, of, because two cops got murdered outside of my apartment. Yeah. And then what do we hear? Protesters in the street defending the criminals. You keep saying criminal. The, I have a problem with criminalizing people who are homeless or people who are poor or people who are mentally ill. And then no, suddenly no, no, no. I'm, and, not and I'm not saying he's a criminal for being poor. I'm saying he's a criminal because he threatened people with, with harm. Like he's incitement we, to violence is a crime, just like AOC says, right? He's I dead. really want to see the start of this video footage. I want, I want to see the moment where he was threatening the very people who tried to take yeah, him but down. The, the, or... Look, either you accept that the- Lance should have just firmly said, innocent until proven guilty. You have jumped to the conclusion that this dead guy is a criminal? That's disgusting. You shouldn't do that. You sound like a psychopath. You sound like you support punisher-ass vigilante justice, and I think that's insane. That's what, that's what Lance should have said here, in my opinion. Witnesses, the media, and the police say this is what happened, or we can agree. No one has any idea, so there's no point in even talking about it. I like. I think the interesting, um, maybe confluence nobody, is that nobody you're... has any idea, so there's no point in even talking about it. But here, Tim Pool is not only talking about it, but coming to the conclusion that the guy was a criminal without any evidence. Isn't that fucking interesting? Isn't that fucking interesting? There's no point in even talking about it, and yet here I am, lying about it. Amazing. We're mentioning preventative Tim measures. Tim Pool is such a fucking dishonest fuck. Sure. Are, are a way to go about it. What do you think about defensive measures? Like people should be armed and ready for this kind of thing, regardless of the prevention methods. I, I mean, when it comes to defensive measures and people should be armed, I, I'm, I'm going to probably be on the exact opposite as the rest of you because you're, you're probably very pro-gun here, right? Oh, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just making, yeah. <laughs> We don't have the same problems in Canada that you do in the United States for mass shootings, for mass gun violence, for that kind of stuff. You have 30 I mean, million people, don't you? Is it 30 million? Okay, so by ratio of the population, Tim. So if you compare ratio of the population, Canadians to America, we don't have mass shootings like you do. No one else does. It's a uniquely American problem. The, the mass yeah. shooting thing is a uniquely American thing. Obesity is pretty heavy here. Well, too. well, it's... it's it, what? I don't think it's fair to say unique. <laughs> Obesity is pretty heavy here. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> this is the type of shit I'm talking about that that I think people I think people go a little too hard on on Lance when dealing with the gish galloping because again you're not just dealing with Tim Pool's gish galloping you're dealing with the fact that Tim has three other people in the studio with him who can all insert random thoughts it is very difficult on a on just a general level to to be able to deal with one person gish galloping, let alone another guy who's stoned out of his mind, just going, yeah, America has fat people, bro. Did you know that? Like, like America has fat people, bro. The people, are, Americans are kind of fat, man. Uniquely American because there are mass shootings in many other countries. Oh, there is, but it's a uniquely but, American problem that it's disproportionately happening here. Well, mass killings yes. aren't a uniquely American problem, but mass killings done with the use of firearms is much more uniquely American. I don't think anyone's going to debate that countries that have fewer firearms are going to have fewer people killing each other with firearms. It then becomes a Australia has more per capita than the United States. Is that gun per capita? That is not true. No, no I country comes up, close to the United States. List of countries by no, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Oops. That was a mistake. Sorry, El Australia. Salvador, and, and Venezuela. When, when you're correct, yeah, so, yeah, so when you're correct, if I just finished my thought. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was just wrong. Look at that. United States is higher than literally any other country, except for B Colombia, Brazil, Guatemala, Honduras is the highest weapon, uh, weapon violence rates, but that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about mass shootings. He's double wrong. Tim Pool is double wrong. Oh my, oh my God. Bro. This is total firearms death. This is including literal countries in which there is open gang police warfare, not just j like mass shootings, civilian killings. This is, he's putting in countries like Colombia where there is open in the streets gang war in some cities.
cartel <laughs> literally dude this guy tim pool is such a fucking fraud man this guy is such a fucking fraud so so my basic point uh, yeah that was is way way off uh the united states is not the most it is one two three four five six seven eight ninth El yeah, salvador and, and so of all the other countries in that list which of them are considered part of the g20 you have to compare countries that have similar economic systems similar economic like uh societal uh you know structures the United States places number one when you compare them to any other G20 country. Yeah, no, so yeah. it's true that as far as developed nations go, the United yes. States does have a much higher rate of gun violence. I don't deny that. My argument More is guns. simply that other nations do have higher rates. Depending on the nation that you're looking at, there are still uh, a pretty decently high homicide rate in a lot of developed countries, and there are a lot of mass killings. In the United States, those mass killings are generally carried out with firearms. But according to CDC studies, firearms are used to prevent more violent crimes each year than they're used to commit. So it's a much more complex argument than that simply saying the true. U.S. has more firearm deaths. Therefore, that is not that. I don't believe that's true at all. I think he just made that stat up. I'm a, I'm a Second Amendmenter, and I'm pretty sure that that is not true. Like, how would you even measure that? How would you measure a, a gun preventing a crime if the crime can't happen? Yet, like, how would you even measure that? Restricting fun- Like, I know this guy is a complete right-wing cuck. Like, this guy made Freedom Tunes. Again, if you want to understand Freedom Tunes, just go watch a Freedom Tune. They speak for themselves. If in, Unless you are literally an 80-year-old uh, MAGA head, you will not be able to finish watching a Freedom Tune without physical pain. Okay, I just want you to understand that. But still, firearm ownership would still. prevent those. Let, let me let me ask you too. What, sure. Do you know what con uh, what country has the most grenade attacks? Uh, I only know the answer because I saw you typing it. I think right. it's Sweden, right? I actually didn't type that. I, in. I, I, okay. I, I searched. I, I, for, I, by the way, I, I would have no high idea. murder rate was a very clumsy. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to cheat. So I saw you type it, but yeah, I did not. So I, I didn't. I, did, I, I didn't type Sweden. in Sweden. I okay. typed in most grenade attacks by country, sure. and Sweden is the only thing that comes up. Wow. And. Um, Okay. Yeah, Sweden has more grenade attacks than any other country, but and? grenades are illegal there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got a feeling. Like, why, why, but, why are there grenade attacks oh, okay. in Sweden? So, oh, yeah, I would love to answer this question. So if yeah. we're going back to guns and, and the U.S. versus Canada, when I said that there's G20, uh, if we look at all the G20 countries, the United States disproportionately by ratio of the population has way more gun deaths, way more gun violence. And a lot of that gun violence, by the way, is people killing themselves, just so we're completely yeah. clear. Yeah. But if you look at it in the framework of... Canada has a very different set of rules for firearms than the United States does. You can still have a firearm in Canada. You just have to take a two-day course and you get a license and then you get gun training and then you have the ability to buy guns. And that way, everyone has a license. They know how to use firearms properly. They're not just going to be running around the streets, pointing them and then all that kind of shit. And but you that, can also that, control for that. But you that's can, not that's not what's happening in the United States. Like people just running around randomly like... No, I'm not saying that it is. It's, it's, but, but I'm saying... Yes, it fucking is. It, it happened like like two days after this fucking viewed and it was a tim pool fan who ran out into the street and gunned a bunch of people down it absolutely fucking is the, the, that is in my the, in my opinion that is a better system i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to take your guns away hell no uh i think guns are fun uh, we all love shooting guns i like having a second penis i'm just saying that like at the end of the day if you look at how it works with canada this could be applied to the united states federally you, you could have a program a federal program where you have to have a two-day gun training program you tax the gun producers and the weapons you, you, manufacturers and then you get them you to pay for it so poor people could uh, afford this program right, but you can't do that because gun ownership is a, is a constitutional right or i should say gun ownership is a human right guaranteed protected against government moment. infringement oh, dude, i'm all about training in schools i think the public schools should have gun training for kids like they used to they used yeah. to Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah gun clubs mm -hmm. We, yeah. I, I would highly advocate for more training but you're just suggesting that you can't force it on people the hey, constitution guys. guys there's a reason why there is a there's a there's a reason why schools don't have fucking gun clubs okay and that's because kids fucking pop each other accidentally all the time you have no idea fucking negligent discharge off the charts i'm not opposed to kids being carefully trained um i was when i was young i learned i went to a, my dad took me to a gun training course i my dad put me in the junior nra like i was trained in in guns when i was young because i lived in a rural area where literally everyone was a hunter every house that i went to had multiple guns in it and almost everyone i knew was a hunter um but like in school gun 
classes is not viable, okay? You, it is so difficult to maintain that, and it is so, it increases the danger and liability of, for the school, like, by so much, that is, that is, that is ridiculous, okay? That's just, uh, that's just silly. There's a reason, there's many reasons why gun clubs are no longer a parts of schools anymore. Yeah, people pointing out just recently a nine-year-old accidentally killed her shooting instructor. Yeah, negligent discharge is super dangerous, especially because obviously people don't see it coming. If you have 20 kids all handling firearms at the same time and you don't like, it, it's just not workable, okay? It's not workable. Uh, clearly, and, and according to the writings of the Founding Fathers and to uh, I think Heller versus DC, uh, Gun ownership is a human right, and mm -hmm. the Constitution protects against government infringement of that right. That being said, we got the NFA, we got the, the, the updates to the NFA in the 80s, so certainly gun rights have been infringed to an, to an absurd degree. You know what? Not to mention, back in the uh, uh, days when they, when they codified the Constitution, people owned warships privately. And Halliburton, Northrop Grumman, well, I shouldn't say Halliburton, they're, they're, they're a construction thing, but uh, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, etc. Mm -hmm. Lockheed. Uh, the, these companies are private companies that build nuclear weapons. So we, we basically where we're at right now is that private corporations with no accountability can have the most powerful weapons of mass destruction in the world, but them and the government and like, so the con like I just it doesn't follow it, either either the people have the power or they don't have the power right we've abdicated it to corrupt organizations and corporations. Tim Pool isn't on this particular point. Tim Pool isn't wrong. It is psychotic the degree to which. Uh, 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 arms manufacturing and the ownership and possession of arms is offloaded to private companies. But um, that is not fixed by letting random people possess grenades. Like, you can't arms race yourself out of reforming capitalism. Like, if everyday people had landmines and grenades, so many more fucking people would die just because the rate of negligent discharge, the rate of a psychopath throwing a grenade into the window of somebody he's mad at. There's a reason why these things are controlled and restricted above and beyond guns. I don't know, man. Whatever. They're not people. Right. Let's be clear. Uh, these... This regarding this dude that choked the guy out, I think what's going to come up is was it was it adequate force or was it too much? And I feel like if he had punched the guy in, directly in the face, mm -hmm. that would have been worse. Because although it, like if they got into a fist fight, because he could have fallen backward and hit his head. At least this, he was in control of the guy's body. It's ter it's really sad that the guy died, but I feel like this was like a very low level amount of force to apply to someone that was threatening dude, to kill no, people or hurt no, people. Joe Colds kill people all the time. Uh, just so you guys know, people kill each other in sexual situations by accident with chokeholds all the time. It's actually a super common way for people to die. Choke people need to be really fucking careful with chokeholds. Like, that's neither here nor nor there. But Jesus fucking Christ, people don't know how to safely chokehold. It is really fucking easy to kill somebody. I why why did three people? find it necessary he to try and stop this He was probably flailing and kicking and but, but, screaming, but what, you know, who we, knows? We, so it, it's, it is hard because you mentioned there's no footage prior, but something happened that resulted in three New York people who are likely not conservatives to decide this man must be subdued. Yeah. Three people. Yeah. So, so when it comes to the idea of proportionality, I'm like, if three New Yorkers of all people were like, this guy's got to be stopped. That's kind of crazy to me because... Look, I'm 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 a, I'm a gun nut, right? You, you, my my view is people have a right to defend themselves with a lot more force than people in New York do. But if people in New York felt they had to stop him, these people, you know, I, I doubt these guys are conservative. There's like no conservatives live in New York. It's like 20 percent Republican, and if they are Republican, they're probably moderate right. Something must have happened, but they, but I don't even need to sit here and say what could have or what must have. What we know, what we choose to believe, based on what the police, the media, and the witnesses have said is that this guy was threatening people with violence and said he was prepared to lose his life over it. Three, three men then said this man must be subdued and they subdued him. And then the guy died, which sucks. It's unfortunate. Did he get a cause of death? Was it was like a compression of the neck. Yeah. So, so you've got a massive platform here. A lot of people watch you all the time. And so what you say, obviously, and advocate for is going to affect a lot of people's Hello, lives. Annie. 
If this is a problem that genuinely concerns you, why isn't it something that you would frame and want to advocate for more resources for mental health access and, and, and bring that up on a regular basis? And we I'm not saying, and I'm sure, no, okay, hold on, Tim. I'm sure you've done it before. I'm sure you've had specials before. Lot. I'm what? We do it a lot. Okay. Why isn't that the focus? Why isn't, why isn't today, hey, by the way, every. Nah, I don't got the stats on hand. I don't got the stats on hand, but, um,. I've seen a decent amount of Tim Pool's show, and I don't think I've ever once heard for him him advocating for greater mental health support. I really, really haven't. I don't think he does it a lot. I think he's just lying here. Buddy, this horrifying tragedy happened on the New York subway. We got to talk about this. Yeah. Here's here's our angle. Because our angle is we need to invest in mental health. We need to invest in giving access to public health care for can, Americans. First of all, I uh, could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong. Maybe when I wasn't looking, Tim Pool is spending a whole bunch of time talking about how mental health support needs to be funded. But I, I don't think so. When it comes to the issue of violence in this country, I don't think Lance is doing bad, by the way. Like, I don't think he's doing amazingly here. Um, but I also, again, I think it's very, very difficult to deal with a multi angled uh, gish gallop. Like, they went from talking about, um, they started this conversation talking about uh, a, a developing story about a guy who was choked on the subway. Tim started jumping down Lance's throat immediately. They pivoted to, uh, home invasions, then they pivoted to a, a guy protecting a woman, then they pivoted to gun violence as a whole, then they pivoted to uh, g grenade deaths, and now they're back to the original topic after all of that. I just, um, that's a very difficult thing to deal with, no matter who you are, even if you're a rhetorical genius, and I don't think Lance dealt with it poorly. I just think that he was like kind of he, he should have been harsher about being like tim pool what the fuck are you saying right now you're accusing me of like defending this guy but you've already decided he's a criminal even though he was never tried in court all we have is uh newspapers saying he might have been threatening people we don't know the nature of the threats and the man is dead now and you've already concluded he was a criminal and that the guy who was doing it is like a punisher type hero like that's what I would have done, but I don't, I, and, and to be fair, I still think Lance has relatively held his own fairly well. I don't think it's a great response, but I don't think it's bad either. Three conservatives have been screaming about mental health for decades. Reagan is one of the ones that like gutted the institutions in America. When uh, yeah, Reagan's one of the worst presidents this country's ever had. No fault divorce. How about that? Yeah, no, no, gun uh, control. Yeah, who? I, I don't know why Republicans like that guy. There, there. I, the reason that they like him is because of the way that he stood up to communism. But, 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 but I totally agree that he right, had right. a lot of really bad policies, and but, I'm not a but, stan. But but conservatives have taken the stance of gun violence. By the way, the no fault divorce thing. That is a. Uh, they went on an insane rant about how um, this was recent. Tim Pool went on an insane rant about how. No no fault divorce is like a really bad thing. I this was in response to Steven Crowder. He basically took Steven Crowder's side and then went one step further to say that it's a real shame that arranged marriages um haven't haven't come that that arranged marriages don't happen in America anymore. I hope Tim never gets married. Don't worry. Tim will never get married. Tim has talked about the, this multiple times. He's had like, um, we actually watched it. He had a talk with this, um, this like lady who writes about dating. And he was like almost on the edge of tears talking about how hard it has been for him to get any dates and that he just can't do it. And he feels like, um, he feels like a loser. But yeah, I, I actually think Tim Pool is somebody who I actually think is so repellent that he actually struggles to be able to even get a date. Violence and mass shootings is an issue of mental health. Mm -hmm. And then the left takes the, the opposing. But do issue. they invest in that? Do they vote for it? Well, of course not. The Republican Party's garbage. When, yeah. when I look up the votes <laughs> of the Republican Party, they're not voting for amendments that are actually going to uh, like give people more access to mental health. But but well, look, man, but that's where you have but that's where you have an opportunity. But you don't want to yeah. come onto a show where we say the Democratic and Republican Party should be dismantled and, and obliterated, and then make an argument that one side is bad. One, I'll, I'll sit here and be like, bro, if you want to have a, 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 a I'll make a list of every single member of Congress who should be removed from office, I will put all of them, but like four. One problem is that when people advocate for mental health a lot of that advocation is more drugs that this new drug will fix your brain but i'm of the belief that less drugs allow you to fix your like some yeah recently sober moon lord 
Moon Lord, who has cooked his brains with drugs for the for his entire life, now within the last like four months, has concluded that he's an anti-drug guy. Yeah, I guess I guess I guess you're the expert, man. For for very short periods of time, you might need something to help, but then you don't want people long term. I don't want them on psycho, what? you know, crazy pharmaceuticals that make them go, you know. Right, right, right. Well, and 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 we we have to bring up uh, often this medication actually increases suicidal ideation and, and aggressive yeah. thoughts and things like that. But I do want to answer your question. You said why isn't that the subject of like the show today? Yeah, or the premise, or the framing right, of right. it? Because when we do talk about this stuff. On like a normal day when news breaks of like 25 people push in front of trains sure. uh, or a woman was raped on a train in Philadelphia and we're sitting here saying like, what is going on in these cities? What are the failed policies that are resulting in this? We talk about it all the time. Today, we're talking about the fact that protesters went out in New York and physically assaulted one of our friends and reporter because he simply filmed them and they are demanding criminal charges of the guy who tried to stop the violent offense. See, that is... an. Yeah, often people who do lots of drugs are the most acquainted with why drugs are bad. Not surprising. Um, it just comes off as like a little weird to be like a, a hippie drug druggy guy your whole life. And then one day after you like profusely use drugs and openly talk about how much you use drugs all the time, uh, you start talking about how everybody else has a problem with drugs. Like it's that uh, it's like uh, it's like if you were like, uh, uh, I don't know, how else do I, comp it's like, it's like, I bought 600 cars and bankrupted my family. And I gotta say, you know what? People have a problem with cars. It's like, no dude, you have a problem with cars. Like lots of people use drugs responsibly. Lots of people per have a, a, a prescription that they actually need. Like it comes off as like a weird type of pro pro uh, projection. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's like Aiden Ross talking about porn. He's like, men these days have an issue with porn. Everybody's just jacking off 19 times a day. I mean, like me, right? And then there's crickets. It's like, no, dude, most people don't spend 19 hours a day jacking it to porn. What well, you're self-reporting, you know? Arco tyranny. That when you have ongoing crime, when you have victimization, people being killed and a woman being raped on a train, we, we talk for a year, two years, three years. When the, when the riots happened in 2020, we had Michael Tracy's reporting showing all the riots across the country and the mom and pop shops that were putting up signs saying, please don't hurt us. We talk about it nonstop. And then one day, someone on a train, three guys say, we must stop this man. Maybe because they were like, we've seen too many people die on, on these train tracks before. This is just Punisher narrativizing, man. For, And now we've got leftist protesters saying that guy should go to prison for it. And AOC. Yeah, I don't know. Choking a guy for 15 minutes kind of does sound like something that you probably should go to prison for. I mean, I don't believe I, I, I'm like, I have a lot of critiques of prison, but all things being equal in our system. It seems like choking somebody for 15 minutes uh, until they're dead definitely seems like something if we keep everything else the same. That does seem at least pretty fair that you'd go to prison, but I don't know, man. We'll find out, I guess. He's calling it a public murder. I'm like, yo, AOC, I didn't see you call out the public murder in the subway trains. And again, maybe it's ignorance. But the problem I see is this is why I refer to the left as... Why does he keep bringing up AOC? It's brainworm activation. He's pressing the button. His fans have been, have been over time conditioned to activate with anger every time they hear the word AOC. This is something you notice with uh, conservative talking heads all the time. This happens on Tucker Carlson. We've talked about where there will be just strings of buzzwords that if you're not plugged into their their network, it doesn't even make sense to you what they're saying. Um, they're just, they've talked about it so much. There's such a pre-existing required knowledge. You have to be in the juice. You gotta be dipped and battered in the sauce. And then it makes sense to you. Bringing up AOC is pressing the buzzword that makes certain people angry. He's working the audience. That's what we, that's, that's a term for it. Is you're working your audience, okay? NPCs or a cult. There is complete ignorance to the problem ongoing.
and then a hyperpolarization in a single moment in the wrong direction, which makes the problem worse. You know what's so wild is the other side feels the exact same that's way. What I'm talking. On, 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 in the other we're direction. Not conservatives. In the opposite direction. Except yeah. we're not conservatives. In the exact same. You see, okay. that's the problem. Okay, so, okay, Can so, I, is it all right if I jump in with something, all right? Because yeah. I, I've been He's reluctant. He's a conservative. I, He's yeah. a moon lord, and I'm a traditionalist. I, Remember what I said? Third eye opened. Remember what I fucking said at the very beginning? How even though all that Tim Pool does is put out conservative talking points all day, every day, even though the majority of his guests are conservatives, the people involved with his show profess conservative views, even though he pushes conservative messaging and references conservative news sources, he continues to pretend that he's not a conservative. I can't even, I, I don't know, guys. I just, just saying, I fucking called that shit way back at the beginning of this video. Deranged. I've also, I've been reluctant to interject because I don't want to just dogpile. Uh, and so I, I didn't want to get in on it. Oh no, I'm, I'm here that for the dog pile. I, I, I signed you're up. You're not, I promise. I'm, I'm sitting yeah, in Yay's chair, not. right? This I is where Yay sat and Yay sat here. No, I'm here for the dog pile. So, Let's do this. I think when you talk about mental health and trying to solve the problem of mental health in this country, that is a deceptively simple way of putting it, right? Every single person in this room would have a very different idea of how that problem should be solved. And I agree with you that right now Republicans aren't doing a whole lot to talk about mental health issues. At least with respect to whatever New York? You know, mental health issue that this specific person is dealing with. But, 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 but New, that's York, because... New York is not a Republican place. No, no, no. I, I totally agree with that, too. But I'm saying he was saying, well, I don't Republicans do more to advocate well, for mental like... health treatment. My point, however, is that I think the kind of advocacy you'd see from conservatives on how to solve the problem of bad mental health in the United States would be a much different set of policy prescriptions than you would want. So, so one example like, of this, well, right? actually what Ian said, so what Ian said, so, and there's a number of different directions you could take this in. My fundamental belief is that we live in a culture that encourages man to live in ways that man is not meant to live. And you just see negative health outcomes from that, both mental. Our so society, we live in a society where men don't behave like men anymore. We live in a society where we have moved away from the way God, I mean, nature intended. We are no longer, well, you could say we've degenerated. We live in a degenerate society. Oh my fucking God, man. By the way, he is correct though. I will say he's correct on one thing. This guy, um, is correct to say that the way that conservatives talk about mental health when they do talk about mental health is completely different. Conservatives support programs like what my old church used to run, which are, uh, uh, they are rehab programs where they're literal religious work camps. You check yourself into the rehab program, they take your keys, your money, your ID, and you are, and then as a part of the rehab, they teach you how to be a godly man by literally selling your labor, by contracting out your labor to friends of the church, and you're there doing work to learn what hard work and labor means in the name of God, to become a worthy laborer, but it's literally a slave labor exploitation camp and they tell you and uh, they, they'll surround you and ply you with all of this religious messaging you're doing this for god we're teaching you how to live a godly life but they're making money off of it in the background and they just avoid ever talking about that that's a real thing by the way look it up look up christian uh, anytime you want to i've talked about this on my stream but you can find this information there look up christian rehab programs and see how many of them include uh, uh working include laboring as a part of the rehab program and the labor benefits the church directly they literally make money off of free labor of people who are while they're never truly trapped they can leave it is very difficult to actually leave and it's very hard and there's an incredible amount of pressure applied to you both from inside and outside usually your family who are usually religious are in on it as well and also pressuring you from the outside it's very fucked up and they pay no taxes on any of it and they're making money and they're paying their pastors and their pastors are driving land rovers
mental and physical. However, when you look at traditional psychological definitions of mental illness and how we used to treat it, back in the 1950s, you had about 500,000 people in the United States in insane asylums. By the 1980s, it's about 100,000. Okay, so without even adjusting for the increase in population size, there's a significantly lower number of people who are committed. And part of that is because the requirement to get somebody committed involuntarily to a mental health facility at that time was they can't take care of themselves. Today, yeah. they have to demonstrate that they are a danger to themselves and others first before they can be committed. Now, is someone not being able to take care of themselves necessarily the perfect indicator of whether they need to be committed to one of these institutions? I have no idea. However, what I do know is once we push the goalpost all the way in the other direction and say they have to demonstrate that they are a significant danger to themselves or others, oftentimes they don't get committed until after they've already hurt somebody. He's talking about imprisoning people that he do, that he thinks are crazy. I think there should be a pretty high bar for imprisoning somebody. He's not just talking about people getting help. People can voluntarily get help. He's talking about people being committed. He's talking about people being arrested. This guy, this guy belongs in an insane asylum. Let's so it's a much clear. more complicated situation than saying we just have to throw more money at this system when we don't even have a, a solid definition of what good mental health is and also at which point someone should be committed. It would actually be really funny here if Lance was just like, bro, you think that a priest says a prayer and it turns bread and wine into literal flesh and blood that still tastes like wine and bread. B flesh and blood that retains the personality of alcohol and bread. Or sorry, uh, blood and flesh that retains the personality of, of bread and wine. That sounds like crazy shit. Should, I, should you be able to be locked up? Because that sounds like crazy shit to me. So I, th I think the, 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 the important point, going back to what, what I, I agree, uh, this is not a conservative show, but if you are in a cult, you wouldn't know that. You, if, you, would, you would only hear what the cult says. So, so here's, here's what I have to respond to that. If, if an objective person, say an alien, just showed up and looked at your channel, Tim, and went through all the videos, and you were to ask them, pull them, is this person and his views, where would you place them? Most likely they would say conservative. That's that's going to be that's my bet. actually better. wrong. Yes. But more because the guests that come on. No, not just even the guests, but the Dude, way they're- Man, that's, that's fucking insane, man. To say that, that people from an outside perspective wouldn't conclude that this channel is conservative, that's fucking nuts, bro. Frame the thumbnails, the the words that, that you put in. That is mad copium, dude. Everything you talk about is a conservative talking point. You report almost in this episode alone. The two sources besides Wikipedia that he cited were fucking Matt Walsh and Mythinformed, two far conservative sources. Jesus Christ, man. Red and the you know whether or not you're supporting or going against one either the Democrats or the Republicans. But hey, you you tell me that you guys don't like the Democrats. By the way. If you are here and you've been enjoying this debate react and commentary, please make sure that you press the like button down below, whether you're watching live with me right now or whether you're watching the video in the future. And of course, please make sure that you are subscribed to Demon Mama so you can continue to hear the signal. We'd love to have you as an imp. Press those buttons. Thanks for supporting my show and you don't like the Republicans. This is not a Republican stream. You don't want to even endorse the Republicans in any way, shape, or form or, or vote for them. I don't. Big, big well, no. Uh, I don't vote for the party Republicans lines, we do like. Okay, yeah. sure, okay, sure. But there's a lot of right-wingers who watch you, right? So you that's what I mean when I say you do have a voice and you do have an audience of right-wingers who are going to vote at 30%. one point or another. 30% of your audience is right Most right. of the people who watch this... Spectacular don't... Snyderman, thank you so very much for the tier one sub. Thank you for supporting the show. It means the world to me. Thank you. The largest faction is libertarian. Okay. The next largest is would be considered traditional liberal. Oh, no, no, I think... Uh, but a long party line... Libertarians are right wing. Who are the libertarians going to vote for? Not the libertarian party. Most likely like, they're going to vote for whoever... When they come on this show and say abolish the police. One of the two, Republican or libertarian. Yeah, most likely, usually. yes, one of the two. So that's why I say, Tim, for the people who watch you who are Republican leaning, why not frame it that way for them so that they can actually start pushing more money into that? That's why I'm here. Ah, that's basically true, I think, in a lot of ways. That, that's what Moon Lord does. So you here's, here's, here's what I think. I think you're in a cult, right? Okay. I, I think the cult is derived from algorithms on, on social media. Okay. So you only surround yourself with this loud noise. We saw a really good example of this with that uh, Sisson guy. Is that his name? Harry? I don't know. Sisson? Harry Sisson, yeah. Sisson. Those two guys went on the Tim Dillon podcast and he said, please. This is the, this is the moment where I would go, 
dude, your co-host just told me that he believes that a priest literally turns bread and wine into flesh, but that flesh just tastes like wine and bread, and it looks like wine and bread, and if it's observed under a microscope, it's still wine and bread, but it's definitely flesh. And you wanna say that I'm in the cult, man? No, no, don't clip this. Okay. I will lose followers. I can rag on Trump all the time, and like people still watch the show. Uh, Seamus and I can have an argument over me being pro-choice and him being pro-life and people still watch the show. And if I pull up all sides with 3,770 ratings, Tim Pool is a centrist. But you think I'm conservative because you live in a bubble, right? So because all sides. I want to look at this. I want to see. Am I on here? All sides balanced research. All right, let's see. Hold on. I want to see. I want to see Fox News. Hold on. How do we do it? Media bias. Let's give it. Ooh, 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 ooh. I want to see. I want to see the right wingers. Let's see who they list as right wingers. Okay. I want to see it. Wait. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Go back. Media bias. Hold on. I'm going to bring this up. Let's take a look at it. I'm curious now. Okay. Oh, they got Breitbart News. Oh, they got Fox News. They got Fox News. Oh, good. They got that one accurate. Okay. Epic Times. They rate Epic Times as slightly right? That's fucking insane. That is deranged. I guarantee you that this shit is fucking... They have... They have I bet you they swarmed this. I bet Epic Times swarmed this. Have you guys ever seen Epic Times? Out of curiosity, if you've ever seen them... Um, they're like so far right. It's actually deranged. The, there was a, the last epic, t I, I saw an epic times that had a picture of a blood clot on the front and it just said vaccine kills. Like they are off the rails right wing. Yeah, this, I, I have a feeling epic times deliberately had their fans go and vote bomb this. I would be amazed if that wasn't the case. The blaze is listed as far right, but the community only somewhat agrees. The blaze. Fucking the blaze TV. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I don't know, man. I don't know about this. This is a this is a community review site. I don't know if that I don't know how that uh how that works. Let's see. They publish their methodology. Let's see. Learn more about our methods below. All sides editorial reviews are conducted by a multi-partisan panel of six to nine reviewers from the left, center, and right who review news reports, look for indicators of bias, and discuss findings. They put, they put Forbes, <laughs> they put Forbes as almost into the far left. This is Rotten Tomatoes. At least they're right about the Daily Wire. <gasps> Fucking yeah, For Forbes leftists, oh God. Okay, I don't know, man. Sure thing, bro, I don't know. All I would say to this is okay, bro. I'm too far left. The Overton so, window is too far away is what you're yes. saying? Yes. So like when yeah. I go hang out in Washington, D.C. Right. And I do. I go to National Harbor or I go to Baltimore, Maryland. Life. I'm in Baltimore. I don't know why places. you do that. In Washington, D.C. Huh. The people who come up to me and are like, hey, man, I'm a big fan are not conservatives. They hate Donald Trump. In fact, I was at a poker table last week and a guy said, I just hate Donald Trump. Man, I can't stand him. I wish somebody else would run, but I can't vote for Joe Biden. You, I, I think you're surrounded. This, we, we talk about this quite a bit. Sure. If if all sides has nearly 4,000 uh, people rating me and the re end result is centrist. If Gay Fish says, I just asked my dad what a good example of a far left mainstream news org, org was and he said CNN. If 
I'm actively pro universal health care, not to the same degree as like Bernie Sanders. I believe in private health insurance and I'm pro choice. I am absolutely not a conservative in this country. I've listened to your debates on pro-choice, though. You're pro-choice from a Tim Pool's perspective. I I'm pro-choice say... from a traditional liberal perspective, as it's as but traditional not, liberals not have from been. what people who would define themselves as pro-choice would say, right? Like you concentrate very heavily right. on Listen. on the ninth month abortions and baby guillotines and stuff like that. Like what? Yeah, yeah. You, I, I remember watching you debate baby guillotines. Of, yeah. Okay. So baby guillotines is my own personal interpretation and joke of it. But you were talking about how women, uh, how how like disgusted you are that women may have an abortion in the ninth month, right? Or or even a viable baby a vi of a viable baby. That and could and I, I, I wanted to scream at that time, being like, women who have abortions in the ninth month, they're not doing that because they got bored. Isn't Falun Gong the founder of Epic Times? Yes, Falun Gong, the cult, the far right cult, uh, is is the found is the group that operates Epic Times. Yes, yes. Bored. Or all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't care anymore. They do that because it's a fucking tragedy. Like statistically, women who are getting abortions in the ninth month, it's because there's a medical complication that could kill them. False that's, argument. that's why they have to do it. What do you false mean? False argument. False. That's, I already that's said, the real world. I already said viable. I try again. What are you talking about, Tim? I'm, I I'm already saying, said abortion I, okay. of viable fetuses oh at nine God, months. This is ridiculous. Do you, know, so, do you know what viable means? Yes. yes it means it, the baby can survive it can on its own without on medical its own. complications. Absolutely. And Why the legalize women, and the, abortion of viable fetuses at nine months when the baby could just women be Women are not getting abortions at the ninth month for pleasure or because they want to suddenly do it at for kicks. No, that doesn't happen. Why it's a tragedy. It? It's Why a tragedy it? of Why the highest. It? Why because, legalize Because there are medical operations that could kill the mother and they need to get an abortion. Why legalize? I just told you that's the reason why and so so all right this is this is a bad look from tim by the way this has regardless of what what lance is saying here lance said dude no one is getting a nine ninth month abortion unless the unless the uh the the fetus isn't viable no one is and tim pool goes irrelevant irrelevant you're crazy irrelevant you're a cultist tim looks bad here I'm, I'm, I'll try and break it down for you. If can the baby survive? Can, let's, let's let's talk about a baby. The baby can survive on its own. Yes. Sure. Okay. Abortion is defined by Planned Parenthood and the law as terminating the life of the of the baby. Correct. Why terminate the life of the baby if it can survive on its own? Because it could kill both of them. That's why it is done at that stage. So how it could do you kill get, how one do you get, or the other, and they have to make it? He's correct here. Lance is just correct here. He's like. You're saying that if the vi if the fetus is viable, the mother should have to die. And Lance is just correct, and Tim is just freaking out for no reason. Tough decision and at that you, point. So how do you remove the fully formed nine-month baby at that point? Oh, I, I don't know the science of it. I, I, I've never performed that operation So before. shouldn't the law then be, if the baby must be removed and it is alive and capable of survival, all actions must be taken to preserve the life of the child and the mother? Uh, I would say they'd probably choose the mother first, right? Why? And, and and this is such a strange scenario. How often do you think that this happens and all of a sudden they're like, the baby could have lived. You could have done it. Why did you choose the other option? It's like, this is a tragedy of the highest order because they want to have the kid. At nine months pregnant, a woman is on her way to give birth. So it's like, it's the worst possible fucking I'm thing sorry, that could happen to her. That's not always, again, I, I said I didn't want a dog pile. No, but no, that's good, the, I mean, that's it's statistically not true. There have been surveys done on women who had later abortions and for a, a pretty large sum of them, it's because they were not sure whether the father of the child was willing to commit, and then when they found out... ...he wasn't willing to commit, they would have the abortion. Uh, and so there are different stats you're going to find for different points in pregnancy when it comes all the way along to nine months I don't have the statistical uh, data on that. However, I do know for later term abortions There are reasons other than what is traditionally considered to be a medically necessary reason for example some people will say that um a negative mental health outcome is a reason to abort a child later in pregnancy. So if the woman is depressed, they will list that as a reason for why the child had to be terminated to save the life of the mother, which is certainly not the case, very obviously. Sorry, let me listen we'll to say that, that um, a negative mental health outcome is a reason to abort a child later in pregnancy. So if the woman is depressed... Citation needed, my man. This sounds like some mega narrativizing. Let's see the numbers, bro. Let's see the numbers. Press. They will list that as a reason for why the child had to be terminated to save the life of the mother, which is certainly not the case, very obviously. Uh, and to the point of what Tim is saying, when we say there's no...
Killjoy says, Shark looked up these stats uh, on his stream. Ninth month abortions, number one cause is because of, of direct complications. And the second is because the abortion was impossible at an earlier date because of a legal issue or medical problem. Almost like Lance is correct here and the rest of these freaks are coping. No such thing as a medically necessary abortion. The principle behind that is if there is an operation which is necessary to save the life of the mother mm -hmm. and then she miscarries the child as a result of that operation which was necessary to save her life, that's not an abortion because nobody's intent was to go in there and end the life of the unborn child. And so if a woman's having complications where she has to deliver early, you deliver the child early, of course. And if you're at a point in pregnancy where the child isn't viable, that's, that's a, a horrible tragedy. You still do what you can to save the child, but you can't always save the child, and we understand that. But to go in and rip the child apart to end their life is never something which is medically required, even though an early delivery may be. But Wrong. Wrong. That is simply false. Saying that it is never medically required to do an abortion is absolutely and utterly false but are there situations where if the baby is in this is so harsh uh in its complete form that even trying to induce early pregnancy could kill the mother so they have to break the baby's body apart so that they can get it out without killing the mother i've never heard of such a thing so and th th there are there are letters by the way signed by, signed by literally thousands of doctors so, who have well, so let, okay, let well, me ask let me let me ask no, so just say one thing so 88 percent of abortions are in the first 12 weeks 88 yeah 88 percent of abortions less than 1.3 percent of abortions take place near the eighth or ninth month. how many abortions is that is good that? marker well, well how, how many is that i, I don't What's know the actual numbers 13, this is the percentages. 13 000. Okay, but we're, we're talking about less than 1.3%. Hold on, 13,000, that's the number of people who die from gun violence in the U.S. each year that aren't suicides. Gentlemen, so that's I 13, am not 000. here to justify... What the fuck? What the... Get this fucking Freedom Tunes joker out of here. What a fucking idiot. A literally... What the hell does that have to do with anything? What does the gun violence... What does that have to do with anything? By abortion when it happens as in it's but a good thing. No, no, no. I don't celebrate Brother, it. You're I'm, saying I'm, it doesn't I'm, happen. I'm, I'm, no, no, no. You're saying it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen 13,000 times. I said it's extremely... There is 338 million Americans. I'm sorry. The numbers are going to be a little daunting. Yes, the numbers will be high. Well, I, I'm, I'm not here to celebrate I don't, that. I don't understand your, your argument then. Like, My argument is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of human beings. If 13,000 people die from guns, we have a problem, right? If 13,000 people died from guns. 13,000 adults died from guns versus 13,000 pregnancies that had to be stopped in order to save the lives of a mother. Are you fucking crazy, man? Are you fucking, are you fucking crazy? These guys are insane, man. Like, they want to talk about Lance living in a cult? You have to be insane to think that 13,000 pregnancies that had to be stopped because of because the number one reason being danger to the life, severe danger to the life of the mother is the same thing as 13,000 adults' lives being terminated because of gun violence in a year. You actually have to, you have to have a completely and utterly broken brain to think those things are comparable at all. Jesus Christ, man. Well, yes, of course. If 13,000 yeah. late-term abortions happen, is that a problem? These are completely different things. Well, how so? Okay, so if someone dies by a gun, are they being shot? Were they killed? Did they kill themselves? Was it a suicide? Was it a that's gang a good, violence a, thing? Who knows? That's a good question. In, in, can in I the, clarify? The case, oh, I don't case, want to argue. Hold I on. I, I need to answer this. In the case of late, yeah, but, yes, but in the case of late-term abortions, more often than not, when statistics say, and they when they are polled, they say the reason that they are giving it is because it's a medical complication that could result in the death of the okay, mother or right, the child. Right, right. So, so let's, uh, I should, can we make the argument then that um, the use of guns on people are uh, allowed? The use of guns of people are to, allowed? To end their lives is allowed. Uh, so you that's that murder. Argument? You're describing murder. So if what? Colorado, for instance, passes a law saying there is no medical requirement for an abortion, is it is it wrong to to to, abo to kill the baby? You're talking about you're trying to compare murdering someone with a gun to a woman having to make a medical decision that could basically preserve her life. No, no, no. I said not death. not a medical reason. That's what that's what I'm saying. For, she, for, should she have a, the ability to have an abortion for any reason? Yes. At nine months. At nine months. I I would say at nine months because it only happens according to the stats based on. Uh, complete medical necessity. She has a right to do it. No, 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 no. Hold on, right hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Colorado legalized abortion in up to nine months with no medical reason required. Do you agree with I, that? I agree with that decision, yes. So, so the baby could survive on its own, and the mother is legally now allowed to just end its life. 
she has the right if she wanted to. You're saying so in Colorado, and I'm. It's not I, a trick question. You're. No, I know. To I know. That. But, I, but but I'm yeah, asking. No, but I. I I think th I think this is a good answer here. I think it's a fair answer to say, yeah, I think they should have the right because medical uh, d making a medical determination like that is very difficult. Um, you might not be you might not have the time or the money to see two doctors. You should still have the right to terminate the pregnancy, even if you don't think it's a a good action to have to take regularly. Just like Tim Pool says. Uh, well, I mean, Tim Pool thinks it's a good idea to fucking blow people away, apparently. But uh, Tim Pool, uh, uh, Tim Pool, I'm guessing, believes that it's a good thing that you have the right to self-defense, right? Not that you should kill everyone in every instance, I would assume. He believes that you have the right to it, though, huh? I'm asking you because you're the one who brought this up. I don't know what Colorado specific law says. So if you were saying that in Colorado, women have the ability at nine months to get to have an abortion for any reason. They, they could just decide the Elective, war. Yeah. Okay, I think they should have the right to do that, but the stats show that they're not doing that. But they should have a legal right to do that. Yes, it's their body, it's the, their the, choice, the, of course. So, so this is what I, I disagree on. I, I think if the baby needs to be removed from the woman, there's no reason to kill it. You know what I mean? Like you could just C-section and then put up for adoption. But I'm something. telling you that doesn't happen. But it, but but, it does. But but even but but, it, it, but, but hold so, on, hold on. Like you it, might be it, able to bring up anecdotes, but the stats don't I didn't, say that. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like why allow it to happen? I just don't understand. Are 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 you oh, arguing? Because, wait, because hold on. Is, because, are you arguing you oppose it, and you think it's morally wrong, but you think it should be legal? I I yes. think that women should Simple. have the right to decide what they do and have bodily autonomy over their own body. We're not talking about her body. We're talking. It about, is her body. We're of talking about it is. At nine months, even if it's still inside her, it's still her body. Even if it's a viable baby, we're talking baby, it's still about her body. the removal of the baby. Yes. The forceful removal of the baby, or forceful. So she chooses to have that. She the should woman have the right. says the baby must be removed from my body. Why kill the baby if they're removing it? I don't think they should do that. I would, I would, if, if they asked me, if they asked me, Lance, should I do this? I would say no, but she should have a right. Yes, of course. It's her body still. No, no, that no, no, that no, doesn't no, listen, stop. Listen. At, so like the woman is pregnant, the baby is viable and capable of surviving on its own. Sure. And she says before it hits, before it breaches oxygen, kill it. Do you think that should be allowed? This is again the baby guillotines. This is why I brought that but, up. But but it, what a weird scenario. This doesn't happen. This, this is it, not the real it, world. But it does. And, and if the argument is that it doesn't happen enough for you to care, that's fine. You're allowed to believe that. Sure. What I don't understand is it seems like you, you your position is a rather shock position where you recognize there is something inherently wrong with taking the life of a baby that could survive on its own. But you also rec but I, you're also taking the tribal position of women should be allowed to do it anyway. No, no, no. If you were to ask me, Tim, hey, Lance, do you think it's a good idea if this woman who's nine months pregnant, suddenly she got bored with the pregnancy, she doesn't want to have it anymore, but the baby's viable? Do you think that's a good thing to do? I would be like, no, of course then not. May, then yeah. why should it be allowed? Because it's still her right. It's still her body. But Bodily baby, autonomy doesn't stop at baby, my morality. Tim, baby it's is not being my removed, choice. Right? It's not my, yes, but that's not why my choice. Why kill it? Why but kill it? That's her choice, not mine. Why kill the baby? Ask her. So, ask her. Okay. So my, my point yeah, is simply this. Question, you don't her. need to be shocked by it. You are allowed to have that moral position. I think most people in America would, would prescribe that to be, uh, would, would ascribe evil to that. Sure, the, the, but that's, the you, idea you're, you're, you can ascribe you would, evil to whatever you want. That's up to you. That's your choice. The, the idea that you would say, doesn't mean that she should the woman be wants the baby removed, mm -hmm. and then in the process, instead of letting the baby live, remove it, but kill it, right? There's no reason to do that. There's no, you can give the baby up for adoption. You can drop the baby off on the, on the doorstep of a I, post office. I agree with you. I'm, so, not, I'm, not, I'm not disputing so why that. Great solution, Tim. Leave the baby, force a woman to give birth so that you can leave the baby on the doorstop of a post office. Man, these people have no brains. Tim Pool truly has no brain. Legalize, even if it's one, one. Why legalize? You see, this is the craziest because thing. Because her autonomy should not be cut off based on your morality, because you don't think that idea is good. You don't like but it. But the baby's that's, been that's removed not from her we body. Determine. Well, that's, that's if it was removed from her body and it was still viable. Right, and that's where the baby guillotines come in because I don't think this happens. I don't think women on the ninth month get abortions with viable living children and then be like, "I don't want it, kill it." I don't think that happens. You, I mean, you don't have to think it happens, but statistically, it does because your entire argument is this only happens for no, reasons of the health of the mother or the health of the no, unborn no, child. I, I said, so you I said, nobody have fucking does that. If people can have an abortion at an earlier point, they fucking do. It's not safe. No one gets a late-term pregnancy. 
unless they have no other option. It, it It's like, statistically, there might be somebody who has done it at some point somewhere, sure, but nobody does that. It's more dangerous, it's more painful, it's more, uh, uh, it's, it's more, it's more emotionally di di distressing at times. Nobody does that unless they have no choice. They get the earlier, easier pregnant, uh, 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 abortion. Again, uh, I think Lance is doing fine here, and Tim Pool, at least by my measure, comes off as completely deranged. He's been literally screaming at Lance, He's been absolutely losing his shit over this entire thing, and Lance's argument is relatively straightforward, but Tim hasn't even let him finish it. No, oh, that at the ninth month, if a woman is going to have an abortion, it's tr typically because it's a medical complication that could either endanger her or the child's life. And what well, I am well, saying so is me, there are me... doctors who will justify that by saying the medical complication is she is depressed. That is literally one of the sure, reasons sure, sure. given in that, surveys. Of so what... what 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 this guy is saying here is he's arguing against Tim's argument because obviously this guy believes that abortion should be outlawed entirely. And another so reason, basically, this guy should shut the fuck up because every both Tim and Lance purportedly would disagree with this insane fuck, this deranged occultist. Uh, that is yes, given yes, 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 the man months. who I was going to be with. Okay, okay, but Seamus, I got to stop you because this is a nebulous argument that doesn't get anywhere, and and I can respect the point that uh, if if you go to uh, a left, if you try and look this up, you're going to find left-wing uh, uh, sources and right-wing sources that will co contradict each other. So my question is strictly on the legality of terminating the life of a child. We, 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 I can sit here and pull up, oh, hey, here's one. Women uh, abort Down syndrome babies late term rather frequently. I'm I actually happy Tim Pool told that guy to shut the fuck up. That was the smartest thing Tim Pool has done in this entire thing. He was like, Seamus, shut the fuck up. You're you're going to do some Catholic bullshit where you're like, no, the purpose of sex is to be a... Oh, de do de do am I? Oh, do de do do de do do You do that. Your only reason to have sex is for the purpose of a creation, of procreation. God will strike you down. That's my Irish accent, okay? I don't care. If you think that sounds too Italian, shut the fuck up. Someone stole me Lucky Charms. I think that's wrong. I don't think that someone's life is forfeit because they have Down syndrome. But uh, your argument is that they do. I no, it's not. You, that, 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 that's a strong No, 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 no. no. Your, your argument is that women have a right to terminate a baby for any reason at any point. Yes. It, it, they I'm anti-Irish. I'm anti this Irish guy. Right. You should have the bodily autonomy so, to make yes, that decision. So what I would steal this guy's Lucky Charms. Fuck you. I'm yes. saying is, in the circumstance of Down syndrome, I think it is wrong to terminate a baby's life at nine months simply for having Down syndrome, but you would agree she is legally allowed to do so. I, I think she should be legally allowed to do so. Whether or not I think that's a good idea is irrelevant. Well, then there's the clarification. I think yeah. it should be illegal. Okay. Right. I don't, I think... So, so there are limits to how much bodily autonomy women should have. So, yes, yeah. right? Uh, so that's, so okay, so that's your sense. The pro-choice argument, because you're pro-abortion, right? Sure. Pro-choice pro traditionally in this country put limits at around like 15 to 16 weeks. Me Ron's KFC with the incredibly generous $10 super chat. Thank you very much for supporting the show. It means the world to me. Ron's KFC says, notice Tim said, put the baby up for adoption. Again, abandoning the baby and making it someone else's problem. They never talk about orphanages or social issues or the child's future development because they don't care. Tim Pool doesn't care. Uh, Tim Pool needs to maintain a position that is plausibly centrist while still ultimately being able to basically scaremonger around abortion and he's found a way to do so so yeah meaning if the baby is dependent upon the body of the mother then it is the body of the mother and she has final say if the baby is viable it can be removed in in a process that ends the pregnancy but doesn't end the life of the baby that's kind of like the compromise where the baby gets to live and the woman no longer has to be pregnant there seems to be this a moral argument where, well, but it just killed the baby anyway, which doesn't make any logical sense. Again, Tim Pool believes you have the right to self defense. Tim Pool believes you have the right to use a gun in self defense. That doesn't mean that every single, single circumstance where someone uses a gun in self defense is a morally correct one. Nonetheless, you should presumably have the right to it, right? It's very simple. But Tim Pool is also very simple. So. That's the pro-abortion side. So if you go back to the 90s, if you go back to safe, legal, rare, et cetera, if you even look at Tulsi Gabbard in 2020, that's where I'm at. 
conservatives are pro-life outright. Seamus would, would argue abortion in any capacity should be banned yeah. entirely. I'm in the traditional Democrat position. But you see, there is a tribal, amoral, illogical position of just let them kill the baby regardless. I don't I don't see any logic there. I, I don't see how that makes sense morally or ethically or or. You, just mathematically. Right. So you said I'm pro-abortion. What I'm against is forced birth. And I don't think the state should be forcing women to give birth against their will, which is what your position and your position is as so, well. So, I, so I'm, I'm against that. I, I'm, I think I'm that's, not, I think that's I, creepy I, I being government shit. I, I right. don't think they should be forcing them and, and turning completely them into agree. these viable Com wombs I against their will. I, I completely yeah. agree. I'm against forced birth, just like you. Cool. Except my difference is that if the baby's at eight months and can survive, they can take the baby out as if they would have an abortion, but not kill it in the process. If it's a viable womb at eight yep. months, is, yep. it is it viable? Yes, after, it is. Yes, after, it is viable after, at eight months. Dude, there have been babies six. after 20 after weeks. Six. Bro, your whole 20, position after, yeah. is that women have a right to kill the baby even if they end the pregnancy, but, but, and there's no logic there. The, the logic is that I don't think you you agree with forced birth at a point. How? I, I, how at eight months? At eight months, Tim Pool thinks forced birth is fucking cool and poggy. Stop making I, I, that stupid bullshit. But I, 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 you just said that. No, 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 bro, 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 bro. bro. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense statement. No. Because I already said I agree with you. No, a woman, no, you a woman should be able to end her pregnancy you whenever she wants. Me up to eight months, a yeah. woman could end her pregnancy whenever she wants. Say it. Tim Pool said a woman can end her pregnancy whenever she wants. Stop yeah, I demand you say it because, birth because, because both you ending make, a up, make up something fake. Damn. Tim Pool agrees with forced birth is a false. Damn, Tim Pool is has Tim Pool hasn't always been this hostile, has he? It feels like he's really losing it. It feels like he's actually losing his shit here. Like, what's going on, man? Like, like normally when Tim Pool argues with somebody, he doesn't get this mad, does he? I feel like we've seen a lot of debates with Tim Pool, and I've never seen him fly off the handle this hard. What the fuck is it? He almost got in a fist fight with a guest? Okay, so maybe he did. I don't remember that one. I mean, this is just weird. Like, Lance isn't even being that aggressive to him. This In this conversation, he called Lance a cultist. I feel like Lance should be more aggressive. He's been getting more mad recently. I don't feel like I saw the fight one. Ron's KFC with the incredibly generous $5 super chat. Side note, the musket gun and unsheathed samurai sword display looks dumb as fuck. Uh, it's like a last samurai type thing. Two minute fight clip. All right, all right, we're taking a little one. Let's see it. Let's fucking see it. They have it worse than I do. I literally we, just said yeah, that. I know, I know. That was, that was the, the facade. You just, you're to, just, that bro. That was the facade to not take away facade? from the Facade? Yes, it was like, yeah. Admitting outright, saying straight uh, up, bro. And, and you're Jesse Smollett hoax. You, you, hoax. you oh, made up please, this whole story dude. about white supremacists coming to your house and saying, oh, the mixed couple and throwing racist pamphlets at you. And you, you made up a whole Jesse Smollett thing. You, you, you know, you... you you know, I've been and, and that's, the, that's the takeaway from the struggle of the black man. It's, it seems like we're blending between No, no, you're, you're a racist prick. Here's my hour-long documentary and about the black struggle in Ferguson. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. A $100,000 budget. Yeah. James Baldwin interviews with people on the ground to talk about what they've been through. And you have the nerve to come up to me yeah, well, and tell me okay, my experiences yeah, okay. don't matter well, when I'm fighting Stop the fight. Stop screaming, bitch. Stop screaming, first of all. Talk, like, talk to me like I'm a... Because I'm not that guy. Yeah, talk you are. Normal. You I'm are. That you actually are, dude. Yeah. You are that no, guy. I'm, talking about, I'm not that guy to fuck you. Bitch, you want to get fucked up? All right. What the fuck are you screaming at, bitch? Let's calm down. You, gotta cut it, man. Man. you, you think you I'm can... I'm talking, I'm not that guy. You don't disrespect me, bitch. What did you do to me? Did you disrespect me? Nah, you start look, raising did your you... voice to me like I'm some sucker. Did I'm you laugh sucker, at me? Bitch. Yeah, laugh. Was did you did you disrespect me? I was nice to you, bro. I was being nice. You start raising your voice to me like I'm your son, bitch? You raise your voice to me? Bro, I said I, my voice I respected nobody. you. you, start, you wouldn't shut the I appreciated fuck up with that you. Your voice shit. I, I mean, he's correct in saying this guy didn't raise his voice at him, right? Like, let's go back to the beginning of this real quick. We're at one minute and twenty six seconds. Let's see. They have it worse than I do. I literally we, just said yeah, that. I know, I know. That was that was the, the facade. You just, you just, bro. That was the facade to not take away facade? from the Facade? Yes, it was like, yeah. Admitting outright, so saying straight him. up. Tim bro, and you're Jesse Smollett hoax. You, you, hoax. you oh, made up please, this whole story dude. about white supremacists coming to your house and saying, oh, the mixed couple and throwing racist pamphlets at you. And you, you made up a whole Jesse Smollett thing. You, you, you know, you... you 
You know, I've been and, and that's, the, that's the takeaway from the struggle of the black man. It's, it seems like we're blending between No, no, you're, you're a racist prick. Here's my hour-long documentary and about the black struggle in Ferguson. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. $100,000 budget. Yeah. James Baldwin interviews with people on the ground to talk about what they've been through. And you yeah. have the nerve. No, it is. Tim Pool is definitely the one raising his voice here. Tim Pool is getting, like, visibly angry and definitely raises the stakes. Now, this guy goes a little hard. I think this is a little much, personally. Oh, talk about I'm not that kind of fool. Laugh at me? Yeah, laugh. He asked him voice. to chill the fuck out and stop yelling at him. And, he, and, he, and Tim Pool keeps going with it. I raised my voice. I respected nobody. you. You, start, you wouldn't shut the I appreciated fuck up with that you. Raising your voice shit. I stopped when you told me to. You said talk, lower your voice, so I lowered my voice. No, he didn't. I told you I respected you coming. It was a good show. I said I respected you, yeah. willing to admit when you got things wrong, bro. I have put so much of my life into this. Look at this. I watch your videos. You, you, you I see already this? watched your video. No, I see your videos. You don't. You don't. No, you I see, see your videos. You yeah, you're, you're gonna say, look, this, this is the non-racist thing. But the meanwhile, you have thing. you have videos promoting Derek Chauvin and, and acting like he, he was in the right. You had you have videos of that. You have videos we of the other guy. On some you have things. videos of the other you, you, you have videos of the other guy Two guys. Uh, armory. Uh, um and Two you go, guys. oh but they grabbed the pistol defending them killing a black man in the streets and he ran for them and giving excuses. Two guys. You have these videos. So all of this shit doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't matter. No, yet. of course not. A decade of work doesn't matter. No, because not if, not if uh, no, because lives were lost by police, and you were there bootlicking the fucking cops. I think we should abolish the police. <laughs> but you don't. You claim that so you could get away with. Have you talking seen my about explosive rant where I was screaming at the camera about how they're going to kick your door and lie to defend the state? Yeah, but then I see you defending cops. You're talking. Good point, dude. Damn, that was a. Uh... I, I don't I don't remember seeing that. Maybe we maybe I saw that clip at some point, but I I don't remember that shit at all. Damn, that's wild, man. This is what would happen if Tim tried to debate bro this shit, except he'd actually get hit. Yeah, totally. I mean, Tim Pool's Tim Pool has been like off the cuff, like screaming at Lance in this conversation. We've been watching this thing for like. They've been talking for an hour. I don't know how long we've been reacting to it. I don't really care. Um, they've been going for an hour, and Tim Pool has screamed at him, called him a cultist. He's raised his voice at him multiple times. It's like, dude, Lance has been very, very chill. I think that I think that Lance should have gone har should have gone harder back and should have ha hammered it way home. But I think that Lance is doing fine, especially given how fucking unhinged Tim Pool has been in the last like five minutes here. Like this guy's been. I mean, he's just been screaming at Lance. Listen to this shit. Pregnancy whenever she wants. Up to eight a woman could end her pregnancy whenever she wants. Say it. Tim Pool said a woman can end her pregnancy <laughs> whenever she wants. Stop. Yeah, but I should mention you for both ending a pregnancy. Make up something fake. Tim Pool agrees with forced birth is a false statement. You're lying. I have oh, already man. said, I believe that women have a right to terminate their pregnancy. At fucking raising your voice, pointing at somebody, calling someone a cultist. I don't know, man. A certain months. amount of time. At eight months before you draw the line. No, that, I didn't. That, yes, you no, just said that. You're, I, well, if the baby is viable, that she shouldn't have the right to be able to terminate it. To right? kill the baby. Yes. I yes. said she can end the pregnancy whenever she wants. And ending the pregnancy can be giving birth or aborting the or baby. Or a C-section that keeps oh, the baby so alive. She has, to, she has to be forced to, to give birth against how, her will in so, a C-section, but the baby is viable and they give it so all. So how, right? do, how do they remove so the baby? So hold on, either way, the baby comes out of her. You're right, saying so, that so you literally, saying, so you literally want forced birth. You literally no, want to dude, force women to give birth against on. their so, will. Okay. So you're saying you're saying she should they should use the tools to rip apart the body and pull that out. Whereas I'm saying they should just take no, the baby No, I'm saying out. she should have the right to decide what happens to her body. That's it. Okay, but I, so if, all right, either way, the child is coming out. You're making this argument about forced birth. Either way, what is in her body is going to be outside of it. The question is, is it okay to shove forceps into the skull of the small person who's inside of her and then tear them apart limb by limb to get them out? Or should we say, no, that's not an acceptable way of delivery? By the way, imagine if anybody talked about any other surgery like this. Do you think that you should be able to slice someone's abdomen open with a scalpel, shove a tube in, cut out an organ and carve it out with the blood and suck the blood up with a tube? Sorry, I was referencing a uh, appendectomy there. That was just, I was just talking about an appendectomy. What are you guys getting so emotional about? 
You think they should be able to take a laser and slice open somebody's eyeball, reshape and bend and break the lens inside. I'm just talking about LASIK surgery, guys. I'm just talking about LASIK. That's all I'm talking about, man. What do you... Delivering a baby, you shouldn't kill that unborn child. How is that for either way it comes out of her body? Either way the child comes out of her body. It's not as if there's one scenario but, and, where and the for, pregnancy but, 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 magically and, and, disappears and, 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 and doesn't leave the body. Let me, let me so add, forced right. birth is a nonsense plot politics yeah. statement. But, but yeah, but in your scenario, she's being forced to give birth against her will. Like she can't she's decide. already pregnant, dude. I know, but... You... I mean, medicine, yeah. Like, nobody's... Like, obviously, medicine is grim. That's why I'm pointing out they only talk about things in this very shocking language when it's to their advantage. They're, they don't talk about every surgery this way. They just say it was a surgery. Even if surgeries are gruesome, as it turns out, all, almost all uh, types of surgery are pretty fucking gruesome. It's not something that most people can stomach. Most people literally can't watch surgical footage or even look at surgical photos because it's so grim. It's a very difficult thing. They break this out strategically when they want to scaremonger. It's just how it is. We're not talking about just, forcing her to do okay, anything. She's endorse, pregnant. But then endorse that position. I st did. St st stick, stick by it. I know, you, I reject you, the fr There's no such thing as like, forced birth. They're saying you can't kill that here, baby. Here, let me, let me but, tell you how fascinating so, this is. Because she the has the baby inside is her. is so yes, she does. fervent yes, she about her. legalizing the killing of a baby at nine months that I can sit here and say, I think women should be able to terminate their pregnancy whenever they want. But if the baby is viable, there's no she, reason she to she has, she has to be forced to give it then. She has to be forced to give birth and then give the baby up, is what you're saying. Give birth. Define. Yes. Okay. So, so that is forced birth, right? So, 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 so she, can, she can't decide to terminate it at, at eight birth. or nine months. Define give birth. You just said at eight months, if the baby is viable, I say she... eight months. Define give birth. I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're saying by forced birth. What is what does birth mean? You just said when she is at eight or nine it? months. Okay, so she's at eight or nine. I said viable. Okay, so it's viable. The baby's viable. She should have to. Literally, Tim Pool is just aggressively interrupting Lance here. I I think people are really harsh to Lance because. Um, I don't know how you would, like, when somebody is being that aggressive, like, there is no, like, the only way you respond to it is by, uh, you basically have to try and manipulate the audience into acknowledging that they're being insane. That's the, that's the only thing you can do when somebody is jumping down your throat like that. Like, Tim Pool is literally cutting off Lance every single time he opens his mouth give birth to it in some capacity. C-section, whatever. Define birth, and I can answer your question. Birth, the 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 removal of a child into the world from a mother's womb. If the baby, so how do they do that? Uh, the woman pushes the baby out. So then what would you call an abortion at eight months? Is an the woman, abortion? Is the woman pushing the baby out? No, it's most likely a medical procedure done by a doctor. And what is that medical procedure? An abortion. Like, but what is that? What is an abortion? Yes, like what? How, what? how is it done? Yes. I, I'm not. I'm not entirely okay, sure. This is, in my opinion, this is not a bad response. What is an abortion? Like, I'm not a doctor. I don't. I don't know the exact specifics of it. It's done in eight months. I know. I know to, earlier. I know to... earlier on, it's usually done with a, a series of your, tools. Your moral... I, I don't know how it's done in eight or nine Okay, months, so so your honest. moral argument is forced birth. I'm trying to understand what your position is. If you don't know how an abortion is done. Mm -hmm. Then are you in favor? Tim is doing, Tim is fishing for a response here, and it's a very dirty tactic, but he's failing at it. See, what he wants to do is he wants to get, get Lance to say something like, uh, I don't even know, I don't even know what he's angling for. Like, Lan there, that's the thing that makes this come off as so unhinged. He's fishing for an answer, but what's the answer going to be? Lance is going to say, I think you should be able to have an abortion at eight months. I don't know what a, I don't know what the details of an abortion is. I don't even know if Tim does. I don't know if Tim even knows what an abortion looks like in eight months. For a forced birth? Am I in favor of forced? No, I'm against well, forced birth. But you think that women should have to expel the baby, right? It's, it's completely fine for me not to know the medical procedure of how abortion is done to stand up for the rights of a woman's body. I, I don't need to know how people perform abortions directly. But, but I, I'm not going to lie here. I'm not going to pretend a, a, removing that Removing a baby from a woman's body is birth. Oh, so you're, so you're saying it doesn't count? It, no, 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 it, no, no, it's I'm birth to, of, a different, of a different nature. I don't think you have a definition, and I'm trying to understand. Tim mis is misusing the term fetal viability. Yeah, um, yeah, 
I, I think that's pretty clear. He uses that to sound more legit than, than he is. But again, Tim is in this weird position where he has to pretend that he supports abortion um, because he he does on paper, but then he has to spend his time fear-mongering about it in order to win over the right. It's a very weird position that he's in. This is just a very stupid conversation, and it's very weird for him to get this mad, this mad about it. Because for a moment, I've spent a lot of time critiquing and talking about Lance's positions, um, and a little bit about Tim Pool flying off the handle, but let's talk about what I would do if I was in Tim Pool's position. If if you really wanted to seem like a centrist, the way that you go with this is just go, uh, yeah, you know, I, I personally conclude that I, I don't think that at eight months that, you know, these medical procedures are necessary and just leave it at that. Because what Lance has said is nothing there, but instead Tim Pool's flying off the handle, which brings, which makes it makes me suspect how, how devoted he really is to a pro-choice position. Right? Like Tim Pool, if I want to step into the, if I want to put on the beanie for a second, if I want to be in Tim Pool's position, I want to argue for a centrist pro choice position that is against late term abortions. Don't you just go, I think late term abortions are bad and I don't think they should be legal. Uh, and then, t and then uh, Lance goes, well, doesn't that mean you're kind of pro forced birth? And he's like, and then Tim Pool should just go, at eight months? Yeah, I guess so. I don't really see it that way, though. Instead of doing this weird freak out. Like, that's the way that I would do it if I was in Tim Pool's position. Of course, I, I think he's like, I don't know, he's having some kind, he's gotten triggered or something. He's having like a snowflake meltdown over here. And what you mean by forced birth, but if you can't define the removal of the baby in a different way, I don't know what you're saying. Birth, birth, Tim, like the birth so of is, a child. So is a C-section a birth? Uh, sure, yes, it, it is a form of, of extracting a living child uh, that is viable to live in the real world. That's how you define birth, extracting a living child to live in the real world. No, I would define birth as someone giving birth. They are pushing a baby out of their body. So, so right, so I don't think women should be forced to do that, right? You don't think women should be forced to push babies out of their body? But the baby is in their body, so it's got to come out somehow. So you're going to take it out with a C-section? No, I, I don't know. Okay. But, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you oh, mean by this. Oh, now he doesn't so know. Why? Oh my God, man. He doesn't even... Oh God, this is so pathetic. Oh my God. Dude, what is this? Tim Pool dementia moment man would be forced birth so she's forced to give a, and make a child a viable child live in the real world i mean right, so when you're so pregnant that, the baby's right, gonna yeah. come out of you yeah. at some point that, that's the either point. we rip no it matter apart what or happens, you give birth the baby naturally. is coming out of the woman right yeah. yes so there's 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 no there's no being in favor of that or not it happens period yes okay so what's your point what's my point am i in favor of a natural process by which a woman has to have a baby removed from her no matter what anyone does says or does What's you're, your point? You're Tim. You're the one who's been flipping the fuck out uh, uh, at Lance. Like, what do you mean? What's your point? Point is that at eight or nine months, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Tim. You are wrong. Yes, I'll stop you right there. I know, because <laughs> nice. Because when you keep saying eight a, or nine, a good look, bro. Nice, nice move, bro. Damn, you definitely don't come off as triggered and super sensitive, Tim. And months, that's not what I said over and over and over again. Viability is after six months. Vi so viability six months. is... Okay. That means that there's so more as than as a 50% chance You're, you're also wrong. It's not six months. Like, so six as 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 baby it's is, not six months. So as soon as the baby... Listen to this audio. Four people cross-talking. Is viable, Tim. As soon as the baby is viable, then it's okay for the woman, even if she doesn't want to have it anymore for whatever reason, she should have to be forced to have it extracted from her and, and then live. Is that correct? Is that your position? I, well, it's not forcing the woman uh -oh. to have a baby live if the baby's already alive. Uh -oh. You see what I'm saying? Like, you right, can, so, so, so you're, you're okay, here's so a we're here's talking a about some, I gotta, so this I gotta, is semantics. This I got a compromise semantics. for you. I got a compromise sure. for you. We'll tell the mother we killed it, but we'll sneak it off and give it to someone else. Does that work for you? No, because I still think she should have autonomy. She should have the right to do it if she wants to. <laughs> of course. She should kill the baby after no, she it's shouldn't. already born? I don't want her to kill a baby. I want then her why to have, you keep I, saying it? Because I want her to have the ability to choose. That's different, and that is a fundamental you part just, of this. The baby's out of her body, right? Forcibly, in your scenario. No, 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 no. Let's of say, course. Let's say, of course. Let's she, say 24 weeks. The woman goes to the doctor and says, I want this baby out of me. And the what, what, what if she says, I don't abortion. want to have this baby? I don't, I don't want to have this baby. Okay. Okay. And the doctor says, I will remove it. Okay. Uh-oh, the baby's alive. What do we do? So you forced her to give birth? No, 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 no. She said, doctor, I'd like an abortion. He says, you got it. Step and right so he's, up. And so he's lying to her? 
No, no, no. He does the abortion and it fails. And an, the baby, abo an abortion the baby. is terminating a pregnancy. So, so there's, no exactly. such thing, there's no such thing as a trick abortion. You can't no, trick. They're, they're called failed abortions. Failed abortions yes. where doctors like trick yeah, right. women into no, taking their no, babies no, out? No, 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 no. So when they perform the abortion, as Seamus explained, they stick metal tools into the brain, scramble it up and rip its body parts ap apart okay. and then pull it out chunk by chunk. Okay. When the babies are smaller, sometimes they pull them out, but the babies don't die. They survive. Mm -hmm. Right. So my question is, in the instance of a failed abortion, what should is be any done? Is this true? A failed is any abortion of this true being that the, the child. I don't. I, I unironically don't know. Uh, I unironically don't know if he's even making this up or if there's even any truth to this. Like, I have no fucking clue what he's talking about here at this point. This is deranged. Child is living. It's yes. outside of the mother. Yeah. At that point, you cannot kill that child. That would be murder. Oh, okay. Agreed on that point. Right. Yeah. So then where does the mother's choice come in to before, kill? Before that procedure takes place. Gayfesh says, I'm, I'm with Vosh on this. Abortion debates are a no-win scenario. Abortion debates end up always being very stupid because you end up having to have an argument about the philosophical point of personhood. That's what that's what conservatives are always going to make it make it be about. And that is a very difficult debate to have because it is purely philosophical. And yeah, those are, they're very annoying arguments to have a lot of the time um, because there is, there's no, like hard facts are, are, are difficult to come by. This is why you have to have the spine pilled position, which interestingly I'll note, Lance is having. Lance says, I value the bodily autonomy of the woman. I think that she should have the right to terminate the pregnancy, that it should not have to have some sort of state justified reason for terminating the pregnancy. Once the child is born, obviously that child is born and alive and is a living child. But before that child leaves the womb, before that child is born, bodily autonomy wins. And I think that that is a, that is a perfectly valid thing to do because that is what these arguments always boil down to. The stats are are the stats in the stats that are used in these conversations are for totally different ends. The stats that conservatives are going to bring out are going to be things like, "Oh my God, ten gajillion babies are being murdered every year. They blow them up by sticking a a metal missile into their head and blowing their bodies apart." And then the stats that you know that liberals are going to bring up are going to go. So, yeah, well, uh, women are, you know, women don't have these things until the ninth month unless they're in a horrible situation and their life is bad. And the, the, but they're ta they're going to completely different ends. They're talking about completely different values. So at the end of the day, you just have to state your position and stand by your reasoning for it. You guys, uh, by the way, y you guys think I'm joking or whatever about the 10 billion babies thing? Let me tell you, no, I am not. Um, what the church I used to go to, the cult that I grew up in, this absolutely deranged cult, they used to sell bumper stickers uh, that would say the American Holocaust, you know, X million babies murdered per years, per year, and it would have a picture of like a fetus on fire. I'm not kidding you. Like, they are that dramatic. And, uh, yeah, if it sucks, well, uh, bring it up to the cons bring it up to the conservatives. They're the ones who, who can't have a conversation outside of saying that people having abortions at any point is the American Holocaust. So she, she has a choice to choose what she wants to have done with her body. If, if, if she goes to a doctor and the doctor's like, I'm going to perform an abortion, which the assumption would be that I'm about to terminate the child, but then he just secretly sneaks the child out of there, that's not performing an abortion. You're, you're just being deceptive. Yeah, and the doctor would should go to prison if they did something like that, in my opinion. I well, think you should go to prison if you should go to prison if he performs an abortion. <sighs> Snap. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Not Opposite surprised. Opposite perspective. So there's also something that none of us know, because I don't think any of us are medical doctors. The, the difference on the physiology of the female body uh, giving a nine-month abortion, having that happen, or the actual birthing process, whether by C. Wow, Moon Lord coming in clutch. What the fuck, man? Moon Lord, holy shit! How? How is it that Moon Lord is coming in clutch here?
section or natural birth uh it might have vastly different consequences on the female body so that's something to take into oh, account so well, so wait 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 remember the born alive act yes that was a republican position wasn't it what was, yeah, what was well, that? Yeah, so th there have been a couple of different Born Alive acts in different years, but what they basically say is that if Moon Lord is based, keep up. Don't ask Moon Lord his positions on the Jews, nuts. The abortion fails. It is not legal to kill the child. Wasn't that, wasn't that Republicans were trying to pass the a Republicans law? Republicans were trying to pass that. That was one of the only things Obama voted on in the Senate. He voted against it. Obama voted against it. Against it, But yes. you would be in favor of that. In favor of what? The Born Alive Act. I'm not completely familiar with it, so I don't uh, If an infant first. is born alive after an attempted abortion, mm -hmm. it has the same protection of law and degree as a newborn. Um, yeah, I would be okay with that, because at that point, it's a, it's a, it's a human. If you're killing a person that is alive outside of a womb, then that's murder, right? Yeah, I yeah. agree. Can um, I ask you, th this good. is not a gotcha. We, we agree I, on that. I, that's great. I, yeah, I, I want to ask in good faith. So, yeah, of course. You believe that the moment after the child is outside of the birth canal, sure. that they are now endowed with human rights. Yes. However, when they... The Born Alive Abortion Survivor Protection Act is a proposed U.S. law that would penalize healthcare practitioners who fail to provide care for an infant that is born alive from a failed abortion attempt. What the fuck? The bill requires that any infant born from an abortion attempt be given the same amount of care as any other infant born at the same gestational age, such as a preterm birth. Failure for a healthcare practitioner to do so can be penalized with up to five years imprisonment under the bill. Violations of the law are required to be reported to a hospital or law enforcement. The bill also, also authorized the right to civil action to the mother of which an infant had been neglected care. So what this is saying is, if an abortion fails, which I am not a medical professioner, professional, uh, you can imprison the doctor for five years and sue the mother if that baby then dies after that point. That sounds very, very problematic to me. That sounds like a huge, huge way of basically creating a, ch a legal chilling effect so that doctors are too afraid to do abortions because of the chance that if they fail, they'll go to prison. It just, it says it would allow for them to sue the mom. It's bait to allow pro-lifers pro to investigate every abortion for a living fetus. Yeah, that's, that's very clear why people would oppose that. They are misrepresenting this law. But again, that's all that they do. Tim, Tim Poole's entire job is misrepresenting everything. They're inside of the mother. Literally anything you do to them is acceptable because they're inside of the mother. Oh, no, I don't think anything is acceptable. But I think the mother should still have the choice ultimate uh, authority over what happens to her body. But wait, there's wait, wait, a wait, child wait, inside wait, of her hold body. On, hold on, hold on. Not what her. about yes. meth? Uh, like, should she be allowed to do meth? Yeah. Uh, I think if someone is doing meth while they're pregnant, that it is completely acceptable for something like... Uh, I don't know what the name of the service is in the United States. Child for, services? I guess child, like child services would be... Oh, yeah. it's her body, though. Yeah, it's her body. If she wants to do meth, what's the big deal? Uh, the big deal is that it's, she's intentionally trying to kill a child. Hold on there a minute. Yeah, and I see where we're going. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. It's her body. It's her if body. If she wants to do meth, what's the problem? Well, first off, doing meth is illegal, period. Doesn't matter if you're doing it with a child or not without no, a child. Not in Oregon. So, Methyl and dioxide, MDMA. It's a Maybe type it's of alcohol. Wait, then. sorry, what? Not crystal meth. Drunk. Crystal meth There's is legal in Oregon? Of, no, no it's not crystal. <laughs> Hold on a second. Did I, <laughs> MDMA is a kind of true. meth. Methyl and dioxide, <laughs> methamphetamine is yeah. uh, ecstasy. That's a kind of meth. There's also crystal meth. I think, I think Lance just misspoke here, which is a mistake. Fair. He made a mistake.
which is not legal. MDMA is legal in some places for therapy sessions. I don't know if it's legal for yes, very it is. pregnant women. Okay, it is. It, is it for War, pregnant Oregon women? Oregon decriminalized possession wow, in 2021. Oh, you're right. Um, but I don't know if but that's... I'm just, I, okay, okay, dude. So like... De sorry, decriminalizing so, possession is different than legalizing crystal meth. You know you know those two things are completely different, right? Uh, if well, it's you're, a question whether you can wait, press wait, charges. Hold, right, wait, yeah, yeah, so, hold on. Yeah. What? So, so, when you, so when you decriminalize a small amount of drugs, that means if oh. you're caught with that drugs by a cop, that means if you're arrested, you cannot be charged for one gram, two grams, that, whatever that's what that is. legalizing is. No, this no, is decriminalization, not. not legalization. We there, never said legalization. Thing, legalization is a semantic term. It doesn't mean anything. Yes, it means... No, that's not true. That's There's a big difference. Decriminalization means that they can't prosecute you, prosecute you for possession. Legalization means that there is actual laws passed that regulate the amount that you have. So decriminalization is basically... We, you you can't be tried in court for having or or for having this drug legalization is uh by the way here's what is allowed to be produced here's how you can produce it here's how much you can use it here's the license you need to do it yes it is a legal distinction but it's not just a, a small semantic difference there's a pretty major difference but regardless none of this matters let's hear where this goes it, 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 it no means that there's criminal. no longer a prohibition on that product okay so if a woman does meth she's legally allowed to have it right is she legally allowed to do it or possess it? I mean, what's the difference? Well, two very different things. You can be legally allowed to possess drugs and not be legally allowed to take drugs, for example. Alcohol. So she does alcohol. Can a woman chug a fifth of vodka while pregnant? Uh, yeah, she can legally. But do you think she has a right to do so? I think she has a right to do, yes. Yeah, she has a right to do so currently. It's just not a good thing at all. It's just a really bad thing to do. There's all kinds of things that you're allowed to do, that you have the right to do, that are bad things to do, because the act of trying to, to, uh, the act of trying to, uh, 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 litigate or to legislate, not litigate, that was the wrong word, to legislate that particular action would cause a greater harm. Like, for example, uh, how, how would you ever enforce pregnant people not being able to drink what if somebody doesn't know that they're pregnant can you clap them in prison for that should you be able to clap a woman in prison because she had a beer when she didn't know she was pregnant and alcohol is terrible for non-pregnant people alcohol is fucking poison it's like one of the worst drugs you can do it's horrible for you and your body and your brain this is so stupid she has a right to do it. I don't. But agree I with do think that I do think that Lance is stumbling on this point. To be fair, it's a pretty rough point. I think it's a it's like a it's like a it's a kind of a bad faith engagement, right? Because it's like it's a totally separate issue. Neither of them would agree that it's a good thing to drink. But le but obviously, you know what? If okay, here's what I would do. I got the strategy. If I was in Lance's position, uh, I would. Now, obviously, I have the benefit of not being put on the hot spot. Being hit by this out of left wing is a pretty rough one. But if I was in Lance's position, I would say, Tim, Tim, do you think that that the police should be required to investigate and arrest women for drinking alcohol while pregnant? And then he would say yes or no. And then I would say, OK, well, if you say yes, then. What if she doesn't know that she's pregnant? Do you think that a woman should have to go to prison because she drank something when she didn't know she was pregnant? A thing that happens all the time? Like, we can both agree that drinking while pregnant is bad. Hopefully we can both agree that drinking generally is unhealthy. But what you're, what he, he's getting a gotcha on Lance, but the gotcha can be reversed. You can do a uno reverso on Tim here very easily. But I will say, I, I sympathize with, with uh, Lance here, because Jesus Christ, that is, a, that is a tough one to deal with out of left field. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and heroin? Uh, it's illegal. I, I actually, I don't think heroin's illegal. I think heroin actually is, was legalized. I think it's controlled, but I think that one specifically was oxycodone and other drugs. So... She, she has a right to do it. Whether or not I agree with her doing it, that's completely different. I don't agree with a woman who would have uh, an elective abortion at nine months. I think that that is like, why the fuck but would you have done that? But I think she has the right to do it, right? But do you think it's ethical that she, like... Oh, I don't think it's ethical. No, of course not. Because some, some things are made legal that are unethical, in my opinion. True. And should those be made illegal? 
Uh, I mean, that's a very broad question, right? No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Things. Personal use of methamphetamine is allowed. It's a, it's a civil citation, like a traffic ticket, not a criminal citation. So allowed maybe is, a, is hyperbolic. Uh, it is a civil citation to be caught using uh, methamphetamine in Oregon. You get a ticket for it, but not, not no, no crime. So I just looked up the Born Alive Act, by the way. It says this bill is deliberately misleading and offensive to pregnant people and doctors and nurses who provide their care. It is another attempt by anti-abortion politicians to spread misinformation as a means to get a warped political end. To ban. Oh, yeah. By the way, there is a zero percent chance that I wouldn't bring a laptop with me if I was going to the Timcast studio. And I would also ensure that I had the fucking Wi-Fi password. There is no way the guy, these guys dunk so much shit on you. I would absolutely be like, give me my fucking laptop, you bitches. Safe and legal abortion. It's an entry point to try and make abortion illegal. Where did you read this? Okay, well, well, no, hold, hold on, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't care. I mean, wh who, who cares about the Born Alive Act? My, the question was, you brought if, it up. You guys brought up the Born Alive Act. If an abortion Act. happens, but the baby survives, can you kill it? And he, Lance already said no. So I, I, we're, we're done with that. So he would, yeah, 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 for sure. So and any other political arguments, anyone left, right, or otherwise trying to change that? No, 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 it's, it's irrelevant. Once the baby's born, it's it's a baby. So a, yeah. So, it, has, it has the same rights as every other human at that point, right? This is, it's this an is, American. This, this, this is an interesting, I, I think this, this falls in line with the idea of anarcho-tyranny that we were talking about. Oh the, my my, my view of the modern left is that their positions are nothing but chaos. There, there's, huh? there's no logical pathway towards preserving life, uh, improving people's lives. It seems to be only, it's like, it's like, it's like yin-yang, right? There's one side that's talking about long-term planning, logical thinking, and improving the world, and one side that takes the inverse position no matter what. For instance, 25 people push in front of a sub. <laughs> do, do, can we listen to that again? Hold on, just listen to how slanted that is. This alone should give Tim Pool a right wing bias. There are people who are fighting for life and law and order, and there are people who just want death and destruction. L like, literally, what the fuck? Chaos. They're, they're born, it's, it's a baby. Interesting. I, I think this this falls in line with the idea of anarcho tyranny that we were talking about. The, my my view of the modern left is that their positions are nothing but chaos. There there's there's no logical pathway towards preserving life, uh, improving people's lives. It seems to be only it's like it's like it's like yin yang, right? There's one side that's talking about long term planning, logical thinking, and improving long term planning, logical thinking, and improving the world. And one side and improving the world, and the other side. According to his argument, the right is the side that wants long-term planning, logical thinking, and to improve the world. And the other side wants to ruin the world, think illogically, and never plan anything. How can you possibly pretend to be a centrist? That takes the inverse position no matter what. For instance, 25 people push in front of a subway, nobody bats an eye, one guy, three guys try to subdue a man, and now they want prison. That's like a weird inversion of what the law is supposed to do. The law should stop the people who are pushing people on the trains and protect the people on the train who are being victimized. But the left's position is the inverse of it, right? Are you asking me for like a, I mean, an affirmation of that? Because if you ask no, me, no, I'm just what, saying like that's my view. So that when, you, my when you say the the left's idea are all chaos, I mean, if you really wanted to boil down what the left is fighting for, especially myself, it's expanding freedom. I I, I believe in freedom. I love freedom. I, I'm sure everyone here likes freedom too, right? You're well, all about freedom. Like, you def how do you define yeah. freedom exactly? So for me, I, I believe in a democratic process where we don't have tyrants, we don't have dictators, we don't have kings or queens. We have the ability as a democracy to be able to vote for who we work for, or sorry, who who our leaders are, right? Like we want to be able to vote for our president, our prime minister. I, I, I believe in that fundamentally. But my other thing is I want to expand that freedom into the workplace because we spend about eight hours a day every single day in our works, our jobs. I want to expand freedom there. So people who work at their jobs for eight hours a day have the ability to vote for things in their lives, better health care, better working conditions, whether or not their boss is corrupt and stealing from all of them. I want to expand that. I want to expand freedom into other parts of life. That's, so that's, what, that's what a fundamental belief for so me. So what do you mean by stealing from them? Uh, stealing wages, for example. Like actually shorting someone's check and so like... so the yep wage theft is the uh, I believe the largest form of theft is wage theft, wage theft yes officially that's like recognized by the U S government wage theft is the number one largest monetarily form of theft yes.
largest form of theft in America right now is wage theft. If you look I had it happen to me. I sued. I, I went to the National well, Labor Board and we won. How does it happen? Yeah. As you should. So there's a ton of not ways. Paying not paying overtime. Not paying overtime. Bosses uh, simply just garnishing checks or garnishing wages, stealing tips, or thinking that tips are justification to pay them lower salaries and stuff like yep. that. Yeah. All of it. Bullshit. And when you look at theft... Now, uh, you could accuse me of being a pre-watcher. I literally did not pre-watch this. I didn't see fucking anything from this. Actually, no. That's not true. I saw one thing. I saw a 10 second clip of uh, of Lance pulling out a graph. And I think somebody was posting the nerd emoji at him because he pulls out a graph. Every single, like you look at the stats, right? Cars being stolen, jewelry, all that. Wage theft blows everything out of the, like they're not even comparable. I got, you know, I like got, it's one down here and then it's like the other one's fucking all the way got, up there. I got a story for you. So uh, I worked at a company, I get a paycheck. I'm good at math and stuff. And so I look at it and I'm like, hey, there's a problem with my paycheck. And they go, no, it's good. I'm like, no, it isn't. There's a problem with my paycheck. Fix it. And I, and I, I very quickly was like $67 missing. I want it fixed. And I want it fixed now. And they went, oh, give us a few minutes. Came back 15 minutes later, handed me a check. I looked at it and said, are you joking? And they were like, huh? And I was like, this is wrong. I'm not an idiot. Fix my paycheck. Went to a couple other employees. They said, I said, let me see your paychecks. I looked and I went, come with me. Walked right to the National Labor Board in Chicago and said, this is what they did. They took our statements. The, we went to the company okay. and we told them we were going to form a union because job, of what bro. they had done. They fired us on the spot for doing it. We sued them. And then uh, I'll give you air quotes in saying we won. What actually happened was after six months of being out of work, they said you can get retro pay, which will be $7,000 each, or we can go to fight and then I'll give you your job back. And I'm like, if they give us our job back, they're going to retaliate against us. No, no, that's illegal. And I was like, oh, come on. So we won the fight. But it really means they were able to fire, fire us to stop us from forming a union. So what would be a yeah, good so, better example of expanding? Sorry, Seamus. Oh, no, something. no. I just want to make the point. Uh, I'm not I, I haven't seen the stats on wage theft causing more in losses than all other forms of theft combined. I'll just have to take your word for that. And I'm willing to grant that for the sake of I think that this discussion. Causing in losses? Wait, what do you mean? Causing more in losses to who? What? <laughs> Causing more in losses? It causes gains for companies, you fucking idiot. You fucking snake. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to grant it if that is the case. And at the very least for the sake of argument. I certainly don't agree in involuntarily democratizing all workplaces. That's probably a much longer, interesting economic discussion. Happy to engage in it with you guys, too. And I suspect we would all have different views on it. I don't know if you want but to go to other issues or if you want do. to talk about I, that. I, have a I would very like to talk about that. Talk about as well. Budweiser. Yeah. You're going to move to Bud? Budweiser. I, I, I do want to talk oh, about LGBTQ+. We, go. we got to do it. So why, here why, we, why I'm and, here. And Budweiser opens that door. Ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> the Anheuser-Busch CEO has finally disavowed the Dylan Mulvaney yeah. ad. In private to investors, though he's not made a public statement, sales are down 26%. They're going to be giving out free cases of beer to distributors, and they've vowed to spend millions of dollars in marketing. But uh, the boycott is particularly effective, I would say. And there's videos now coming out of people at sporting events where the Bud oh, yeah. Here's his next citation. Remember, he cited theocratic fascist Matt Walsh. He, uh, he cited... A uh, right-wing convention myth-informed, and now he has cited the Daily Mail, right-wing rag from the UK. Oh, but he's super centrist, bro. Super centrist. Light is just behind the counter, totally full, and everyone's buying you other brands. Out. You zoned out. They said they were going to switch topics, yeah. So, uh, did Ian and Seamus both just leave at the same time? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where they went, but they, they ran for both it. leave. So, yeah, uh, so yeah uh, let's 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 jump into this. What are your sure. thoughts on the on the Budweiser thing? Uh, my thoughts are, keep going. You're doing awesome. All of you. I, I mean this. To every single person protesting Bud Light, fuck yes. I am so here for this. It's fucking amazing. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but Budweiser sucks. Anheuser-Busch sucks. It's a massive multinational corporation. They're absorbing. super anti-LGBTQ+, so it's been beautiful to see. <laughs> I love it. Oh, they donate so much to right-wing Republicans oh, who push anti-LGBTQ laws. So Anheuser-Busch getting taken down. Oh, man. I, I'm so here for it. Keep Me going. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah uh, they think that they can pay off Republicans. They can hire GOP aides. Right. And that is going to be satisfactory for their customers who are upset with them as a brand. So clearly what we can see where I think we agree is that Anheuser-Busch is a faceless corporation with no real values that is willing to willing to spit in the faces of the little guy if it earns them a profit. 
They're a trash company and nobody should buy their products. The left and the right both agree. Here, here. Unity for once. I hope they fail. Same thing with Disney. Keep going after Disney. I'm Absolutely. for it. Take Disney down. I'm, I'm all for the right wing taking on Disney. All for the right wing taking on Anheuser Bush. Yes, of course. These are terrible fucking corporations. I'm all here for it. Um, by the way, the Daily Mail is like the number one source on the show, right? Like every single time you pulled it up. Because that same site that you showed me, All Sides Media Bias, it has the Daily Mail on right wing. And I know that you yourself, when you, yeah, when you pulled it up. Yeah, they're actually fantastic. The but, Daily Mail. but if you use them as a primary source, you understand why I'd say that like... We don't use them as a primary source. Okay. What happens is mm. when we when we mm. pull up stories, I'll, I'll go to like CNN, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, Fox News, ABC, mm -hmm. and they'll each have like 300 words. And then you go to the Daily Mail after doing a search on, on key elements of the story, and the Daily Mail will have like seven different versions of all breaking down different components. Okay. Like if you scroll down the Daily Mail, they often do these special sections where they have entirely different stories within the story, providing more context. Like for instance, this story from the Daily Mail not only talks about the current story with the CEO, but it even goes all the way into all of the context going back to the commercial that was was released, the, the, the sale drop at 6% in the first week, to, to the, the video, it, it, it like covers like literally this. every, it even has a photo of the VP and her husband, yeah. how in-depth this story is. So it's like, if I'm gonna pull up a single article, I can pull up five ABC, CBS, New York Times, or I can just pull up this one that has seemingly everything in it, including Kid Rock. Just remember, his other citations, as we said before, Matt Walsh and Myth Informed Mike's Twitter page. Including John Rich, including Bud Light being poured into a dumpster. Yeah, it's so a it's, aggregate. it's a massive aggregator. Yeah, but uh, honestly, I, I have no problem with y'all going after uh, fucking Bud Light. Uh, have a time, go nuts. Um, I have a really big problem with what I feel on this show is a lot of anti-trans hysteria and fear mongering that takes place. You want to like, open that book? Uh, I have that book at home. We can talk about that in a second. Yeah. And I'm totally comfortable talking about that book. I've read it. Um, Should it be in schools? I want to talk to you about the trans issue, though, because right, that's, right. And that's, right, what that, that's why I ask about the book. Okay, it opens we, can, the we can get to the books and the schools, the curriculums and everything mm -hmm. that the Florida's taken away. But you are you profess to be kind of like fact based, science based, right? Yeah, like, like you pull up. I've, I've noticed you want to pull up stats and figures and stuff like that. Of course. Why is it that you push propaganda when it comes to trans people like what that is so far beyond the pale? Like what? OK, let's start with gender affirming care. Mm -hmm. Gender affirming care, you're very, very against. I've heard you call it what, the mutilization, the mutilized like I mutilation. It, I don't call it mutilation. I've never said that. That's what you say on your show. I do. No, I, don't. I don't know if he does. I call no, it mutilating I, I don't. children. I yeah. call it child sex change. When you were talking about Dwayne Wade moving his family, you... someone in the crowd said, "Why are you mutilating your son?" That was a quote from someone else. I didn't say that. But I then, call it. But then you made. And it... I've I've explicitly said I don't take the right agi agitator approach of calling it mutilation because that's not effective in having a conversation. I will plainly call it a child sex change as what it is. I'm not going to call it gender affirming or mutilation because I don't think those things accu accurately explain what it is. Okay, so when it comes to gender affirming care. Zero to about are, are ten. You're talking about child sex change. No, I'm talking about gender affirming care. But, Zero but, to about gotta, ten years you, you old. Define oh, the answer you is define yes. It. You got to yeah. define it, okay? Because if you're talking about something different, tell okay. us what you're talking about. All right. So, if someone is trans and they are young, and until they are about ten years old, before they go through puberty, gender affirming care would be in the form of you using different pronouns, preferred mm -hmm. pronouns, and allowing them to dress differently. Yeah, I don't care about that. Do you have a problem with that? Does yeah. anyone here? Yes, I do. I don't. I don't. Okay, so both of you don't. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do, do you accept that there is no surgery being performed on children at that age, from zero to about 10? There's nothing, there's no hormone blockers, there's no puberty there, blockers. There, there is hormone blockers. I don't think surgery no. is happening on okay, kids. So no, they don't give hormone blockers to kids who don't have fucking hormone production yet. Puberty blockers block puberty. If you're not going through puberty, you don't take fucking puberty blockers, you fucking clawed. Jesus Christ. So hormone, under, under 12. So hormone blockers aren't given to children until they go through puberty. That's not true. We, we actually pulled this up with Destiny. He actually, he actually called me out. I was wrong about a stat. Okay. What we found was 47,000 cross-sex hormones, I think it was something like 17,000 puberty blockers and like 2,000 double mastectomies for girls after the age of, uh, of 13 or whatever. But uh, So that doesn't apply to anything I just pu said. Puberty blockers were, were preteen. Uh, puberty blockers. Yes, puberty blockers. They, they are given have to. They to have someone. because they have to give them the puberty blockers before puberty starts. Yes, of course. Right. So, so you, okay. So you're just reaffirming what I just said. From zero to ten, till about you're about to go through puberty. Gender affirming care only comes in the form of using different pronouns, using different names, allowing them to dress differently, and that's it. And you don't have a problem with that. Wait, Lupron too? Okay, so we'll get to Lupron. 
But up to that point, you don't have a problem with any of this yet, right? I'm saying, I, and, like, and, you, and you agree that there is no surgery being performed on children at that age. Zero, zero to ten. Oh, I'll, I'll just, oh, let me just start from the beginning so I can make sure I'm, I'm getting oh, what you're saying. Oh, he's fucking stumbling now. Saying right. Yeah. I don't care if parents call their kids names or whatever. I, I, I care about medical or surgical intervention. Okay. So that doesn't happen until about the age of about 16. That's the average age for... That's, that's act, but, but you're, you're wrong. Okay. Like, and, and, and look, we, we had Destiny on the show. We went into great detail about it. There are girls who are 13 who are getting this done. And there was a study, actually it was, it was Canadian, I believe, 12 to 17. They had several hundred surgeries performed. Okay, so again, I'll, I'll I, I said, I said the average age, but if you want to say that there are people who get this at 12, there could be the case. Who would have it? I think let's let's start with puberty blockers, Tim. Mm -hmm. Lupron. You, you both have a big problem with Lupron? I don't know a lot about it, but I consider it a medical treatment. So okay. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't be uh, giving Lupron to kids. So you don't think you should give Lupron to kids? Why Why don't you want Lupron being given to trans kids? To Because it's a, a, a puberty blocker that inhibits the natural function and development of their body. And more importantly, point, I think my view is... That's the fucking point. That's the point of it. Uh, built upon what we've seen out of Europe already, Why, right? Why, not what? Right, so earlier on, maybe a few years ago, I was more agnostic on the issue until Sweden, Denmark, Finland abandoned this and the Tavistock Center got, su got shut down mm -hmm. and the data they released said this actually caused more harm than good. And then I was like, well... Okay. Yes, as people in chat are pointing out, uh, uh, fucking an infection is a natural process. That doesn't mean it's good. Okay, hey, how about that? And for some reason, in the United States, they're still hell bent on moving forward with what we can already see from, you know, better countries with better healthcare systems saying no to this, right? Okay, so I can address those individually because I have the explanation as to why that happened. When it comes to Lupron, zero to 10 is about the age where gender affirming care only comes in the form of different names, pronouns, stuff like that. We, uh, we can all agree that's completely fine. But we the can't. I mean, oh, I just agree. Yeah, no, okay, <laughs> you <laughs> three can agree, fine, but fine, I don't. Fine. Okay, fine. But the, it's their show, so I just want to concentrate and, but, on, and, on and, their and I'm, 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 my, my position is more just like, I don't know, man, like social therapy stuff. Uh, they say that uh, after puberty, desistance rates are between 60, 65 and like 92 percent. Okay, so, so, so that's completely false. I, 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 and I I'll mean, get to that. We have to, we have to do oh, this. Come piece, on, bro. We come have on. to do this piece by piece first, okay? Oh. Let's well, let's 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 get let's get through loop. Hey, I first. just I just proved you wrong. Uh, studies Pretty show uh, 10, 10 follow up studies found existence of 61 to 98 percent. Yeah. Can you can you click on the Wikipedia article? Detransition topics. Oh, you're, the... you're missing the mic. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Missing the mic. But... Uh, what are the studies? Where, where are we talking about? I would uh -oh. like to know if you are taking uh -oh. these studies specific. Well, because I have each one of them written down here and I'm, I'm quite curious. Is the Drummond study one of them? Is the Wallen study? Is Stensma, the Swedish study, a part of this? The 2011 study? Probably, I don't know. Well, uh, no, we should know. This is incredibly important for no, what we're talking it's about. Oh, it's not. All of a sudden, Tim Pool doesn't care so much. This is 2018. This is uh, Gender Dysphoria and Adolescence Current Perspectives in the National Library of Medicine. Okay, scroll down to the conclusion of this one. Just Want to get the mic again? Oh, sorry. sorry you can carry it around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Move it. I gotta get, gotta get used to this. Yeah, dog. I know. Scroll down to the conclusion of the study. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to at least skim some of the what, what the numbers and reference are to like the, the reference while you're the, skimming i when i think of a little kid like being outcomes, like a little boy being like disorders i'm a girl the parent i i would hope that the parent would be like you can be you you can pretend to be whatever you want you can be an actor you can play a girl mm -hmm. but i get afraid when a mom's like he said he's a girl that means he's trans right so f for this it's not a process. It doesn't exist in which someone can say, hey, I'm a boy, I'm a girl. And then they go into a doctor's office and like, well, take some Lupron. It's you do you do years and years wow. of consultation between uh, a I, doctor uh, and, just, and, and between like a therapist and between the patient itself. I'm just going to read this. Sure, of course. Adolescence is a crucial time for identity and psychosexual development in young people with gender identity concerns. The outcomes of GDC have been discussed in terms with its of its persistence and desistance. For most children with GDC, whether GD will persist or desist will probably be determined between the ages of 10 and 13 years, although some may need more time. Evidence from the 10 available prospective follow-up studies from childhood to adolescence, reviewed in the study by Ristori and Steensma, Indicate that for around oh, it is 80, Steensma. I was right. I asked if this was Steensma. Okay, I, 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 can, 80, I can answer this. Eighty percent of children who meet the criteria for GDC. Right. The, but you said you said 2011. Oh, so there's multiple Steens, uh, Steensma studies. They've actually built upon each other. Uh -huh. And the problem with the Steensma study, unfortunately, is that they actually ca uh, characterized 
people who were not trans in that study, they didn't compare people who were trans to people who were trans and then oh. detransitioned. They compared yeah. people in the general population. What's your 40, source? What's 40, your source for that? Yes, keep the, this. It actually says it right here. Look, indicates that for 80% of children who meet the criteria for gender care, the G, they're for, for gender dysphoria care, the GD recedes with puberty. That doesn't, what this means, this is not people who start this is, we, we, I literally argued about this. Uh, I argued about this back in my debate days. This is for people who qualify at all for considering gender dysphoria care, okay? So the desistance rate for people who actually go on to start puberty blockers is next to nothing. It's incredibly low. However, some people this is stuff that supposedly Tim Pool should support. Some people have gender identity concerns and they would qualify to potentially start care, but they but the gender dysphoria stops and so they don't start those those hormones at all. According to Tim Pool, this is the system working the way Tim Pool in t claims that he wants it to work. That there, that the the system is filtering out people whose gender dysphoria recedes as they enter into puberty. He's they, they this this study is always misrepresented by conservatives because they say the desistance rate is of people who actually start puberty blockers, but as it turns out. Of the people who start puberty blockers, the desistance rate is almost nothing because by the time you're at the point of being prescribed puberty blockers, it takes a level of sureness that is not present in all kids. According to Tim Pool and these other people, this is the way the system is supposed to work and they're just lying about the statistics. It's unbelievable. Is he being a liar or a dumbass? A liar. These people lie about trans people because they have an agenda. The actual author of the study has come out since and said what, that- What can, and I, said what can, that the what study, can I, what can I pull up to confirm that? Okay. Like, because look, I pulled up a study that said a thing. You've made a counterclaim. I'll love I will you. Didn't read the study, you fucking idiot. Tim Pool didn't even finish reading the study. Finish reading the study. What it says: people who qualify for care have a desistance rate of over eighty percent. Not people who start care. Pull it up. I've, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. Jesus okay, so fucking Christ! This topic to makes I don't me know so fucking was. mad. Okay, so, well, Steen's, and the problem, uh, I'll say one more thing because I had this written down, 45.3% of the people did not reapply for treatment. They counted that as people who were detransitioning when they weren't, in fact, doing that. Um, wait, so can, can, go, can wait, can I ask so, you something? Yes, yes, go, 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 okay, so he asked yes, 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 for the source. Let's do things in order. Well, I'm going to respond to what you trans, just said. Trans I, I, need to, I need to respond to what that you just said right now. kind of important to respond to. We're literally talking about desistance. Right. If they're including people who desisted, you'd have to to get the number of no, those no, no, who desisted. No, 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 they no, no, they no. included people who did not reapply for treatment. They counted that as someone who was desisting. That's just someone who didn't show up again. That's, 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 that's the, the, yeah, you do that's not, literal not. desistance. No, it's, it's that's not. not. That, that's not your, oh my God, he's so fucking uh, That's no, literal not, desistence. Not, not, not whatsoever, Tim. That is someone who has decided they just don't want to go talk to that doctor or experience things with that doctor. They could have gone off to a different doctor. They could have done something else. But that is not someone who has verifiably said, I was trans, I'm no longer trans. So, uh, that's uh, just what? people who did not show up. Thing. Okay, so go to transadvocate.com slash. I'm not going to. A, a, I, need, I need a study or something, not an advocacy th website. Th th okay, this, I, this, I pulled up a scientific study for you. you. I'm Tim. not pulling up a nonprofit. Good job. Advocacy so group. this is an interview with the person who did the study in this article. I have pulled up a scientific study for you, and you the have person who. And what does the scientific study say, Tim? Fucking finish reading it, you idiot! You manipulative fucking piece of shit. Did, and I'm challenging you with the person who did the fucking study. And, but and you're, and you're telling me to pull up an advocacy website, which is not on par with a scientific study. But it's it's featuring the person who did the scientific study. Is there study. a counter study saying this is not correct? Okay. If you, uh, yes, an overwhelming which is, amount. Like, oh, okay, sure. Let, let me pull that up. Okay. Can you like can, I, look? If I pull up the net, the NIH, sure. And then you say go to transadvocate.com. Sure. You Let's understand why this. I'm not. Let's going do to this. Do that. Cool. Cornell University. I'm not, I'm not going to Breitbart for my source on desistance, okay? You went to the Daily Mail, you fucking idiot. Your own website lists that as a far-right source, you fucking moron. Sounds good. Cornell University did what's, a meta-study. Let me, they, what's, they, what is it? Okay, Cornell University did a meta-study on 55 Can different studies. Can yeah, I pull just start looking up Cornell University meta-study on detransition. Cornell University did a meta-study on 55 different studies on detransitioning. Of those 55, they found 52 of the studies showed that people 
detransitioned at a rate of less than 4%. And of those people who did it, the reason they detransitioned was social stigma. That's 52 of the 55. The other three of those 55, they didn't show a net negative effect. There was not a single study of the 55 that Cornell University looked at that showed detransitioning or gender affirming care being a bad thing for trans people. If anything, it was a net positive. This is a meta study of a whole bunch of studies. I have another meta study. So wait, but hold, hold on. But I'm, try, I, I just, I'm trying wanna, to pull up a scientific study to confirm what you're saying. Yeah, you I also just want to ask a question about this too. Sure. So you're mentioning that this is a, a meta analysis of studies yes. on people who have detransitioned, but by definition, right, this is taking into account people who went through what? Puberty blockers, hormone replacement therapy. It's shit like this, by the way. It's shit like this that legitimately makes me so angry that I just never want to talk about politics again. The, the level of dishonesty that these people will go to, the sheer level that they're going to have some fucking idiot cartoon, right, far right cartoonist asshole come on and interject in the middle of a conversation where Tim Pool is blatantly misrepresenting the study and refuses, refuses to engage with critique categorically, that they just throw it out because, oh, the website's name is transadvocate.com. That means I won't listen to anything from here at all whatsoever. I'm not going to listen to a meta study because, uh, uh, I don't have a reason for that. Let's let Freedom Tunes, the fucking far right freakazoid, come in and talk on this. Insane. There is, this is, this is why debate fails, by the way. This is why this, there, there is a limitation to the value of debate. And I've always said this, that there is a limitation to the value of, de of debate. Nobody who watched this, even though Lance is correct, nobody who watches this cares about any of these opinions. They're not here to learn. They're here to have their biases reaffirmed. They are here to hear Declan O'Hanahan, uh, the fucking cat, trad Catholic piece of shit, fucking dump garbage down your throat and misrepresent studies. Oh, pardon my Irish phobia. I'm sure a bunch of feigned fucking offense is going to come out from all the fucking racists out there. Fucking idiots. P, in, uh, in our president is Irish. Yeah, listen, no, it's fair game. Once you get, once you get a fucking Irish president, it's fair game for me to poke a little fun at this guy who's got the Irish flag fucking flying behind him. Okay, while well, he talks about how, uh, yeah, he doesn't believe that trans people should be allowed to live. Okay, fuck him, fuck him. Whole so surgeries. It, sure, for each study, it was different things. In mm -hmm. some of the studies, it was people who were going through uh, puberty blockers. Some had hormone therapy. All the Irish people in chat are disowning him. That means I win. But a lot of them in one form or another had received gender affirming care. They were trans when the study first uh, tried to identify these people. And then it looked at them years later. And how is this sample collected? Because almost every single issue or almost every single study I've seen from... It's not a sample. This is a mega... Uh, this is a, a mega study. Oh, my God. It's a meta study. What, the, what? Just so people understand, just so you guys understand what a meta study is. A meta study is a study that takes studies that have been done, compares them their data and 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 analyzes what the conclusions are from intercomparing those data. Now, um, meta studies are incredibly important because as it turns out, if you never do a meta study, you can never conclude what multiple experiments, there could be hundreds or thousands of experiments on a topic and you need to do a meta study to figure out what the information is across all the studies. Meta studies are not perfect. Nothing in science is perfect, but a meta study is a very reliable way of cross analyzing multiple experiments. And of course, the more clear the meta study is, the better. Everybody's saying Giga study, Sigma study, Ligma study. Trans advocates on this issue use a convenient sample rather than doing some kind of control. Oh, yeah. By the way, in case anybody gets super mad at me about Irish, I'm fucking Irish, bitch. I'm a quarter Irish. You don't like it? Fucking suck my Irish cock.
randomized test for right, the treatment. So, so this is a meta study of a whole bunch of other studies. Okay. So you would have to go between each study because at the end of the day, I don't want to fall in this trap that me and Tim were about to do where each of us starts saying like, well, I have a study. Well, you have a study. Well, I have a study. We could do this all day. So we should look at metadata, right? We should look at compromising data that looks over a whole bunch of studies. A second metadata study that I want you to look at. <laughs> Gay fish. <laughs> Regret after gender affirming surgery. Didn't you say you're like Slovakian? Yes, the majority of my ancestry is indeed Slovakian. But it is also true that I'm a quarter Irish. A systematic review and meta-analysis of prevalence. This went to Canada, the Netherlands, Belgium, UK, Italy, USA, Brazil, Sweden, Singapore, Germany, Norway, Ireland, Serbia, and an interview between 27 studies, 7,928 trans patients. It showed a less than 1% right, right. regret rate. Right. So can I also mention something? Uh, 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 something uh, 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 real quick, I, I, have, I, have, I, gotta, I, gotta, I have another meta okay, study. Okay, yeah. I got to address this right now. There, sure. there is a problem we are facing in that you are saying a lot of things and I can't pull up any sources. Dude, don't even start, man. Do you see how slanted this shit is? Do you see how fucking slanted this shit is? At the very least, all I did was Google searched it. I pulled up the two studies that were associated with it and said, here's what it says. I have not given you my personal perspective on it. You have now given me your personal view on it. No, I, I've given you the studies. These are two meta studies. I have a third meta study. What are the studies? Let me please pull them up. I can't find what you're the talking about. The first he said it like six times just because you're slow and interestingly convenient. All The moment that Tim Pool needs to bring something up, he's quick as lightning. And Lance told him multiple times the Cornell University meta study on trans desistance. And he's like, I can't find it. What do you tell? What are these? I don't know what these words are. I can't hear you. Your mic is off. Fuck these people. This one is Cornell University. They did a meta study. What's of the 70... name of it? It's Cornell University's meta study of 72 studies on gender affirming care. 72. Of that, 55 of the studies were directly related to detransitioning. Met, what, what a meta study on. I just want to flag that what, what's the title, what's the title and detransitioning are two different things. Right, right, right. Well. What, look, look up uh, Cornell, Cornell University. Medis Cornell University. What does scholarly research say about the effect of gender transition or, or on gender trans well being? Send them a link. Oh, here we go. I found it. Nice. And the third one, the third Damn, Moon Lord found it. Moon Lord is the only functioning person in this room. I can't believe I'm saying that besides Lance, obviously. I a study that I want to bring up is a U.S. study. It's a 2015 U.S. Okay, transgender so, study. But, but, but this isn't this isn't a scientific research paper that's peer reviewed. Uh, no, this is a meta analysis of scientifically researched uh, papers. Did you that get that from what okay, we but, know? But, dot inequality. But hold, dot hold on, like, do we have a standard on why we why should why should we we should there's, accept? There's, your... If you want to know their methodology, there's a click here to view the methodology thing. You can find that out for yourself right there. But this is not a peer-reviewed scientific paper. This is a meta-analysis, Tim. Uh, okay, of so I, 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 I reject scientific it. papers. I reject it. I reject it. Okay, so if you want to reject that, I would Bro, write. next thing you're going to do, you're going to tell me ivermectin is some cure because of a meta-analysis. This meta -analysis. has nothing to do with it. No, 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 no bro. This has nothing you to do can't with come, You can't come to me. By the way, yes, meta-analyses are peer-reviewed. Me. When everyone tries screaming about ivermectin because of a meta-analysis that I reject and say, I don't think it works. You, you can go and story. then have someone We're follow does, By the way, that doesn't mean every single meta-analysis meta is correct. But meta-analyses and meta-studies are absolutely valid. And what he's doing here is just throwing it out because it's inconvenient. Left about come to me and now claim meta-analysis is effective. No, the point is this. I said, give me a study and you cannot do it. I am on... What? the fuck is wrong with Tim Pool? This is one of the most infuriating things I've ever seen in my entire life. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? This entire conversation, insanely hostile. Lance literally gave him, has engaged on every point in as good faith as possible, and all Tim Pool has is literal yelling and ignoring what, what Lance is saying and throwing things out outright. Oh God. He will, literally will not engage with them. What a fucking idiot. My way to give you a third meta study. A Those combination studies. of studies. These Those are studies. No, if we go study to study okay, back bro. and forth, Tim, this is going to take fucking forever. Give me so one. let's give look. Me one. one study. One study. One study. One. <laughs> Dude, I've given is... you two. Give no, me one. This is embarrassing. I've got like. Embarrassing? You here. can't give me one study? Okay. I've given you two. And I didn't even make an assertment. I Googled it and pulled up what you I found. You want individual studies I instead of meta analysis, which is ridiculous, but sure, here's individual studies. The mental health outcomes in transgender non-binary non -binary youth receiving gender affirming care from February 25th, 2022. This shows let me, that- Let me type it in and pull it up. Yeah, yeah, but I can explain to him while you're doing the, your own research. Can you, can Kids you, who I need, receive I need puberty you to blockers and- I need you to tell me what the name is so and I can pull it up. 
mental health outcomes in mental health outcomes in trans transgender and non-binary youth receiving gender affirming care february 25th 2022 peer-reviewed study the findings, kids who received puberty blockers and hormone therapy had 60% lower odds of moderate or severe depression and 73% lower odds of suicidality. Here's another individual study for you. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. That, 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 not, nothing to do with desistance. Do you, do you want to go back to desistance studies? That's what I was asking you about. I, I Google search desistance. Wikipedia Look has up. two studies that say it's 61 to 98%. You said that's wrong. I said, what's is, your it, source? Yes. You didn't give me one. I did on the spot. You gave it's, me it's a okay. meta-analysis we're, we're camera, so you, that is not peer-reviewed. It's not a peer-reviewed source. It's, it's, if if you a, want to go back and forth, Tim, on single studies, like I said, this can take forever. So it, 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 Do it you not have a single forth. study? I've named you tons of studies. No, no, no. You've given me a meta-analysis, not a single study. A meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is of multiple studies. It contains analysis of numerous studies. You could pick any single one from within there. Honestly, Lance should just take one of these and let's say, let's go through it together. But let's be completely honest here. What's going on here is that Tim Pool wanted to seed the narrative by doing ex by opening with explicit misinformation, and now when Lance is trying to counter the misinformation, Tim Pool is rejecting it outright because Tim Pool is a right wing demagogue. Tim Pool supports a movement that wants trans people eradicated. Let us not forget where this all starts and where this all ends. This combines other studies. Do you understand so how what, that works? Yes. So of that, the so 55 what your studies that it looks, is, no, of the is 55 that you've got 72 at, studies that have drawn a conclusion, and then someone that looked at less them than and made it different. Tim. You're saying that out of 72 studies that found a conclusion. No, 55. It's, 50, it, it looked at 72, 55 talked about detransitioning. I was, I was, it, was a, it was a hypothetical number. 51. 51. You're, you're looking at a bunch of studies that have come to conclusions. Of course. That are peer-reviewed, and you're saying, but someone analyzed those. Cornell University did. Who from Cornell? Click on, click here to view right, right. our methodology you, and you can learn about the their point. methodology. You just rejected it outright when you saw it. You were like, because oh, it's I not a study. Okay, it's not a study. It's a meta-analysis of studies. These but are different that, things. But, but I'm what explaining you're, that but to you. The problem is these studies have their own conclusions. You're ignoring. They combine their conclusions to reach their let me, findings. Let me, let me, that's, that's let me explain for those that want to understand what I'm trying to say. During COVID, there were a whole bunch of studies down, individual studies, peer-reviewed, that found ivermectin did not work. The right kept bringing up meta-analyses that said, actually, it does. I not all studies are the same, and not all meta-analyses are the same. I could do a meta-analysis right now off the cuff. That doesn't mean it's the same thing as a Cornell University peer-reviewed meta-analysis. This is the problem with Tim Pool right now. Tim Pool opened with misinformation and refuses to even consider counters to that misinformation. Now, honestly, if I was in Lance's position, this is a very difficult situation to deal with, and honestly, it's very difficult at all to engage with this. And part of the reason why um, I don't I don't generally believe people when they say, oh, this you look good, this this looks bad. You never fucking know what you look like to this person's audience. Um, uh, honestly, because we've already seen how Tim Pool's audience behaves. They they got mad at him for getting for making Kanye mad. Um, just remember that at the end of the day. Um, but if I was in Lance's position, I would have told him to simply reread that line that he did before, at which point it pointed out explicitly within the text of the original study that Tim Poole cited that it, the desistance rate referred only to people who qualified for care, not to people who began care, people who qualified. The number of people who qualify for care is huge. The number of people who start care is small. It's very simple. But of course, this fucking shit is manipulative. It's designed to be manipulative so that Tim Pool can push his trans genocidal agenda the same as he always had. These people hate trans people. These people want trans people to fucking die. Just remember that at the end of the day. Can I just bring back up real quick? Can I just bring back up these? Uh, let me see if I got it here. Hold on. Where did I? Where did I put those? Um, where did they go? Where did my little? screenshots go i wanted to just remember my tim pool ones from earlier on i closed them because i thought it wouldn't be relevant hold on let's see ah here we go Ooh, here they are Ooh, wouldn't it be a shame if i brought up tim pool talking about 
uh, in the uh, talking in the after aftermath of the fucking uh, mass shooting at a gay club that killed innocent people. We shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. This is an explicit lie. This is nothing except for a lie. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. This is a lie. How do you prevent the violence and stop the grooming? This is apologia for a mass shooting. The grooming of children is not stopping. The grooming that he lied about that didn't happen. People are calling for more violence. I do not think legislators will stop the grooming. People will not stop calling for violence. So you tell me what happens next. Fuck Tim Pool. Fuck these genocidal freaks. And just remember, there were a hundred fucking thousand Tim Pools operating at any time before every single genocide in history. And guess what? We know exactly whose side they end up on. We know exactly what they help build. And we know exactly what good it does to pretend that they're engaging in good faith at all. They're not. I said, and I said this to Joe Rogan, I reject that. Show me the actual study. I do not believe this is correct. I will not afford you some benefit to come in and make the same argument to me. If you do not have a study that is peer reviewed and cited, then I'm not going to entertain I, I, so, your, so your did, opinions. So when I bring up the Cornell University study, that's- That's 50, not a study, it's a meta-analysis. Yeah, of 55 peer reviewed studies, whose conclusion of 52 came to the fact that there is a less than 4% detransition rate. If you go to r slash science, Tim, you can find out. <laughs> no, 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 this Come is- Come on, I, I, I asked I'm, you for, I'm, you're pulling up Reddit when I'm- No, no, I'm, pull pulling up up, I'm pulling up Reddit because Cecilia, I uh, believe her last name is pronounced Jen de Jen explains and, and downplays why you're wrong about that 80 to 85% because she's the one who actually did that study. She's the one who did the study you cited. So, so Look, she explains why it's being misused. It is not true. I can say this. There are arguments about what is true all day, every day. I wouldn't have put it the way Lance did. I do think that it sounds bad to reference it as Reddit, to just say, here is the person, here's what she said, here's why you've got it wrong, but also, and I'm gonna critique Lance here a little bit. Lance should have just made her argument. He should have just, in his own words, repeated her argument. You are misrepresenting the study. You do not understand that a that, that study was talking about the people who qualified for care, not the people who started care. That's what you should have done. And I do think that this is a problem. There's arguments that M theory is wrong and that science uh, is unwilling to give up because too many scientists have dedicated their lives to it. So they argue that M theory is the is 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 the theory while other I think it hits when the author of the study says you are misrepresenting the study. Yes, I do think that that's valuable, but notice that Tim Pool will literally not let Lance read that out. Tim Pool is so bad faith. Tim Pool is so afraid and so manipulative and so married to the message that he is pushing. An anti-trans message, by the way, a message that kills trans people, a message that engages, that not just enables the oppression of adult trans people, but that specifically targets the oppression of young trans people. Tim Pool will not even allow it to be read. He will not even allow it to be admitted. He will not even allow it to be heard by his audience. Instead, he barrels over Lance and he refuses to let it be seen. ...are coming up with like E8 lie group theory or whatever. I totally understand that people will decide what they think is true or not. Hence, I have a bottom line standard. If the right comes at me and says, ivermectin meta-analyses prove it works. I say, don't know, don't care. We have rejected the concept of someone analyzing a collection of studies and making determination. What our standard is, or at the very least where I'm at is, if we're going to have any basic agreement on what is or isn't, there has to be a unified standard there, which is. Okay, but remember his super strong science from the beginning when he said that, oh, 22 people were pushed in front of trains and that means that the Punisher needs to stand up and kill some homeless people. Remember super high level ideas, Tim Pool here? Peer reviewed study, which is not absolute. If I have two peer reviewed studies and the establishment narrative, when I search for it, says 61 to 98 percent, I will not accept your 
meta-analysis opinion, the same as I wouldn't for someone who believes I'm- That's not an opinion. Hold on, let's just check real quick. Hold on, let's see. I just want to see this real quick. Let's just check. I just want to check this real quick. These are all peer-reviewed studies. Here's all of them. It's fully documented. Wait, I can show this on the screen, okay? This is it right here, okay? This is Cornell's University, university Public Policy uh, Research Portal. Here is their the publishing of their methodology, which is visible right here. Completely and completely broken down, at, completely and utterly broken down, okay? It's publicly available, publicly reviewable. Here is their entire thing. Here is the and, and the direct source to all of the links. Here's how they did it, why they did it, and the other people who have looked at it. This is all published publicly for anyone to review. On the website of a, of a credible university done by credible doctors. And Tim Pool just refuses to engage with it. And you have to ask why. We all know. This is about where Vosh couldn't handle this debate anymore. I'm literally feeling like I, this is draining me to the point that I don't even, like, I'm not feeling any passion about this conversation whatsoever. Like, it just feels like like Tim Pool is browbeating Lance and that Lance is literally not even being allowed to show his sources. He's not even being allowed to discuss them. He's not even being allowed to make a case for them. Actin works because your argument is founded upon the same basis as theirs. Okay, so first off, the meta-analysis of ivermectin actually showed that it wasn't effective at preventing or treating COVID-19. That that was the actual meta-analysis of ivermectin, so it actually would back up your own uh, claims. Secondly, you and me can look at individual studies, and it can take a very long time, but we should look at regret after gender-affirming surgery, a systematic review, and meta-analysis of prevalence, which looks at, again, 27 studies, and interviews 7,928 trans people across the world. And again, in places like Italy, USA, Brazil, you name it, that meta-analysis also Ron's found- Ron's KFC with the, t the $5 super chat thank you very very much the same theme song to the office works perfectly here had to play that in the background while, while watching this debate i feel like the only thing that works well here is like a live recording of people being burned alive like i feel like that's the only thing that would correctly act like accurately represent uh how this uh how this fucking uh debate actually is operating because i mean let's be real that's like that's what's actually that's what that's, that's what's actually going on here. Tim Pool has a massive platform in which he disseminates information that is directly leading to a war, a deranged culture war against trans people. He refuses to engage with even the most basic critiques of his already decided upon position. It's so blatantly obviously biased that anyone whose brain isn't completely rotten should be able to see it. But unfortunately, a lot of people's brains are rotten because we have a lot of propaganda in America and and unfortunately, at the end of the day, um, this fucking culture war against trans people is uh, advancing at a pace faster than any debate could possibly do. You can't, you couldn't debate the fucking Nazi party, okay? And they tried. Don't, don't fucking doubt they fucking tried. They fucking tried to debate the, sh to debate the shit out of the Nazi party. And guess what? The camp still fucking came. Found a less than 1% regret rate. You have to be able to combine multiple studies because this is something that has been so thoroughly investigated globally for so long that to ignore the science and data on well, this is, on. Is, is too flagrantly. Well, look, There's uh, not been a single large-scale randomized clinical trial for puberty blockers to treat gender dysphoria. There's not been one. You, you all are very against Lupron, right? Well, I don't know much about it. I know. I, mean, I, I, I just very against is pretty strong. Okay. I'm, I'm typically like we shouldn't give. I'm saying there hasn't like, been one large scale randomized clinical trial for okay. these like, treatments. Like Lupron for when when children go through like the early onset puberty. Yeah. And it's like an actual medical issue. Like, yes, of course. That's why saying gender dysphoria is an actual medical issue. Tim, you fucking ghoul. Very against something. As I well, yeah. what we're talking about is 
Are, are we are we going to a kid who uh, are, are we dealing with an actual case of, say, endocrine disruption caused by phthalates and PCBs? Or are we dealing with a kid who's just playing with dolls and the parents are incorrect? Right. What an interesting literally just asking questions. The answer is you're a fucking idiot for even bringing that up. Obviously, there is a massive medical process by which it takes fucking forever for kids to even get access to the studies Tim Pool cited show that it takes time and effort and repeated appointments and money for kids to even get to the point where they can be considered for for puberty blockers. This is the this is the fundamental dishonesty because you're so far from having a real debate. There is no debate. There is a mountain of propaganda versus someone desperately trying to shovel their way out of a mountain of propaganda. When Tim Pool is says, are they just, they're just giving you drugs for making you play with dolls? I'm a centrist. I'm, I'm totally a centrist. I'm totally engaging in this in, in good faith. He's not, and it's fucking blatant. And, and in that case, you would have a long process where they would have to do interviews with, again, Except, professionals who would determine right. whether or not it's appropriate. Uh, and deeply. people who go on puberty blockers, I want to add this, if it's for a limited amount of time, I, they want to do it only to be able to wrong. hold that off. No, it isn't. If you see, see, speak to the actual th doctors on this, this, is, this you is only issue. take it. No, 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 Tim, let me finish the sentence. Come on. You brought me on your show. Let me finish this. You only go on puberty blockers for a short amount of time before you can be put onto HRT. They do not want to keep them on puberty blockers. And that way you avoid a lot of the potential negative side effects. We from had Helena Kerr on the show who walked into a Planned Honestly. Parenthood and within minutes was given the maximum dose of testosterone. Anecdote. A absolutely. Lived experience. So when I say lived, lived experience, experience happens, you say it doesn't happen. I'm saying it did happen. No, I'm saying. Helena Kirshner is a conservative American ex-transgender activist. Remember when Tim Pool, remember when Tim Pool refused to acknowledge an interview with the literal creator of the study that he cited because it came from a website, because it was hosted on a website called Trans Advocate. Well, now we have Tim Pool citing Helena Kirshner, who is a American conservative ex-transgender activist from peak peak resilience project an anti-transgender group man such fair such good faith tim what a genuine good faith conversation that's definitely very productive and is certainly not just tim pool constantly reassuring his demented fans that they're definitely receiving the truth and they're definitely not being manipulated because he's not biased at all it can happen. And that's, you, I'm and, saying you have to look at broader data. You have to look at broader trends. That's the issue I take, right? Yeah, and, and it wouldn't make sense if I brought up a single horror story to you and said, this is fact. It can happen. I, I, I said, we don't want that to happen, Of right? course, no one wants that to happen. But okay, then so if, we wanna happen. if we want to understand how this is actually taking place around the world from an actual perspective of science, we have to look at the data. We have to look at meta studies. We have to look at... I am so fucking hungry right now. I need this conversation to be over. What do they... Do they talk about this forever? Okay, I, I, I've got a deal. After the trans subject, we're done. I'm way too hungry to deal with Tim Pool uh, insanity for more than I have. We've already listened to his homelessness rant. We already listened to him lose his fucking mind for no reason over, uh, over um, uh, uh, abortion. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, we're gonna finish this and then I, I've, I've seen enough. But let's continue. And analyze global uh, understanding of this. Like, I don't, I don't, I can't, I, I can't believe how long this debate is. And apparently there's more. Apparently there's a further segment that the after show or whatever. It's the Lupron, by example. Yes, it's true that Lupron is not FDA approved for the use of uh, on cisgender children. There is a product that is FDA approved for use with children, that is a puberty blocker, and it has been used for a long time, for generations and decades. We've been, re like, this is an hour and a half of a debate so far. There is still an hour left in just this video, and there's an after show. I hope Lance got paid for this, but I know that he didn't. Because I know that Timcast doesn't pay their guests. It's Lupron. Or at least, maybe they do, but I'm quite sure they don't.
It was just being Wait, done. No, but for that's for an kids. entirely different reason. That's for an entirely for different reason. Children. So to say we for want to prevent children. to say we want to prevent a child from undergoing early onset puberty so that they can develop at a normal healthy yes, rate pre, is pre entirely different. Is it is entirely different from saying we're going to administer puberty blockers because this child fears feels they're a member of the opposite sex. But whether that's or not, an entirely but different but reason. Whether or not for, it's because you. why would they pay for their guests? In the past, it was normal to pay for guests. In the streaming era, nobody pays anybody for anything. If you're going and creating content for somebody for four hours, normally you would pay a guest. In the past, if you were invited to be on somebody's show, that's like a normal thing that would happen. But yeah, in the streaming era, that doesn't happen. Looking is for a different is 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 going to be the problem, right? You you want to yes. know whether or not its use is going to be dangerous yes. on children. And and and, yes. and and the reason for administering a certain treatment can render it dangerous. Huh? How's that work? Your intention changes the danger of a medication. That's weird. Damn, but I mean, again, we're talking to fucking Seamus over here who literally believes that Jesus Christ is tr teleported into your mouth, but he just looks and smells and tastes like bread and alcohol, but he's literally teleported into your mouth. Literally, he actually unironically already admitted that he believes that Jesus Christ is literally teleported into your mouth when a priest blesses, blesses communion. But it's okay, you know, I guess it makes sense why he would come to the conclusion that your intention changes what a medicine does to you. you know so, for example, if we have been amputating people's limbs for hundreds of years, if I go into a doctor and say, please cut my arm off because I don't want it anymore, and he cuts my arm off, that's medical malpractice. For you to jump in and go, we've been cutting people's arms off for hundreds of years. This is I, medically approved. I, People are allowed to do this. Can I answer this? Is not, yes, absolutely. So what you're describing is called BIID, body identity uh, disorder. I, mm -hmm. I forget how it's spelled. Um, it is a real phenomenon. It's it's perfect. It, yes, it's, ex it's extremely rare, but we know enough about it at this point to know that people will seek out to get operations on the black market if they have BIID. And what we found when people do that and go to the black market to have a limb removed is that it only provides a temporary amount of relief for their condition and then it returns and they have further complications from the fact that they now have a disability and or medical complications that come from my all that. My point is not about any kind of body dysmorphia about losing a limb. My point is about drawing a false, <clears throat> my point is about drawing a false conclusion by a medical treatment. <laughs> my point is that I'm drawing a false equivalence to make you look bad. He almost said it. He literally almost said it being allowed under circumstance A, but not Sophie says transubstantiation and the Eucharist is a basic Catholic or Orthodox belief to be fair. Most, ca most Catholics believe in it. I'm sorry not to go Loretta atheist here, but transubstantiation is fucking insane. I don't care how common it is. Believing in transubstantiation when you can literally prove that it doesn't happen is fucking insane. I don't care if you want to believe that there's a symbolism there, that there's something spiritual that's connecting you to, to something greater. But transubstantiation, the Catholic belief, is fucking insane. It's anti-realistic. It's anti-reality. They believe they don't just make a claim about spiritual value. They're not just making a claim about spiritual symbolism. They're making a physical claim that is false. It is a lie. And actually, it's really funny. Most Catholics, when pressed, don't actually believe in it. Trust me, I've known a lot of Catholics. allowed under circumstance B. You're saying we allow it for kids who have hit precocious puberty, but yes. then we don't allow it for kids who don't want to go for pu through puberty no, no, because no, they we, want to be a member of the opposite sex. We do allow it. It's, it's still not FDA approved. That's yeah, different. But, yeah. but you and, understand uh, my point. I, you I just, can't claim those I just, things are the same. I just Google searched it real quick. Stat in 2017, 100 out of 100 with NewsGuard. Drug use to halt puberty may cause lasting health problems. More than 10,000 adverse event reports were filed with the FDA. May cause from statnews.com. I don't know what his news guard thing is. Isn't that his app that he's like supported by? This is so fucking stupid.
Vontix with the incredibly generous $5 says, Transubstantiation is one of the things that atheisted me. It atheists a lot of people because it's literally insane. And and ca Catholics that still push transubstantiation to this day are like one of the main drivers of people becoming atheists because they literally cannot acknowledge that they are believing in something that's just a counter to reality. That they can be, they can literally have the bread blessed somebody can take that piece of bread look at it under a microscope it will be bread it will be identical to what it was before it was blessed and the catholic is by catholic law r required by catholic law to tell you to gaslight you to lie to your face and say no that is jesus that is jesus it only it only appears to be bread insane FDA reflecting the experience of women. And yes, of course, transubstantiation isn't even biblically sound. No, it's literally just Catholic stubbornness. So he thinks bre bread transitions in your mouth. The Irish guy, yes, he admitted he has to, that he admitted he does believe in transubstantiation, which means, yes, when the priest, it actually transforms in the hand of the priest. When the priest is holding the wafer and he says the blessing, it becomes literally Jesus, physically Jesus. And then Catholics will say, but it maintains the qualities of bread, whatever that means. It's cope. It's mad, deranged cope. It is literally religious gaslighting. Who've taken Lupron, describing everything from brittle bones to faulty joints. You know, regarding meta meta analyses, I, like, I, I'm worried about, you know, giving kids things on an experimental basis. Yeah, this is a huge, long conversation, and it would be so awesome to go through each study. I would love to. It would probably take like seven hours, six hours, but we could do it, but like not tonight, unfortunately. Well, so let me, let me ask you but, though, but, like, I, but I want to keep down this path because I think yeah, we're, let making, me, we're let, making good progress. Let me here. ask you a question, of course. right? Like, like Jazz Jennings is sterile, right? I don't know much about Jazz Jennings. Jazz Jennings. She's, she's a reality TV show, right? Jazz Jennings. Yeah, 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 but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that Jazz isn't trans. Uh, because that's not for us to say. Uh, I didn't say, I said I'm concerned that Jazz is not trans, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason is Jazz is dating women now, right? So then Jazz what would What does be, that have to do with being trans? Well, Jazz would then be a biological male dating women at the age of 23. What right? does that have to do with being trans? What does that So have it has to do with whether or not Jazz made the decision for themselves or the parent made it when they were three years old. What? So the question is... What? We want to avoid a John Money type situation, right? Where you had these two kids. John Money, hold on a sec. Oh, okay, wait, let's hear what he says. And the doctor told one of the young boys he was actually a girl and then forced him to live as a girl, ultimately resulting in his suicide. And then the death yes. of the- John Money took a cis child that had no experience of gender dysphoria and forcibly transitioned that kid in an example of human experimentation, John Money was f literally took a cis child and forcibly transitioned them, and it led to that child committing suicide. The what the fuck is wrong with Tim Pool? They do this all the time, by the way. Uh, you'll notice every conservative tries to bring up John Money, but what they don't what they don't say, of course, is everything else about John Money. They never actually represent it correctly. They never actually uh, uh, explain what's wrong with it. And they never acknowledge that John Money is a perfect example of, of why trans people are in the right. Because trans people are the ones who decide to transition. Even young trans people. There is no, they, all they have is conspiracy about doctors and of course, they never have an answer to the motive, but all they have is that there's a massive secret conspiracy of doctors that want kids to transition for some reason. And secretly, there's a there's a secret, notorious, magical army of parents who want their kid to transition because they want to pay medical bills for their children. John Money was doing an experiment. He was self-enriching. He was pursuing something for himself, and he, for, and he literally did an experiment 
experiment on a kid that was disgustingly unethical. This is not a thing that uh, every doctor, that there's a secret conspiracy of doctors doing this. It's fucking insane. Oh, this is so fucking insane brother as well and apparently because jazz jennings is a lesbian that means that jazz jennings can't possibly be trans absolutely fucking stupid broken brain broken soul will be rejected by god we don't want that to happen and so that did happen wasn't it done because of a botched circumcision the botched circumcision was basically the um the botched circumcision was the justification that John Money used to exploit the people, to exploit the family. There was a botched circumcision, and then John Money basically said, hey, here's my opportunity to do this experiment that I want to do. But I don't know if you guys get this, but, um, but using John Money as an example is like trying to say that every person on the planet uh, is John Wayne Gacy. That's an insane position. And unless you have evidence of it, accusing random doctors who are just literally following the well-studied preponderance of evidence on gender care to take care of their patients, which Tim Pool doesn't know any of these people. Tim Pool is inserting his fucking little fucking dirty ass into everybody's personal lives so that he can say without any evidence that there is a secret conspiracy of many John Moneys. What an idiot. What a disgusting idiot. And already, and we know that happens. So we have to be careful about taking a three year old and then raising them and telling them they're female, because then if they start exhibiting traditional, uh, uh, you know, gender behaviors, also, there may be something talking about a three year old being like. In the John Money situation, by the way the the forcibly transitioned child repeatedly refused the gender role throughout their childhood the gender that was forced upon this child by john money was rejected essentially the child he literally rejected the role of, of womanhood functionally this was a trans child who was being forced to live a certain way but because it was John Money who forced the gender role, they try to act like this is an anti-trans example when it actually shows that children do know who they are. They do know mo about their identity. And, oh, it's so, God, it's so infuriating. I get so annoyed with this shit. It's so ghoulish. It's so disgusting. It's so dishonest. And there's just like, what are you supposed to, no matter how much you say, no matter how much Lance says, no matter how much I say, it doesn't change a thing. Tim Pool is still dumping out his garbage into the world. Concern. For instance, Jazz stopped dilating. And that was the big controversy over the past few weeks. The mother going on TV saying she would force Jazz to do it. If Jazz is saying, I'm not gonna, and the mother saying, do it or I'll wring your neck, which is a, a quote, and then Jazz is not dating women, we're starting to see a pattern that may be concerning because it follows the John Money Situation. No, it doesn't. That doesn't what? follow the John Money situation at all. And by the way, if the parents in this particular case are abusive, which is certainly possible, God knows there's a lot of trans people with abusive parents out there, that still doesn't change the fact. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that every other trans person is Jazz Jennings. That doesn't mean that every other person in the world has a kid with weird TLC abusive parents. This is pure anecdote Andy, and I don't even know. We're just taking his word at the facts of the Jazz Jennings situation because I don't know anything about this shit. Should we look up the Jazz Jennings situation? Oh God. Wow, this is, this is, I will say just generally just searching Jazz Jennings is like ridiculous. One of the number one searches is how much gate, how much weight has Jazz Jennings lost? How, what mental illnesses does Jazz Jennings have? Why did Jazz Jennings gain so much weight?
Jazz Jennings on April 1st of 2023. Hold on a second. I just want to show you this. Here we go. Jazz Jennings. This is Jazz Jennings' actual official account. This is the real account, okay? Just so you guys know, all right? I don't regret my transition at all. When I was 11, I started male puberty and was put on hormone blockers. Those blockers saved my life and continue to save the lives of so many youths out there. If I was forced to go through male puberty, it would have been devastating. Even more so, taking estrogen through hormone replacement therapy allowed my body to develop how I wanted. I blossomed into a young woman and eventually got bottom surgery and am living as a proud woman today. Yes, I struggle with mental health and always have. It was not because I transitioned and it's unfortunately something many other LGBTQ LGBTQ plus people face. Why? Well, a lot of it has to do with the hate and lack of acceptance I receive in society. So to all of you speaking about our mental health for views and calling our families abusers for supporting our transition, you are the only abusers. Just in case anyone fucking brings this shit up ever again, Tim Pool is a disgusting, lying piece of shit. I have seen enough of this garbage. How much longer do we have in the trans section? Do I need to see any more of this? Is there anything else I need to see of this trash? From Jazz's own fucking mouth. But no, no, fucking Beanie Bob over here, this fucking drooling piece of shit, needs to insert himself into Jazz Jennings' life to tell you he has concerns. Well, guess what? I have concerns about your viability, Tim Pool. I think I have some concerns about whether or not you're complicit in a disgusting agenda that threatens the lives of people I care about. And I think we all know the answer, you fucking piece of shit. Witch Night Melody with the $5. Thank you for supporting the stream. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. This has been a massive drag uh, and a lot of work. And honestly, I'm regretting covering this. I think after this, I might just never react to Tim Pool ever again. Um, this is like, there is no point to this. Nobody is gaining anything from this. We already have to, we go over these arguments in a more structured format all the other, other times. Um, this is just an incredibly uncomfortable experience that Lance was put through. So it sucks to see somebody that I actually know and think is pretty cool go through like a genuinely terrible treatment from a from somebody who invited him on his show only to literally yell at him, call him a cultist, cut him off over and over again, and literally refuse to engage with any of his arguments. And also, it's just... Tim Pool blasting out trash propaganda. Anyway, Witch Night Melody, thank you for the $5. I hope you have a good camping trip. Here's something to take the edge off Dim Ghoul's centrist quote unquote nonsense. I'm gonna need a beer after this one. I'm gonna need a fucking nap after this one. I am regretting this. Please never do this again. I have hated this stream. I'm literally only here for you. Tim makes me want to plot. I'll give it to Lance. He handles the rest of the debate really well. I don't think, um,. I don't think that Lance did a bad job here, but Lance, I, no, actually, actually, I don't think Lance did a bad job at all. It's just that Lance made the mistake of going on Tim Pool's show at all and getting engaged in any fact-based argument. If, if you're gonna go on Tim Pool, there is only one thing that matters, rhetoric. You have to make him look bad and nothing else. There is no way you can try and engage in facts. Tim Pool literally lies over and over again. In this video, we watched him repeatedly just claim that the that the homeless guy that died at the beginning of this whole conversation, Jordan Neely, I think his name is, was a criminal. Even though he was never tried in court, even though there is no evidence that he was a criminal, just word of mouth, just the word from the newspaper, and then he freaked out at Lance for saying maybe he wasn't a criminal, maybe he shouldn't have died. That was enough to make Tim Pool fly off the handle. There is no honesty here. The only thing that matters in a fight with Tim Pool is whether you can out-demagogue him, and that's it. I don't think that... I, I don't think that Lance did bad here, in fact. And I think that on a factual basis, he did fine. Um, and in fact, I think he got Tim Pool to look like an unhinged maniac. But guys, Tim Pool's fans are also unhinged maniacs. 
They don't care if Tim Pool looks like an unhinged maniac. There is no optics for them. They only care that their biases are reinforced. I just need people to understand that that's really what it boils down to. Mixed Dizzy with the $5 says palate cleanser of Nubian woodpecker sounds. Oh, let's hear. Cute. Here, let's watch the actual video here. Let's pop it up for a second. Let's watch this. Let's take a break. What a pretty bird. Ooh, it's eating lots of ants. What a cute bird. Birds are good. Birds are good in a way that humans never will be, especially humans like Tim Pool. All right, let's finish this segment out. I should, I should at least finish this segment out. Let's do it. Would I adopt a bird? Absolutely. They're not Jesus trans or not. My concern is, uh oh, what if? And that means there may be children who are literally just asking questions. Yeah, Tim Pool, what if you're a pedophile? What if? I'm very concerned, man. You certainly give off a lot of pedo vibes. What if you're a pedophile, man? What if you are? I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying, what if, bro? Be pushed down a path that ultimately leads to their suicide because their parents can't make the decision for them, but they did. So the data overwhelmingly shows that if you give children gender affirming care, especially if you have loving and accepting parents who accept children's actual gender identity, it reduces the rates of suicide dramatically. In the case of a parent who affirms their child's gender, it can reduce suicide rates of up to ninety three percent in some studies. It's it's not a case of. Uh, more often than not, these are children who are approaching their parents saying they think this is something happening to them and parents pushing back and being like, no, this is wrong. You're just a tomboy. Oh, this is, you know, this is not you. This is so, blah, blah, blah. And you don't go into a doctor and all of a sudden they're like, here's Lupron. They do. No, no but they, they don't. don't. The no, they don't. Of don't. He's a liar. He's a fucking liar. They do not do that. It does not happen. It simply does not happen. And guess what? Even if he cites that person he did just a few minutes ago, that was an adult. He Notice before when Lance brought this up, he cited an example of an adult getting testosterone. He never has an example of a kid getting handed Lupron because it doesn't happen, because he's full of shit, he is a liar and a propagandist. And we all know what his goal is. We know what the goal of his movement is. I've said this again and again, but Jesus fucking Christ. Time, oh, the average you amount say, of time- You can't is, say they don't when we've had the anecdotes they do. Call it an anecdote, it's an I'm anecdote. telling you it does happen. Of course, but that's an anecdote. We have to look at so data, science, statistics. So don't say science, it doesn't statistics. happen. Well, it happens, but that doesn't mean it, it's a broad it trend. it should not happen. Right, but that's, okay, this, this is asinine. So, let, 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 we, let, we have to talk about what actually occurs via the numbers, right? That's, that's what matters. Like, I, I have here the largest U.S. transgender survey ever done. It's in 20, uh, 2015 to 21,598 participants. And this covers people in childhood, adolescence, and adults. Twitchy pause with the incredibly generous $5. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Tim is mind melting. I'm sorry we've had to watch that. Here's Jane McMur McMurdy performing an address in defiance of anti-dragon Tennessee. That's based. I don't know who James McMurdy is, but I'll check that out. Uh, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that a lot. This is asinine. Yeah, Lance is correct to say this is asinine. It is asinine. Tim is li literally has not let Lance finish a single thought. He has not let Lance finish a single argument in the last entire segment that we've watched. And it has all the results you're looking for. So let me ask you a question. Uh, why do you Please. think we're seeing the incre uh, a rapid increase in the past few years I can of, explain that of, as well. of mm -hmm. young people identifying as trans? Okay, can, can I answer that? Can afterwards? you read the study, Yeah, yeah, please. of course. So it shows the 2015 U.S. Transgender Survey of 21,598 participants that with hormone therapy, psychological distress for children reduces by 222%. Late adolescents, 153%. Adulthood, 81%. Suicidal uh, ideation for children goes down 1%. 135% for uh, adolescents, 62%, and for adults, 21%. Like is this, that that is dramatic. Is that, this that the is Stanford dumb. Medical School survey analysis done by Jack Turbin? Uh, I don't know the person okay. who did it. Let okay. Me pull it up. 
Um, but in terms of the the increase, Tim, of, of people, because there's a because there was a study done by Stanford Medical School that very closely fits the description of what you've just read out there, which is very a scientific and what well, that is collected. I, 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 yeah, I, I, so just just please find the source of that. Thanks, cartoon guy. Thanks, uh, right wing Nazi cartoon guy. Really awesome to hear from the super credible Nazi cartoon guy that no, oh no, that data is bad data. It was, j I mean, um, people I don't like made that data. Because I, I, I want, I want to pull that apart, yeah, yeah, but I want to be sure, sure, sure that I, I know you're talking about that yeah, study. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious as to why you think it's it's increasing so much. What's that? What's that signify? The history of left-handedness. This is the history oh. of left-handedness in the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you see what happens here? It, it, it levels out. It goes it up and levels up and out. Levels. We used to pe uh, we used to treat people who were left-handed as satanic, as the devil, all that kind of shit. You remember oh, that, right? Yeah. And that's why there was a lot of people who didn't record themselves as being left-handed. And then, boom, when we stopped doing that after the 1880s and in the 1900s, it spiked. Now, this spike isn't because there was a whole bunch of indoctrination or Alex Jones was like, oh, left-handed ideology, everyone has become left-handed. This has nothing to do with that. This is naturally how many left-handed people there were and then it plateaued. We are in a, in a situation right now where it is safer than ever for people to come out and, and if they're queer, bisexual, whatever it is, and because of that, they feel safer expressing that. That's why Gen oh, wow. Z of all generations- I was concerned there was a trans genocide. Yeah, so he, here's- This is this is the actual- You're certainly trying, Tim. Statistics on people increasing. You can see the red one. Mm. That that is Gen Z. That is the amount of people who in Gen Z it's skyrocketing. It looks so, like they're so identifying more than ever because so, their generation feels more comfortable talking so, about this kind of stuff. So you don't more think that there's about like about a, a trans genocide or anything like that? I don't think that there's a trans indoctrination that is coming through media. Genocide. Is, I said. It. I, yes, and I'm saying that I don't think there's a trans indoctrination coming through media that is programming kids to become trans. I think that's ridiculous. So, and, if you, and if you want to change but, topics to talk about trans genocide, we can move on to that. But, but that, is it, is you, it, you it, asked me specifically, why right, is right. there a, why is there a spike? Yeah, that is why. Okay, so my follow-up is, you think trans people feel safer than ever? No. Right now, there's over 400 different bills being pushed in the United States that is directly targeting trans people. So they don't feel safe? They, of course they don't. So then why are they coming out if they don't feel safe? They have more access, because that generation, Generation Z, has a lot more acceptance towards trans people than older people who pass laws, draconian people who pass laws. The bo He's literally 100% correct. Lance is just 100% on point here. But Tim Pool is so stupid that you can't actually talk with him like you're talking with a normal human. You have to talk like you're talking with a propaganda mouthpiece because that's what you are. Tim Pool does not behave like a human in a conversation. Tim Pool behaves like a representative of his propaganda because that's what he is. Boomers are the ones running the show right now. They're still the ones in government. They're still the ones passing laws. There's very few Generation Z in government or parliament. You want, you want to know what, what I think? I think there is a trans genocide. Okay. And I think it's you. Okay. Because you're sterilizing a lot of these people. How so? I mean, you're they're literally sterilizing them. The, the surgery to remove the gonads, hysterectomies, and puberty what and cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers this? have a high rate of sterilization. I mean, hey, guess what? Hold on. You want to know what's really funny? Hold on. I have to do this. Okay, guys? I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Did you know that in most of the states of the United States, that it was at one point required that you be sterilized to be able to change the gender marker on your IDs? Sometimes to be able to, well, not to change your name, changing your name you could do, but to change the gender marker, it was required that you become sterilized in many places. Changing your gender marker is a very important thing because if you are a trans person, and every single person who meets you is able to immediately know that you're trans, you're open to a lot of hate crimes. Hate crimes, which have been pretty common against trans people in the history of the United States. And most states had laws, when it was allowed at all, the laws that were passed required sterilization. So who's pushing that genocide again? Who's pushing that genocide again, Tim Pool? People who wanted to live socially, whether they wanted to get surgery or not, were required to get surgery to be able to change their IDs so that they wouldn't be open to hate crimes. You fucking piece of shit. Isn't there still one case where that one state where that's the case? I believe there's still multiple states where that's still the case. Um, Obama made some pretty major changes, and I believe that Biden brought back the changes that Obama did on a federal level. Um, Obama made a change that made it so that you could change your uh, your passport 
without with nothing but a doctor's letter. All you needed was a doctor's letter uh, to be able to change the gender marker on your passport. Um, that law was repealed by Trump, but reinstated by Biden, if I remember correctly. Um, and what that created was basically a loophole. You could you could go to the federal government and you could get your gender marker changed on your passport, and then you could use your passport to change your state ID because the, the, the passport counts as a valid uh, identifier. Um, depending on your state. But yeah, there are, as far as I know, there are still states who have those laws on the books, whether they're practiced or not. Unironically, thanks Obama. Being, being trans under Obama, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. This is the most liberal thing that you'll ever hear me say, but Obama was unironically the most trans friendly president that we've ever had. More so even than, than uh, Biden. Obama passed multiple laws that actually directly benefited trans people. Obamacare, literally changed the game for trans people because prior insurance companies were allowed to treat trans people as as a blank as a full slate as a pre pre-existing condition that alone changed so much for trans people so seriously on that one thanks obama and the second one was of course this law that i'm mentioning which allowed you to change your passport gender uh gender marker with just a letter from your doctor Liberal moment. I mean, first of all, uh, removal of the gonads in the uterus is an absolute sterilization. And then puberty. And guess what, dude? Not every trans person gets bottom surgery, my man. If you knew even a drop about what you were talking about, you would realize that not every trans person gets surgery and that people of your political predilection are the ones who made it mandatory to get that surgery. Blockers have a very high rate uh, and uh, cross-sex hormones have an extremely high rate of sterilizing the individual. So these people can no longer reproduce. That's genocide. Is this, is this the joke you can go for? Is joke? You are removing these people's ability to reproduce. Mm -hmm. And if they're at a young age and they have... No, you, you are not removing their ability to, to, to reproduce. People are allowed to choose whether they want to reproduce or not. You fucking dishonest, disgusting clod. I haven't had the ability, like for instance, Jazz Jennings can never have kids. Jazz Jennings also, and this, this uh, probably- part Jazz Jennings made those decisions as an adult. Part of your studies can't actually feel any set, like sexual uh, feeling of, of any kind. Do you have any idea how weird this sounds right now? Like, why, why are you obsessed what, what, with what, what, a stranger's genital pleasure? That's so weird. That's so bizarre. That was very weird yourself. You, you guys are all weird. No, no. So I'm talking about adults who engage in activities, which is a large portion of the global economy, whether you like it or not. Sure. Sex sells, they say. And when I say... Did Tim Pool just try to do an Uno Reverso and fail? this person will never have this ability to go how weird is that it's weird for you to fixate on a stranger's genital pleasure that's strange that's so bizarre well I, like, she's why, public why? about it but, that's but see why. that's you're not making an argument right now is my point i'm not i'm saying it's weird it's not an argument yeah, I'm that's, just like, that's, I, that's an observation so you're trying to make a, an appeal to emotion Did, and an appeal no to shame. i'm just, oh I'm, just I'm just giving you my genuine thought when you say something like that like well, why, that, it was, why that it was a really fucking pathetic attempt to try to make an argument talk about man he is so weak Tim Pool is so sensitive. So you're trying to make a, an appeal to emotion Tim, and an appeal no, to shame. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you my genuine thought when you say something like that. Like, well, that, why, it, was, why that we, it was a really fucking pathetic attempt to try to make an argument. Why should we talk about that? Why, why should we discuss whether or not she has genital feeling? That's not important. It's not. She, I, that it's not in my business. So let's focus then on the sterilizing of the individual. Do sure. you, are you okay with that? When who's sterilizing people? Jazz Jennings is sterile. Why are we going back to Jazz Jennings? I don't, Jazz I don't Jennings know anything famous. about her. Because Jazz is a famous individual on cable television. So if she is sterile for whatever reason, what does that have to do with me? Why, why does that concern me? Do why should I pass legislation? Do the sterilization to of teenagers? What? Dude, people can choose to get these surgeries or choose not to. It's not about supporting the sterilization, you fucking freak. What the fuck is wrong with Tim Pool's brain? Yeah, Lance looks very good here. This entire last segment, Lance has looked like a totally rational individual. But again, let me remind you, Tim Pool's audience doesn't care. 
Tim Pool's audience is crawling with Nazis. Tim Pool's audience roasted the shit out of him when he said that he felt like Kanye West was being anti-Semitic and they freaked the fuck out and, and dislike bombed his videos and were calling him a cuck in the comments. Just remember that. This is such a weird way to frame this. Like you are removing teenagers' ability to have children. I'm not doing anything. I'm not a doctor, Tim. You I don't have the ability it, to do this. Right? I support people having access to health care. Of course. Why would I want to prevent that just because do some people agree? have bigotry towards them? Let's try again. You seem scared sure. of this. Oh yeah, Tim Pool. T yeah, Lance is the one who seems scared, dude. You sound fucking insane, my man. You sound fucking insane. Do you believe that parents and doctors should have the ability to remove the ability of a child for, for future reproduction. They should have the ability to give them access to health care. Of course they should. So why do you keep you're, saying you're, like that? you're implying that every single gender affirming care results in sterilization. I didn't that say is that. that is not true at all. I said the, the removal the, there's of there's also the, people who are trans that never get bottom surgery. You seem very scared of this. It's scaring well, I, you. How how am I afraid to Because you keep deflecting when I ask you. So Jazz Jennings is a specific deflecting. example. Let's try I, Let's try this. Let's, I, Tim, let's, let's Tim, slow down and go one point at a time. You right? think I'm deflecting because I don't want to keep talking about someone's genital pleasure who's a stranger. Nice I'm saying, try, it, should, I sh I'm nice saying try, it shouldn't concern nice you. Try, it shouldn't concern nice anyone, try. Tim. Your That's, appeal to emotion is not going to work on me. I'm asking <laughs> oh you a science. I know I can appeal to your emotion. I'm trying a logic-based question sure. about the future of, of these people. I believe... What? This is, this is such a bad look. I don't know how anybody can... I, I mean, again, it's just... It's, it's, it's opposite worlds, you know? Um, I feel like if you saw Tim Pool acting like this, it should be fairly easy for you to conclude, man, Tim Pool's a fucking psychopath and he's being really weird to his guest, his guest who's been abundantly good faith to him. But then again, I remember that like, the the political group that follows Tim Pool, they just sit around screaming fucking racial slurs all the time and they uh, think it's totally based when people like Hitler. So, yeah, it's soy. Tim Pool is soy as fuck, but I guess uh, I guess I just uh, I, I know that there's an entire audience that is just like, oh my god, so based. He he uh, he blew out that SJW who was engaging in really good faith by saying, I don't like your emotional appeal when it wasn't an emotional appeal. You are genociding them. I believe you and cool. in, you intend on genociding autistic individuals. I genuinely believe that. Who's autistic in this? A large portion of trans kids are autistic, namely females. So this is an issue in that young lesbian autistic females are a large portion of those who are transgender. Do you, and have, do you have data on this? Do, do, I mean, come on, bro. Do you have data on what you've, you've brought up? You couldn't give me one study. But I've, I've given you not only studies, oh, meta studies. I've given you multiple meta studies on this. I have given you a surplus of information on this topic. Make up six, six times more likely to have autism, according to NPR.org. So yeah. I think you're trying to genocide autistic people. I, I, I literally... So I, six I, I, times I, more. You, what's the percentage of? That's what I asked you. Six times? 60%? You're, that's not how that works. That's not... You don't... You don't 600, sorry. No, that's not how that works. You're either. saying what percent of them are What percentage are trans? of trans people happen to be autistic lesbians? That was your claim, that a large portion are. I'm saying I don't know any statistics on that. I've never heard that before. Well, so uh, the first thing I pulled up was that transgender and non-binary non people are up to six times more likely to have autism, right? Right, but that's not answering the question yet. And your question is what portion of... Oh, let me Google it again. Because I, I thought that was sufficient in, in you know... Uh, just keep in mind what Tim Pool is saying here is um, I just want to point out again one more time this is a spectacle for Tim Pool for Tim Pool and the likes of Tim Pool um, him making jokes about supposedly Lance genociding autistic people um, is like a spectacle it's a game it's a fun little TV show episode that him and his insane followers can follow meanwhile the people who who back Tim Pool, the people that Tim Pool predominantly agrees with, are pushing laws that actually ruin the lives of young trans people. It's not a game for them. It's not a game for trans people. It's a game for fucking Tim Pool. 24%. So that's not the majority, even if that stat is true. Six times more common. 24%. That's still not the majority, even if that statistic was true. Yeah, no, I, that, the majority is so you just 25. Lied. So you just lied, Tim Pool. 24% so, of trans people are autistic according to that data and 6% of So so what I think striking. is I think that there is, there are people who hate people with down syndrome 
And in Iceland, they've actually publicly avowed or, or, or praised their eradication of people with Down syndrome. I think that's what the horrifying. Fuck is, what the like, fuck is he talking you can, about? You can, be, you can be okay with it. I'm not saying you're not allowed to believe that, right? The, I, you, I, you don't have to have the same morals as me. I just think it's wrong to genocide like people with Down syndrome. You know what I mean? You have completely derailed this conversation. You're, you're assuming that I'm pro people having uh, abortions for people who have Down syndrome when I, no, we're I, talking about- I'm not saying you do. I'm saying okay. in Iceland, They've what does this have to do with trans rights? Right, so we see a higher rate of autistic people, uh, uh, autism in trans kids. You, you we said, also you said then, it makes it the majority. It does not even based well, on the I source you correct. pulled up. Okay. I, I, 24%. Okay. Uh, I still believe that this is very much an effort. I, I, think, I think the left is intent on genociding trans people. In what way? Removing their ability to reproduce. How are they removing their ability By to By cutting off him? their testicles and removing their That is uteruses. not the only operation that is done. There are nope. trans people who maintain their same genitals as before. Right. Not everyone has to decide to get bottom surgery. That's No one is doing that to them. Trans people can choose to get bottom surgery. Is again, um, the, the stupid thing about this, the thing that's so infuriating is how insane and gaslighty it is at the end of the day. At the end of the day, here's a guy who is completely and utterly engaging in an alternate reality in which supposedly um, trans people are all being herded together by liberal doctors to be sterilized. When in reality, it's damn near fucking impossible to get SRS if you even want it. You can desire SRS more than anything on the fucking planet and it's damn near impossible to be able to get it. Tim Pool is so unbelievably, stupidly dishonest, it's actually unbelievable. The choice and, they should make. And cross-sex hormones do have a high rate of causing sterilization. It can, but it- No, they don't cause sterilization. They cause, t at, at, ma at, at, as far as we know, they cause temporary infertility. Now, it is possible, it's possible, but it has not been studied whether or not ceasing cross-sex hormones will return your fertility. But yes, while you are taking cross-sex hormones, you are infertile. That is not sterility. That's not the same thing. And people are choosing to take cross-sex hormones. They want it. That's the point. That's the entire point of this discussion. Doesn't always. Also, and you can be like, trans and sure. not get any operations at all. So I think you are so like, I'm in favor of making sure these people can always have families and have kids, right? Your position, whether you support the moral, moral issue of, of or not, results in many of them being stale. For instance, the reason I use Jazz Jennings as an example, because this is a person on television with millions of followers who wrote a book and told kids about this journey. The journey that Jazz Jennings went on resulted in a complete inability to have a family and have children. Because she wanted the surgery because she wanted to live a certain way you fucking clawed okay guys i can't do this anymore all right enough i've seen enough lance did not do bad in my opinion i don't think that lance did amazingly although i do think there were strong points for lance here what i do think is that uh tim pool this is one of the most deranged engagements i've ever seen from tim pool um I don't know if Tim Pool is this hostile to his guests, but I remember other conversations with Tim Pool that weren't nearly this hostile. Even with Vosh, um, even with Vosh, his conversation with Vosh, Tim Pool was not this deranged and hostile. Tim Pool has been flying off the handle for this entire conversation. It's like Tim Pool isn't even engaging with a human. It's like he's trying to react to a video or something. It's unreal and the amount of lies and w just blatant manipulation that was going on in this conversation is off the chart but at the end of the day i just want you guys to if there's one takeaway that we can have from this entire conversation it's that god do i feel bad for lance here because lance was fighting an uphill battle an uphill battle against a guy who refused to engage with any of his sources refused to engage with any of his links was constantly calling him a cultist was constantly accusing him of genocide lance didn't accuse tim pool of genocide lance didn't call tim pool a cultist lance didn't call tim pool anything the worst you could say he did was that Lance said he felt like Tim Pool was in support of forced birth, which I would agree with Lance on based on the argument that Tim Pool made. 
I don't think Lance looked bad here. I think Tim Pool looked bad here, really bad. I think if you showed this conversation to a normie, they would be like, what the fuck is wrong with Tim Pool here? But the normie would also struggle with something else, which is that Tim Pool is misrepresenting everything. Tim Pool controls the projector. Tim Pool would refuse to engage with anything that Lance brought to the table. This is Tim Pool's home turf, and it became very apparent here the type of information control that Tim Pool was engaging in. Tim Pool's own father thinks he lo lo lost to Lance. Tim Pool's dad. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Yeah, it looks like he did post a video that said that Lance destroyed Tim Pool. That makes sense. The worst thing you can say about Lance here, uh, Windleby says, the worst thing you can say about Lance here is that he waffled a little bit in a 3v1. This was essentially a 3v1. At multiple points, uh, you had, uh, you had Seamus, um, who, let me remind you, is a cartoonist, a right-wing traditional Catholic cartoonist. So, wow, big chops there. Uh, Tim Pool, Ian, and, uh, and Seamus all fucking weighed in at various points to dogpile Lance. At numerous points, the crosstalk was so bad, you literally couldn't understand what they were saying. Um, I think this just goes to show the educational factor from this is that there is no reasoning with conservatives right now. Conservatives have worked themselves up into such an unbelievable, um an unbelievable culture war that there is no way you can even reach most of them. Uh, conservative talking heads are completely pointless to engage with because they literally won't even, they won't even consider anything you have to say. They don't just dismiss it and say, oh, I don't buy that. They literally won't let you engage with it. This is part of the reason. I'm not the only one who doesn't engage in debate anymore. Um, Vosh doesn't even engage in debate half as often as he used to. You guys have probably heard him talk about it. And the reason is the conservative movement has gotten to a point that is so distanced from reality that you can't even have a conversation with them. They are unwilling to have a conversation. They are unwilling to even consider what you're saying. Lance here was waiting through endless garbage that was being dumped on him by Tim Pool. Tim Pool was just blasting him with things, this, that, the other thing. You're a genocide, you're a cultist, you're this, you're that, all over the place. And Tim Pool wouldn't engage with a single thing that Lance brought up. There is, they are, they have closed the doors to any sort of conversation. So debate is very difficult to have. Instead, there is a never ending siren screaming uh, anti-trans propaganda all across the country and a bunch of boomer fucking lawmakers are totally willing to jump on board with this and pass laws that force trans people to live lives of misery. You can't debate your way out of a situation like this. There is, I'm sorry, as much as I love debate, as much as I do think that debate can be very valuable, I've learned so much from debate. You cannot debate your way out of a fascist uprising. When there are people who are this deluded, who are this convinced that the world is full of degenerates, who, uh, who are convinced that there is a secret conspiracy of doctors uh, uh, pulling the strings to force trans people who they don't believe in, who they don't really care about, who they don't think should have rights, who they don't think should have access to HRT to force them to have surgeries that they want, but that they don't want. How do you engage with this? It's wizard logic. There is no, they know, they, 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 they don't want to engage with it. Sukoyo one says, I appreciate you, Demon Mama. I don't watch Lance, but I think he did well under the circumstance and that no one could bowl a perfect game under that type of pressure. The pressure was insane, guys. The amount of pressure that was put on Lance in this situation is off the charts. It was a 3v1. This has been going. We watched almost two hours of this, and there's another two hours of them just bowling over him, Tim literally interrupting him constantly. I can't even imagine that. Being there in person, I can't even imagine how you would manage to keep your cool. Like, I would be so steamed. But of course, so would anyone. Anybody who was being pressed to that degree would be steamed.
But the takeaway of this at the end of the day is, is that this is a good gauge of where the conservative movement is. Tim Pool is a very, very popular channel among conservatives. Uh, Tim Pool just had one of his fans go on a shooting spree, one of his neo-Nazi fans go on a shooting spree. Tim Pool downplays the danger, uh, downplays uh, mass murder against trans people. He spreads tr uh, trans anti-trans propaganda and is completely, completely unwilling to engage in anything other than completely manipulative messaging. This is the conservative movement in America. Keep that in your minds and plan accordingly, okay? Just recognize where this movement is going. Where is it pointing? You wanna know one of the things that was that's a constant refrain? I hate to do this because I, I know that a lot of people get tired of hearing about this and I don't really care though, honestly, fuck, fuck off. Um, you wanna know one of the things that you hear if you read the, the experiences of Jewish people um, before the Holocaust? that we're dealing with that, they repeatedly bring up the fact, we thought we had more time. We knew things were bad, but we thought we had more time. We thought we had more time to prevent it. There is a entire book uh, 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 written uh, about, specifically about, uh, uh, you know, uh, why, why, wh wh when did Jewish people decide to, to fight harder? Why did so many Jewish people uh, stay peaceful for so long. And as it turns out, it was because there was a, a constant belief that no, we can change things, we can change things. This direction looks so bad. We have enough time to change these people. Tim Pool's not fucking changing, guys. Tim Pool and Tim Pool's followers, they don't care. They don't care about the facts at all. They won't even, con they won't even engage with them, okay? They won't even let them hear it. So just keep that in mind. Be aware of where these political forces are pointing and let's try to build something that can give us resilience. Let's fucking band together and fight back against this shit. Let's build our communities up. Let's take good care of each other. Let's push back hard against this shit. Let's build community resilience by banding together, by actually ensuring that we can live our lives, by making sure we can get access to hormones, by making sure we can get access to healthcare by taking refuge with one another. By arming the fuck up. No joke. I'll have to ask, I, I can't remember off the cuff. I shouldn't have cited the book if I don't have the citation off the cuff. Rhodes says, you are 100% right. Most of the Jews that survived were the ones who understood the gravity of what was to come. Yeah, unfortunately. I know it's a, it's a, I, I've, I've studied the Holocaust a lot. I don't talk about this shit lightly. I don't reference this shit lightly. Okay. I've been trans and I've been very plugged into politics for a long time. Okay. Guys, I just want to be clear. I remember what it was like under Obama. I remember what it was like under Donald Trump. And I've seen what it's like now. Okay. Like I've been, I've been publicly and openly trans for a long time. There used to be a lot of hate. There's always been hate towards trans people, but it was this weird sporadic thing. If you, uh, if you minded your own business uh, and, and bigots weren't looking for you, they wouldn't see you. Now they see trans people everywhere. There is a complete derangement on the entire conservative sphere, sphere about trans people. But let me remind you, they're still the minority. They are trying, they want to, these conservatives really want to push. They really want to hijack the system. They really want to force their way in. But there's more of us than there are of them. Not more trans people, but more trans allies. The community of people who support trans people is larger in number than them. The community of people, um, who support gay people is larger than the number of conservatives. We just have to work together and actually say no, enough of this shit and do whatever it takes to defeat them. There's a lot of different ways to push back against this shit. Everything from building direct paths of resilience to finding ways to aiding people that are in danger. Uh, there are electoral struggles even, and I'm not even a super electoralist, you guys know that. I have a lot of worries about electoralism because I feel that it's easily hijacked by people like this. 
Just remember that and start to think about it now. Think about how you can get politically engaged now. Think about how you can build resilience now.